Greetings, Counter-Strike fans, and welcome to Copenhagen for PGL's inaugural CS2 Major Playoffs, where we have the eight best teams in the world right now competing for that trophy on the stage and cementing their place in esports history. I am your host, Richard Lewis, honored to be here for this. Thank you, crowd. I love you all, too. It's great to be back. Joining me on the desk, I brought two of my very good friends for this one. I have brought, of course, the ravishing maniac, the rocking Blair. Give it up for these guys. They know a thing or two about the major experience. Guys, I so know. good to be here with you. I don't know about you, Richard, but my heart rate right now after that opening, especially with this crowd right here in Copenhagen for the very first CS2 Major. But I'll tell you this, I would swap this for anything in the world right now. <laughs> I, I'm not going to start a day like oh, this. It can man. only go downward. Oh, boy. <laughs> what an honor to be here. Shout out to you guys. A pleasure to see you. And an honor to be here, of course, discussing what is going to be history in the making for CS2. Yes, well, look, we're here. And it's a brand new start in the history of this game, the history of this franchise, the greatest ever FPS created. And we are now looking at all bets are off. You know, we've got a fresh start here with these eight teams. And I've got to say, I think, honestly, it's such a stacked lineup, anyone can win. I know, and I think it is, it is the luxury of where we are in Counter-Strike. It is, we can look at a generational fight in that bracket, Richard. Oh. That's how I decide to look at it. Teams like FaZe, G2, who have history, who have incredible curriculum as well, but then suddenly you have the young crop, you have the spirits, you have the mouths of the world who come in shaking things up, saying, hey, I don't need a few years to be ready to win trophies. In fact, I can do it on my first try, as would say Dong in Katowice. So that's why it's so exciting in the history of the game. We have this clash going on. This event game. is could potentially be the passing of the baton, the torch, so to speak, awesome. when it comes to the, the youth. And you've been looking at teams like Spirit, for example, like Mouse, for example. But to do that, you have to topple some of the, the legends we've had in this game. Like you pointed out right there, Matthew, we have G2, we're looking at FaZe. So many storylines here where Dreams are going to be made and hearts are going to be shattered. And you're absolutely right. We've got legends in the building today. Cloud9, four major winners. Vitality, so many of the Vitality fans in the crowd right now. They're going to get to see Ziwu bouncing back from illness and wanting to set the stadium ablaze. I mean, just how much would it mean to see Vitality go back to back? They are the reigning champions. Yeah, they are the reigning champion, but they had to go through so many changes, right, since that moment they lifted the trophy in Paris. And listen, it hasn't been easy for them just to make it to this stage, but I think the romance in the story is the idea of having players ascending to a new level once you get to the stage. And the likes of Saibu have shown that already. Sphinx has done it. Apex could put his name for the third time in the winning category of the Major, which would be an astonishing feat for this guy who became elite. Hell, you knew him yeah. as an entry fragger. It was our days. <laughs> yeah. And now he's the leader of that squad, supported by these guys over there. There's a lot on the line for Vitality. How many people have done this? And if there were criticisms hurled in their direction that the Paris Major, it was a little bit too easy. They weren't really you know, tested, so to speak. This is their opportunity. This is their chance to cement the legacy, saying that wasn't a fluke, that was an easy run. We can get it done against the best in the world right here in Copenhagen. And you can hear the Vitality fans, the Hornets, they're here. And one of my other friends, Parler, is down there with the Hornets right now. Richard, thank you so much. Over the course of the show, exactly, I'm going to be down on the floor, checking in with our crowd, checking the vibes, checking the emotions. Copenhagen, what is going on? And the desk, back to you. I am boiling in more ways than one. The atmosphere <laughs> is electric, mate. It's so warm up here as well. I'm probably dripping. But <laughs> let's, let's talk about it. Honestly, I mean, this is like a Thursday afternoon. It's insane. <laughs> and this, look at the atmosphere. I, wo I woke up to the Hornets right outside the venue. They've been here since early morning. And yeah, all... wait a minute. When did they arrive at the hotel? When did you wake up? Like, I think they came in the afternoon. <laughs> Maybe I didn't just sleep at all last night. When did you wake up? I didn't sleep at all. Uh, oh, I get Maybe. that. I get that. 
that's fair enough. They were here. They did wake us up in Antwerp, no? That I remember that moment. They were well. outside the hotel, chanting the whole night, and I'm glad it continues on now. Yeah. yeah. Well, look, we have got some time to set the scene for some of the other teams. We're going to have plenty of time to talk about Vitality Cloud9. Uh, obviously, as well, we've got teams that arguably should they be here. I want to talk about this, and I, I might check in with the crowd again. I'll see if this works. I think G2, a lot of people are kind of up and, you know, back back and forth with them. They're up and down with them. They don't know whether or not they can believe in this team. We had an act of divine intervention with the PC crash that basically propelled them into the playoffs. So I want to know, who wants G2 to win the major? I'm telling you, they're the villains. Who wants G2 to go home? Right. All right, we got Tony going on. Yeah, let me tell you, I, I, I had this feeling. I think they handled it terribly. I think they were cheering when they should have been offering commiserations and sportsmanship, and they didn't do it. And I think they lost a lot of friends in that moment. And it's, it's a shame because I want Manasita to win a major, <laughs> you know? I want Nico to win a major, so, but not a lot of love in the building. I, I'm, I'm, I'm joining you, I'm joining you in the narrative, but I'm asking you, don't you think that might have been what they needed? To come together as a team. A kick in the ass? Yeah, no, to be the <laughs> villains. The hand of the devil. No, to be, no, I'm not talking about the divine intervention, just to be the villains. Right? Having this moment Maybe. where, listen, well, you know what? F all of these people. Like, we're in this together. We have this incredible chance of being in the playoff where we arguably know there is a world, a very actual world in which we're not here. And now suddenly they, they seize the opportunity, Richard. Mm. They make the best out of something that we didn't see coming possibly. And, I, and I, there's a voice in my head that's telling me that could happen for G2. Channel your inner fanatic. Channel the 2015 major champion fanatic. You but I didn't use a bug. Just, just, just go for it. <laughs> all right, all right there. But yeah, but listen, for me personally, I look at the G2 lineup and sure you might not be happy with the way they made it over here, but Manasi. Manasi makes it to the playoffs of the major for the very first time. For me, that's wonderful for the young kid. It is, it is. And also, we're going to see them a little bit later on. We're talking about legacy. We're talking about winning over fans. We've got FaZe, obviously going to be in the building. I saw a lot of FaZe jerseys. I was out there with the fans earlier today. Let's talk about how legacy-defining this major is, because obviously they've got this incredible lineup, super talented players, question marks about how much longer they might be around for, and Carrigan is chasing that GOAT status it's so desperately. Like, Glaive is the finish line. Yeah, but I mean, how long does Carrigan have to run for us to sort of put his name in that conversation? I sure. feel like ever since 2022 arrived, every year has given Kerrigan something special. Like yes, 2022 yeah. was a double-double Katowice Cologne. Then 23, you have the, the Grand Slam as well. That's a really nice notch. He had a major in Antwerp. And now here, he could finally win in Roll Arena. Yeah. Mind you, he has never been the winner here. And he's, he's tried to talk about it in interviews. He said, I'm not going <laughs> to. Wait, hold Shut on a minute. To you, man. Go we're, we're not yeah. going to talk about it. We're Don't not going to reveal. Don't, Don't report, report him. him. <laughs> we talk about it. but. Is it going to be the time for Kerrigan to, to sneak that trophy in, in Copenhagen? We'll see if that has an effect on him. For me, I look at 2023, and you can see FaZe taper off a little bit, but come CS2, they have been consistently the best team we've had so far in sure. the new iteration of the game. And that man, that captain, he's the guy leading the charge. And I absolutely agree with you. Despite the fact they've suffered a few losses here and there, they are the most consistent, high-performing team in CSU in the past half year we have. And it's all down to this man, Finn Anderson. And I mean, they, they embody the idea that, you know, class players will elevate their game mm. when you put them in these very conditions. This crowd, the stage, the pyrotechnics, all of that makes such a great show. Then we think they actually can step up. And that's why we get excited about it. We're ready to put all of it to bed, all of the, the trials and tribulation of group stage. For FaZe, it simply doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how they get here. Oh. The fact of the matter is, once you play them on stage, you better best watch out. You better best put your best counter strike first, or they're about to slap you. Yeah, and I've seen Carrigan working so hard with the guys, you know, at the hotel. They've been practicing nonstop. They have to elevate their game. Uh, we're going to see if they can do that today. But here's a team I definitely want to talk about. The wild card of the tournament, Eternal Fire. Who had Eternal Fire in the top eight? I, don't, I didn't have it. We did have this conversation. They are knocking the door of the top 10, top 10, top eight, so to speak. But it felt like, you know, when it came down to the crunch games, they played some stellar CS. We had our doubts. I personally had my doubts about the mental state, the mentality of this team. And can they continue to remain calm under pressure? And we saw a few cracks early during the opening stages, mm -hmm. the elimination stages. But when it came to really, you know, buckle down and play the CS, they've been playing so, so well for the past few months. They delivered. I'm looking at someone like 
Santaris, how long we've been talking about him as a star. He's been leading by example, but just the story of the youth in Wikadia and the veterancy in Badger mm -hmm. and Santaris, it's a beautiful tale for me. I mean, listen, if you have a heart somewhere hidden under your chest, <laughs> you feel for Eternal Fire, and you feel for their journey, and you're happy for them. But the truth is, outside of Woxic, none of them know what it is to play on the stage. Yeah. It is their first playoff at a major. Ever. And some would argue it's long overdue. With Space Soldiers in 2018, it, come, it came down to one game, it's the 9th to 11 finish, and now they go to the stage. So, of course, there is a world in the full romance of it where they actually come guns a-blazing, there's also a world where the pressure gets to them yes. and they let the mental game get the best of them and they sort of crumble up. Sure. That's what I'm afraid of when it comes to Eternal Fire and they're gonna have to show character to step up here in Copenhagen. It is pretty much uncharted territory for, for this team, right, coming in. To, for, forget just the major, even when it comes to big events, they barely ever really have a playoff run, so to speak. Walk is the only one with, with that major experience, having made the face it major uh, playoffs back when he was playing for Hellraisers. That's over six years ago. Yeah. So that lack of experience, I agree with you, either the, the rise of the occasion and the flame burns we don't know. Up, or they're gonna we don't Distinguished. Know. But so far, they've surprised us at every single turn. Well, we can also talk about Mouse as a surprise. I didn't have them going 3-0. I've been a bit of a hater on Mouse, honestly. Yeah, what I, happened I, to I, you? I, I know. The thing is, I, I've just consistently underestimated them, you know, because I, I'm like, I want my teams to have consistent orpers. I want my teams to have, you know, be, you can rely on them. And I don't think they have that. And uh, Torji has absolutely proved me wrong. And Jim Fat was one of the best players coming in yeah. to this stage. So Mouse have a real chance here of upsetting everybody I, and winning them. I can understand. I mean, you've been keeping your finger on the pulse of Counter-Strike, but your high <laughs> is when they came rising up, right? This is when Mouse really made a statement in the game. And listen, I really do appreciate the success that they had because they were one of the first orcs out there to bank and bet on the youth. Yes. To say, our academy team, we're going to trust these guys. The yep. Zershan, the Shuhi, the Torji, we're going to give them a chance. And then even at Frozen, which was a little bit more experienced, but still a relatively young kid. And then Yimpa, what a find. What, what a yes. catch to find this Yimpa, who now shows no sign of nerves at all. Absolute ice in his vein, extremely reliable anchor, one of the highest rated player of the elimination stage and crazy to me to think I don't doubt he's gonna show up I have no doubt at all yeah. for me I it look at Shuhei and his team he did put pull another team to, to the grand finals of the majors just last year in Paris and now he's back here with his old friends he said it I'm happy to do it with my friends over here and for me there is no doubt about about this team when it comes to them playing Counter-Strike. For me, the doubt is the ceiling, it's the arena games. It's the games <laughs> out there, does uh, like too many fans here though. No, I mean, listen, All right. if you like Kerrigan and his story, you, I have a feeling that we are looking at the first years of a Kerrigan-like profile. Yes. Yeah, sure. And this is where the hype is coming from, which you really like. The, the mentality he's showcased already, the mindset he's showcased, his ability to call, to remain calm as well, in hot, fiery situation. I've been very much on the Shui hype train from a very young day, and I mm -hmm. keep on being impressed, and I think he's got an incredible chance to ride all the way to the grand final and to prove that they can have that next step that we're waiting for Mouse. Okay, well, I want to talk about, we'll see them later on, Cloud9. The, the ultimate dark horse for oh, the Oh, there's a reaction. Cloud9? Yeah. Uh, no, we're not uh, feeling not that really. <laughs> Listen, I, 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 I didn't want to say this at the start, because we were all loving each other and everyone was up feeling good, but I think they might win today. Oh, you said it. Yeah, right. no, I think all they right. might. Well, Matt, so much experience, here, so way. much form, you know? Like, they've got it all. Look, Cloud9, Except to get open. this, it has to be the perfect <laughs> storm. It has to be everything clicking in place to make Maniac here cry live. Oh, man. I'm about to absolutely lose my shit during that game. And that's going to happen. That's it. I'm completely <laughs> committed. I'm unbiased as all that it is. But you're right. Cloud9 have a very strong take. And I think it is very impressive how the story has changed around that team. We started this major. I said... The best thing that could happen to them is to fail so they can change. That was my take at the beginning yep. of the event. And now they've made me look like a fool, like the level and how they've risen up to the occasion to ride here. I know, I, I know, we know what's going to happen now. That is all fair. <laughs> but you know, you know where this is coming from? Yeah. It's coming from a place of fear because we okay. fear them right now. If you're a Vitality fan, you look at this Cloud9 roster, you're thinking, oh, wait a minute, what? Axile is playing good Counter-Strike? No, no, wait, Electronic is back. Boomage is hitting with the AWP. Oh, no! What's and you're starting on? to see this nightmare that's coming together, and you have four major winners here. Yes. You have a bunch of playoffs. 
we are going to dive into the nitty gritty down there, down the line, but it is sure. a serious contender, not an easy matchup. It, considering this team coming in, there were so many question marks where we're like, do they even know what they are as a team, right? And the fact that they somehow consistently managed to surprise all of us, and here they are. And listen, we can't take away the experience on the players on the individuals playing on this team, apart from Axel. They have a bunch. Made, they're major winners, right? Like, so much experience here, and I believe this is where they can thrive. But if they do thrive, it's going to be in chaos. Now, there is one favorite coming in. All the cool kids are picking them to win it. But I don't know. Experience counts in majors. So I've got to ask you about Team Spirit. Team Spirit have been peaking at the right time. Yes. They've been explosive. They've got one of the best young players we've probably seen in any version of Counter-Strike. Uh, the greatest rookie year I think I've had the pleasure to witness. Uh, and yet, experience matters. So are Team Spirit real favorites or are they paper tigers? <sighs> Listen, I, I feel like if I'm going to show up here and tell you that I don't believe in spirit, then it means I learned nothing in Karabitsa. Because that's the game we played there. We shifted the goalposts time and time again. We said, yeah. ah, group stage is fine, but let's put a real opponent against them. Wait a minute. No, they win. Oh, but wait until we get to the Boots stage. For dunk. But wow. then once you get to the stage. This is a spice. But how can, you, like, how can you even, if you're, if you're a fan of the game, how can you not just appreciate what this man has been for able sure. to do from his 17 year old age? It, An absolute phenom. Honestly, he's completely redefined what is possible to do from the get-go in Counter-Strike. And now, it, sure, surely it has to come to an end. Like, surely it has to come to an end. This cannot just be the line that he's on for the rest of his career, because we, we don't have the words for it. We don't have the, we, have, we don't have anything. He hasn't stopped yet, though. He's still not stopped yet. And for me, I look at his spirit team, and yes, the Cadawitz line of keep moving the goalposts. They're not going to do it against uh, in a play against good teams. They did it. They're not going to do it in, you know, the, the, the playoffs games. They, they passed they all the it. tests. They're not going to be doing it against FaZe, the final boss. They passed, they passed all the passed, tests. They passed all the tests, and they did it in Cado. But for me, spirit, was Katowice at the apotheosis mm -hmm. of this team, or are they going to replicate here again? That is the question mark. That's a big question. I mean, and we don't have the answer. Let's for the, the storyline, the sacred narrative, facing FaZe in the quarterfinal is the best thing we could ever ask for. It is oh, the gosh. absolute best for Spirit. It's like the Not so much for FaZe. No, for FaZe, maybe. <laughs> arguably not. But it is the moment that you have to slay the dragon if you're Spirit, right? Mm -hmm. Because I do think the 3-0 victory in Katowice is a bit of a smoke screen. I think it was a much closer affair than the brand score actually tells the story of. So now, these are the numbers. This is how it happened happened down there, but just for context, 82. the second map is on a knife's edge. The second map is a story of a couple of rounds, a couple of clutches, yep. in fact, a forced buy that goes Spirit's way on round 24. So now just imagine, close your eyes, imagine FaZe win that second map, and now we push them. Now we get to see what they're made of. And I have a feeling that this is what's gonna happen here. I think FaZe is gonna be enough to push Spirit onto map number three, and this is where the experience of the Rain-like, the Carrigan-like comes into show, and I think FaZe takes it 2-1. Interesting. I mean, look, I'm worried about Spirit. They're starting to actually understand the gravity of the task because Chopper was saying, I'm not quitting till I win a major, right? That's yeah. what he said. And then it gets picked up in an interview. Did, yo, this is a major. You want to win this one? And he went, ah, well, you know. I'm just happy to be It's here. complicated. It's lonely at the top. It's difficult. So it's like, where's the confidence gone? I, I feel it's uh, it's very telling as well, because I look at someone like Donk and just watching his body language when he won the Kato Major, I'm watching him. I'm watching Shirok in tears. And Donk's like, hey, good game, guys. Like, that was fun. I don't think he really understands what he's actually achieved so far as a team, winning a tournament like Kato, the sort of run he has. And now it is absolutely starting to sink in now is like, all right oh, oh shit we're actually yeah. the favorites here the pressure is on so I feel like they're trying to temper the expectations just for their for their own mental health but I don't think that's what's uh, going to get them that major they need to play the way they did in Katowice unhindered I completely mean, unleashed they they play the best counter strike there is right now and I have no problem telling you this you look at their T side there's no other team that do it like like spirit protocols absolutely tight Ability to play fast counter strike, slow counter strike, good clutching ability, strong players towards the late round. And on the CT side, you rely on an incredible amount of skill. When Zontix is your major debutant, but one of the strongest anchor we have in the game, and Magix is like a gooey, supported type player who can play anywhere. Like, holy hell, where is the weakness for Spirit? We if have it's seen, not their yeah. own head. We have seen few weaknesses, though. We have seen slight little chinks in the armor, slight little cracks. And I feel this is where some teams are going to be putting in the chisel, trying to pry it open. I believe there are a couple of Bro, cracks. They lost like one game. Game. They look like one, they lost one they game. They have been tested. They, they lost have, one game. They can bleed. And you, you know what they say, Richard? Yeah, if it, if bleeds, it bleeds, we can kill we it. Can kill it. Yep. Absolutely. Could just real quick, I talked about them at the start. It was mainly to see if the crowd was listening. But uh, look, G2, I, I'm amazed. I, I really do think they could have come in as hometown heroes because they've got Hooksy. Hooksy's Danish, right? The, the crowd should be wanting to back him, but it just hasn't happened. And look, we're going we're gonna to tease it out here, bring the graphic. 
Yeah, yeah. There's still a reaction. Yeah, it's okay. A 50 /50. All right. Yeah, it's yeah. a 50-50. They're not going to turn on yeah. you completely. But look, look, this is my... You're talking about nightmare scenarios, right? Yeah. Here's mine. Yeah, G2 uh, shouldn't be here, right? Like, agreed, right? I'm, I'm just telling you, you shouldn't. We all saw what happened. We all saw Hoopsy whiff. <laughs> Ten shots in the back of a stationary crashed opponent. And, you know, like, screaming after you do that when you win. I, I, I guess if you need to do it, fine. But here's the thing. It's like now, as we said about FaZe, all bets are off for this team. They've got Munisi. I think he's the most valuable player in Counter-Strike. Maybe Donk is setting the highest bar right now. So. They can conceivably win this major, and I'm just saying, PGL production, Hooks, he's going to be on stage next to me, <laughs> drinking a glass of milk. <laughs> How's my major today, <laughs> dickhead? And I, I am in a nightmare. I mean, it's a nightmare for you, but honestly, if they, if they were able to pull this off, it would be incredible, because we cannot forget the fact that for Nico, how tantalizingly close he was in Stockholm a couple of years ago. And ever since then, it's just been a disaster after disaster for him and his lineup. But now he's got the young gun, the young goat, the baby goat, Monacy, who for me, I mean, is the most informed player coming into the playoffs. Ah, he's the strongest sniper we have in the game. Uh, you're talking about this Nico who was that close to winning a major. We're just looking at a shadow of it currently, and that is one of the issues. Yep. But you have to you have to imagine the idea, you have to envision the idea that he would show up for a playoff right now, being a big game player, the likes of Hunter as well. Yes. We can always produce better Counter-Strike when they're being put in these conditions. But I think the eye test doesn't lie. G2 is not a team that is in form, it's not a team that is in confidence. They're looking for their Counter-Strike, they're looking for a map pool. They've been granted this opportunity right now, and it might just be, <laughs> right, might just be the merit of the players they pull it through. Yeah, maybe. Uh, look, what did I, he get? What did he get? Yeah, I know. Go back. Camera, I want to see. Whatever. It's done. Whatever. Uh, but no, I, I, I think, look, I think actually G2 maybe needed that. Maybe it's just right. like, yeah. we just need one break. We just need one thing to go our way and to generate some self-belief. Because, you know, if God is on your side, <laughs> Or can you is lose? It, is it the god or the devil? I'm, I'm not <laughs> sure about that. But listen, uh, I agree with you. It's just been Monacy consistently delivering in the server again and again and again and again. And I look at Nexa, Hunter, and Nico, the trio who were there in Stockholm, by the way. This is your time to can kind of, you know, lessen the load on these young I mean, kids back. Yeah. We, we're, we're miles away from that G2 at the time. For, for personal uh, importance and performances, we're far away from that. This isn't this isn't the G2 we were looking at in Stockholm. But I think the quarterfinal is where we set the tone. Yeah. The quarterfinal is where you, you get to know everything you need about G2. Because if they beat Maus, nobody stops them to the grand final. And look, you, you gotta be ready for that. There's one of the team we have to talk about. One of the greatest organizations in esports history. Obviously always there or thereabouts in Counter-Strike. It's an RV. And they're a little bit different. Because the great one, not here. And now they're having to do it with new parts, new pieces, a new outlook. I saw an interview the other day. I'm like, this is how interesting Navi are. You know, it's like they were saying about Simple. Uh, we don't know what his future holds. Maybe we win with this team. You can't. It, you, it you, is possible. You can't predicate you, the future of your team based on just one player, even if though it might be Simple, the great one. You can't plan the future of your team, you know wondering whether it's going to come back or not. You have to work with what you've had. And what they have right now is an Alexi B who's on a bit of this anime revenge arc, taking a lot of teams who, you know, who kicked him unceremoniously, and he's made wonderful work. He might not be simple, but wonderful. has stepped into some very big shoes, and he's mm. walking the walk. Yep. I think it's a, it's a proof of concept of how the team is run. I think that's what I'm impressed the most with Navi. The alliance between Alexi B and Blade has once again been successful. Like, honestly, their ability to just have new players coming in and take the time to establish a game plan that's working, to establish protocols that are working, and then trust that Alexi B over time is going to get the team to where he needs <laughs> to be. I mean, listen, you, you got to be in awe of what they've been accomplishing as well. They're, they're a low-key, a low-profile team. They don't really get a whole lot of time under the spotlight, but now they're here at the Major, and Blade said, listen, we're looking for top four minimum. These are confidence work. These yeah. are very full of confidence work. Like, he gets to see them work. He gets to see them put in the work day in, day out, uh, polish their Counter-Strike, and he says, top four, or we are disappointed. Well, there's a couple of players I want to talk about just real quickly for Na'Vi, and obviously we've got the sublime in the step-up from JL, who's yes. been lights out here. But at the opposite end of the spectrum, we've got Imma, yes. who has been put into this team after a really, really solid performance in Paris but hasn't been able to live up to those expectations. Yeah. Meanwhile, this guy... They like him, they oh, love yeah. him. 
They made made, a, lot, made a lot of friends at this tournament because for the first time he's really put his money where his mouth is. He's, he's actually delivered. He's charismatic and he's charismatic in the server as well. He's absolutely been delivering time and time again. Highest rated player for his team alongside Wonderful in the op. And yes, it's been completely opposite trajectories. I'm looking at someone like Emma. I'm like, dude, when are you going to be stepping up? Is it going to be the next event? Is it going to be the one after this? But no, he's consistently really failed to come anywhere close to what we saw from him earlier on. And I fear, I fear, depending on the result we have here, at this event for Na'Vi, his future looks very murky for me. I mean, definitely. Na'Vi has always been a team that has the grand scheme of things in mind. You know, they don't make mm. impulsive decisions. They don't just remove someone. But just imagine the state of mind you have to be in when you're Ima, and you are aware, you're self-aware of <laughs> your limitations, and you know you have Symbol in the background just breathing down your neck. <laughs> of He's just looking at you like the Great Reaper, just like, hey, I'm just ready to take your spot, buddy. Yes, go ahead, miss that shot. I'm, <laughs> coming, I'm right there. I'm not saying Na'Vi is going to pull the trigger on that, but it no. has to be in your back of your mind. I'm sure it's something that they have addressed as a group. How do we deal with this situation? But the EMI problematic isn't going away. It is an absolute failure so far for someone that was touted as an MVP, the previous major, and is nowhere to be seen now. That has to change at immediately, as in tomorrow. But yeah. credit to Alexi B, though. The fact that he's managed to, no matter how many moving parts he's, made, he's had thus far in his team, he's somehow managed to find him close to success. And this has absolutely been a, a statement to the amount of work he's been putting in with the team alongside, of course, Blade. Yeah, and look, I want to say, Imma, by the way, did his best games on a stage, in a stadium, in front of a crowd. A long time ago. So, though. yeah, sure, but maybe you can find that gear, and especially if you're motivated, playing for your position, essentially. If you're not motivated in the playoffs of a major, I, I mean, don't know what No, 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 it, it's fight or flight, and we have to be careful. Yes. It's fight or flight, and some people actually try to get the fuck out of here <laughs> instead of just facing the challenge. This might yeah, be what's, what's we'll, it with Ima. We'll find out right. what they're made of, my man. Uh, we can take a quick look at the bracket as well, by the way. Just to remind people who are joining late, obviously you missed a great uh, start to the proceedings. This is what's coming at you on the broadcast. At We've got Cloud9 no, Vitality. That. That's going to be setting us off, obviously, as well. You can see Team Spirit versus FaZe Clan. That'll be a little bit later. Uh, Eternal Fire versus Na'Vi. The two unknown quantities that can really shift the bracket drastically and destroy everybody's pickums and mouse versus G2. So look, we've got about, uh, I don't know, approximately a minute, minute and 30 seconds before we're gonna really get the show running. So I wanna ask you guys, who, who are you picking for this? Well, to uh, win the major. All right, uh, I, I guess I could say it. Go on. Who do you guys think I have as a favorite for the major? Is it Vitality, is it? Of course it's Vitality. Right, Vitality to win. Big surprise there. Yeah. I, I woke up today, Rich. No chance. <laughs> No chance. Just give me a chance. I, I, I woke up case. today and I and I felt I felt in my bones. King Carrigan will be crowned here. Ooh. It's going to be phase. It's spicy, yes it is. But I think they're going to slay all the dragons. It's going to be phase winning this. Yeah, it's very interesting. I really don't want to pick it because I do you know. I don't. What do you I, got? I don't even know what G2. I'm talking about according to uh, <laughs> the CS world. But no, look, I I I, I my. I had the feeling phase, but then, like I say, I woke up to the nightmare. It's going to be G2. And everybody oh, at home, I've made peace with it. I've made peace with the fact that it's going to be G2. None of us and I recommend all of you as well do. It's actually happening. I know. I'm trying to anticipate, get nope. yourself into it's that happening. mindset. Anyway, we've got to wrap this up because we are getting ready for the players to take to the stage. And so that means we need to get over there and introduce you to James Banks. Copenhagen, Royal Arena. This is the start of something very special. This is the start of a new era in Counter-Strike. And it all begins in a new game, fresh Counter-Strike 2. We look back and we see this major where lots of players make it for the very first time, going further than before. They're the new generation. Then we have the old guard, the legends, They've been here before, they know what it feels like, they know what it is all about. But Denmark is the kingdom of Counter-Strike. And Denmark has given us their Royal Arena for these teams to do battle and fight it out to crown the first ever champion of Counter-Strike 2. Legends will be made here. It is our 20th major. This is history that you will all witness in front of you. So let me ask you, are you ready? Yeah. Well, let's bring on our first team, Cloud9. They've come here and they've looked so good. They've defied the odds. They've come in with a new, 
unique style and performance. And you cannot forget, there is four major champions on this roster, and they are proving all the doubters and all the haters wrong. So let me hear it. It's Cloud9! Their opponents, the previous major champions, but a slightly new look for CS2. But this team, they are always looking for victory. Doesn't matter what team shows up, doesn't matter what player performs, these guys want to go for the back-to-back -back major championships. But they need to deliver with everyone giving 100%. The question is, Will it be V for victory today? This is Vitality! We're looking at our first quarterfinal game. These teams are ready. Bumic, come up here with me. Apex, come on over. The players will take their seat and get ready for this battle. Hobbit, you're here. Hello, Hobbit. How are you? Very good. I like the hat. Is this? Uh, could you explain it to me? Yeah, it's like has a traditional hat. Yes, it's called Takia. Okay, I like it. You're looking good. Now, the last time you guys were on this stage, right? It was a big moment for you guys to reach in and succeed with this roster. What does it feel like to be here right now? Yeah, I already said that I'm very happy to be here to play in this game in front of this amazing crowd, in front of my family, and yeah. I, I hope it's going to be a big show. Now, how much improvement have you seen in your team throughout this major so far? Can you see a difference? I mean, everyone can see the difference. I mean, it's all about chemistry, and we try to create and adapt our play style for everyone. So, of course, we are improving, not fast like we wanted, but still we are improving. You guys always want more, you always want to do it fast, but we have seen these improvements. But going up against Vitality, it's not been the easiest of games for you, at least on this stage, but you did beat them at the RMR. How's your confidence right now to take them down where it matters most? I mean, Vitality is one of the best teams in the world. Of course, it's going to be hard to play versus them every time. And it doesn't matter what uh, form they have, what shape they have, it, especially on crowd here in front of amazing crowd. It's going to be hard, but still, uh, we believe that we can do further. Okay, let's see if you can. For you, Apex, you've had success in this arena, but you've also had a few days to prepare, to recover. Is everyone at 100% now? Yes, we are. We are. Group stage has been pretty rough, not gonna lie. But no, we all at 100% and we'll show that we are a playoff team. And when you say show you're a playoff team, you're the last team to win inside the Royal Arena. Do you feel like you have what it takes to do it again? Of course, it's, um, it's an arena we know, even though we lost also, uh, me and Zaiwu lost a few years ago against uh, Navi here. But yeah, I think uh, we feel good here and I hope to feel good again. <laughs> you got a smile on your face while saying it. Now, if I look at two members of your team in Mezzi and Flames, they don't have that experience here when it comes to the major and being deep in these playoff runs. What did you tell them today to help them get ready? What was that speech looking like? 
Well, I will not uh, tell all my secrets, but um, well, it's just to focus on Counter Strike and know what we we know to do. We played uh, pretty well last year at some tournaments. This year, well, and some other no. But it's all about us and all about the way we're going to enter the game. And just focusing on CS is going to be enough. And do you think you learned from your mistakes last time against Cloud9? Well, that was RML tournaments. It's a lot different. No, it's a big game, so it's uh, going to be way more tension for both teams. So we beat them three times last year. Why not the fourth time now? I like it. A lot of confidence as well. Guys, fist bump, shake hands, whatever you want to do. <laughs> Copenhagen, the teams are ready. But are you? No, no, no. Copenhagen, are you ready? That's more like it. Let's kick it off. Vitality taking on Cloud9. Yeah, thanks a lot, James. Are you ready for this death segment? We've got to bring it now. I'm um, ready. <laughs> so, yeah. look, uh, Vitality, uh, we, we've got to talk about it. Everything that could go wrong did go wrong for them here in Copenhagen. Let's start by talking about Ziwoo. Uh, obviously, the talisman. You know, the, the, this incredible player, one of the best rookies we saw until Dong just smashed it out the stratosphere. And he's, he came in sick. Uh, and it was very, very hard for him. I mean, at one point he said he was like even like delirious, you know? It was really, really bad. And thanks to Flames, they were dragged through to this stage. Now, we understand Ziwu is back. He's healthy again. He's better. And he's got someone to prove. Because I would say, I think arguably his CV in terms of major playoffs, that kind of thing. Yeah. I think it's not as strong as it should be for a player of his talents. And I agree with you. What kind of case could I make against that claim when you're looking at a man of his caliber, which is the best player in the last five years of the game? He's going to go down in the history of Counter-Strike as the greatest. I am sure of that. But the truth of the matter is there's only three playoffs appearance for a man like him. Yeah. One trophy, two quarterfinal, and a boatload of disappointments. With different lineups, the fresh vitality, mostly Majors have been complicated. There's moments, there's 9th to 11th finishes. So now he's in a space where I would argue there's an immense amount of pressure on his shoulder because we were all ready to give him a pass for the group stage. It can happen to anybody to be under the weather. It can happen to anybody to have a worse game. But then when you're Zygul and the expectations are you're the best player in the world, now is the time where the contrast has to hit. You have to punch in the face the whole crowd here in the Royal Arena to prove that you are back to your level. Now you ask about vitality, I take the flip side of that conversation. I say they prove to themselves that they have the quality from within to yeah. win games when he's on average. Yeah. That is a strong statement to have, and it's a reminder for everybody, for the Flames and the Sphinx of the lineup, that you cannot just sleep on the shoulder of Superman next to you. You need to be ready to make the moves and the difference. They did that in the group stage. Yeah, they needed the Hive to just rally around the Queen Bee, or rather the King Bee in the case of Vitality. And that's what we saw from Flames, that's what we saw from Sphinx, and that is such a good thing to know, that it's not just the one Musketeer, it's all three stepping up and delivering and shouldering the load. But for me, the big question is, Sphinx has done it. He's done it in an arena, he's done it in front of a big crowd. Flames hasn't done it yet. And I feel, even if we see Zywu playing at the level oh. he has in the past, and we know he can do, if Sphinx and Flames don't deliver the fashion they have, it's not going to be easy at all for the defending champions, mind you. It's been excellent from Spink so far. We have to put it out there. His work on the CT side has been stellar. I think it's been a work in progress for Vitality to get the best out of him, but we have gotten to that point now. Oh, we have gotten sure. to the point where he is one of the five best players in the world, and he continues to deliver. You talk about Flames, that's right. Huge X Factor moving into this game. We're yes. talking about a young kid when it comes to the stage, fresh, rookie as hell, needing to make the moves, needing to find the entries. Now, we're going to have to decide, obviously, where we're going on that oh, one. Boy. I, Listen, they share a whole lot of love when it comes to the maps. I don't think yep. there's going to be uh, any curveball being thrown out. I could be wrong, but I think the map pool is pretty much decided. The bands are relatively obvious. Now, Vitality go for the Inferno. Not it has a, been a, a strong goal. It has yep. been a strong goal for them. And if you're Cloud9, overpass. do you go for an overpass or a Mirage? Oh, holy hell. There it Why is. have you done that? They go there for Anubis. There it is. They pick it when they could have had him as a third map. Yep. Why have they done this? That's that is a mistake. That's I a think mistake. it's a mistake. That's it's a massive confidence, mistake. confidence, maybe. That's a massive mistake. Picking Overpass. There is no way in hell Vitality would have banned out Anubis. It was supposed to be Inferno. It was supposed to be Overpass getting picked by Cloud9 and Anubis, the, Anubis as a decider well, coming in. They've just been gifted. Nah, listen, the only way I can look at it is that Cloud9 is ready to call their own numbers on the bad side of the map. That's the only reason I can see, because they would have had to have this conversation on Mirage, which would have been the peak in my eyes. They would have had to start on T-side. Maybe they say, you know what? We don't want to deal with this. We believe in our Anubis. If you go to three, no matter the half, no matter the side, 
we can pounce. And Mirage is obviously a little bit of a weakness for Vitality. It's not mm -hmm. at the very top. So I almost feel like there is an injunction for Vitality to win 2-0. You have to put them to bed sure. real quick. Don't let it go to Mirage. Yeah, Mirage well, could, Mirage could get messy. 100% agree with you right there. Uh, look, you, you, we can dissect the minds of a Cloud9, try and throw a bit of a curveball coming in with this Anubis pick, but man, they better have their A game. And when I say A game, I'm talking about Axile. Axile is so instrumental on the CT side. They've been winning that map primarily on the CT side, thanks to Axile just being so much more, playing with so much more energy, so much more fire, so to speak. So if he doesn't step up, uh, this one's a 2 over Vitality, Rich. Yeah, well, we, we will see. We will see. Look, guys, I'm so great that we, uh, so grateful that we got to do this and talk about it and set the scene for everyone in the arena and at home but it is now time to introduce you to the people who will be telling this story i am so honored for the first time in a major to throw it over to harry and hugo Thank you, Richard. The most stacked playoff bracket in Counter-Strike major history. On one side, Cloud9 looking to show that the super team we were promised versus the reigning major champs, Vitality, trying to start CS2 off as well as they end it go. Yeah, and I want to speak to everyone here in the arena right now, showing up on a Thursday afternoon, no less. You're about to witness history. You guys are the beating heart of this arena. You guys are the orchestra that everything is accentuated behind. So Copenhagen, make some noise! The first round of the CS2 major playoffs in Copenhagen. It's Inferno, it's Anubis, it's Mirage, and it's Cloud9 on the T side by choice. Vitality, they've had Zai Wu cold into the elimination stage, the third highest rated player. Right now, this international squad needed more than ever. For Cloud9, it's been a revolving door of entry fraggers. Power from Electronic, from Axel, from Hobbit. Who will step up today? Well, one thing is for certain, and that's that we're going to get good numbers out of Sphinx on this CT side, man. He's been the go-to. He's been the guy to watch. Him and Flames have made up for that gap in firepower from Zai Wu's absence. We know that he's been feeling under the weather. We know he's not fell up to it, but he's feeling back in form here right in time for the playoffs, and it looks like they are going to go walking into Zai Wu. You said he had to start strong, and so let's see if he's got it in him. The hit is coming his way. Zaiwu is on the boost. Pitch a perfect position for the point man of Vitality, but smoked out, locked out. Zaiwu's got to tee up flashes. It's Apex, first point of contact. They move in, and Apex falls immediately. So now Zaiwu's got to hold on, but he's waiting for his team to join him. He's waiting for reinforcements, a disaster. He wanted to be involved. He wanted to have some say-so in how this site take goes down. But instead, it's Vitality, a man down, slow on the retake here. Past the coffins, Cloud9 aren't giving them a thing. Cloud9 aren't fighting. Hobbit no there. kills given over yet, and there's Sphinx on the board. Oh, Sphinx with another. Surely no more from Sphinx. There's so many more players ready to help him. Messi answers back, and it's just perfecto. Wow. That was a clinical ex execute from Cloud9, but cowering in the back of the site, Vitality, a man down, piece it together. What a start from Sphinx. Questions on whether these players can do it on the big stage. Questions for Flames, but Sphinx is undeniable. Massive opening round for Vitality. So difficult to get those retakes off. And Hobbit in the pool in a post part, well, we've seen that at a major before. A major win for Hobbit all the way back in Krakow. But Vitality deny that opening round. Captain or not, they take the pistol. And so this bodes well. I know it's just the pistol underway, but that starts 4v5 for Vitality. They're on the back foot from the get-go. Apex got iced out at the back of the site, even as Zaiwu tries to help him with the util. It's so interesting to see Cloud9 picking T-Side coming into this map, right? It's Vitality's yeah. pick. The desk was shocked at the veto. Missing overpass feels like a surprise. Maybe Cloud9 feel like they're being anti-stratted, but they want to come in confident. They want to come in swinging into this quarterfinal. And the T-Side is a perfect place to do it. Bomb plant allows a buy. Vitality, no, it's coming. So this one is a very serious tone for Vitality. As you say, they know they're up against the guns here. 
Apex is undeterred by it. Trying to play ahead of the curve down towards Banana. Banana control has been a huge question in this major. Some teams electing to give it up entirely, just playing flash retake plays, never really fighting for control. But teams like G2 have been fine. They send it down, take this space. Vitality opt for the latter for now. Deep Smoke gives them the semblance of control, but Cloud9 playing patient, waiting to take it. Look at the freedom. Four back to the other side. I hope Flames has a re-smoke back at the B site because he's got full banana and nothing to help him with. Yeah, in the meantime, Cloud9 are working their way out in the top middle here. But they haven't ever given up on that ambition of the late banana control. So even as they run into Sphinx, when you see him floating around over towards the long side, that just might send you away. And they always wanted to end over here at banana. Flames is the man lying in wait. He doesn't have that smoke that you touched on earlier. Apex is moving over with it. And so timing is going to be good for Apex here. That smoke is a big problem for Cloud9. They might not have a choice. They might have to go right through the billowing smoke. Vitality bringing in a rotation at the right second. 25 on the clock as it goes down. And third reinforcement as Cloud9 pounds. Yeah, no choice but to go through here. They've been countered by the Util. They won't get past Sphinx in CT either. Flames, he's gonna rock here in Zaiwu's absence. This guy stepped up. Apex looking to deal the killing blow, but he can just wait. They've got him pinned in into the pit. Ooh. And perfecto, no clutch today. That's a clean round for Vitality. That's everything they wanted to be. Reassuring. Flames gives it, gives it up at just the right time. And they still have three as Cloud9 come to the hit. Right now, looking 1D for Cloud9. A team that was plagued with in-game leading problems from the inception of this roster. But Boomich is back, the capable hands of a major winner, four of which on Cloud9. And we need him to show that individual prowess along with the leadership if Cloud9 were ever going to take down the reigning major champs. I mean, that's kind of the, the tantalizing angle to this Boomich redemption arc, right? Guy got put on blast out there, his whole life spewed out onto the internet and then had to rebuild back from that point. Not just his, his brand in the game, but everything. Him as a person had to make a comeback. And he's found a home here in Cloud9. He's called the blinder so far. I mean, Cloud9 yeah, fell down once through yeah. the uh, through their run at the major. Cloud9 have lost only one series on their entire circuit run. That's including the RMR, where they beat Vitality, right? They came through with only an L to spirit. That's acceptable. This one will be delectable for Vitality. Easy kills on the pistols in middle. It was always meant to be a 3-0. Electronic delaying the inevitable. And Vitality right now building up that CT money as they should. Confident peach from Zywu and Sphinx. He's 4-0. But Cloud9, what have they got coming? I mean, everyone's been saying Zywu's back, and this is our real look at it, right? 4-0 to open, and now he gets to don that AWP. And I love how the desk looked at him, because again, it's, it's major playoffs where Zywu's not looked as, as good as he could be, as good as he's shown us even on stages in smaller events. This is where it really matters. At those majors, where you write your legacy, and even though Vitality have one win in their pocket, that's not enough, not for this team of superstars. So Zaiwu, time to show it. In this first gun round, Cloud9 go back to a slow banana control. Boomich opts to go back through the Molotov, not committing on his own. And Vitality play inside of the site. Got this flash set up to give Flames a kill, perhaps. He's going to go. Again, with so much respect from these Molotovs. No one want to throw themselves willy-nilly alone into a, a 1vx fight. The trade of Util comes up in favor of Cloud9. Ooh. They'll be punishing, but they get ahead of the double nades. Cloud9 are way closer than Vitality are ready for. Well, once again, hitting that kind of 50 second mark as Cloud9 look to go back, grab the bomb, group up over here outside of B, but this time they want to be ahead of the util. They get that smoke out of Apex, and Electronic oh. tries to play his hand through it. But Apex doesn't miss a beat, and when you repel that first man in, 
Vitality know they've just bought themselves an extra 15, 20 seconds here with that smoke down. Yeah, it's again looking predictable because Vitality have even read this. They pulled the bluff. Spinks moving over. Not like you need him. This 1 2 setup at the back of the site is perfection. The smoke can land on a Molotov. Cloud9 can't make Vitality uncomfortable. Williams blinded. The flashes will work for now, and Spinks is overran. They know about this double oh. setup in the back, and Apex is run down. That's more like it. Cloud9 break through a triple defense out of Vitality over towards B. And out of all the ways you could have looked to post your first round on the board, that is a nice way to do it. Even though Vitality knew what was going on, Vitality go a man up off of Apex getting that kill to Electronic. It's not enough to win them the round. So that's a real feel-good moment for Cloud9 as everyone yeah. chips in to winning that one for them. That's what their game plan has been so far, right? Just standard B executor and just trying to entry together. I think Electronics play is understandable. He feels like he has a timing on that push as the smoke blooms, but Apex holds strong still. Spinks a little discombobulated, pushing before his team are ready to fight, hiding out in smokes. And a fiery round for Cloud9 to start this series. This map was never meant to be theirs, but without their safe pick of overpass, the question is, can they long out a red-hot vitality? I mean, there was a way that you thought this veto was going to go down, and Inferno was always a part of that, right, for, uh, for the vitality squad. It was Cloud9 who kind of sidestepped the veto, changed it up, with that Anubis in at the second, and will that be a veto that they come to regret? some answers for us. This was a, a safe bet map, so Cloud9 have certainly had time and a chance to prep for this. It feels like their goal is just to keep on abusing B. You've certainly seen two faces of this man on our screens right here over towards these B holds. Over in apartments, Axile is he ready for Mezzi? Oh! He is! Oh! Flick back onto him! Okay. Mezzi thought he had that dead to rights. And so Cloud9, we saw what they could do 4v5. What do they do now that they've got the advantage? Oh, they oh take now they off. take it even further. Apex on a silver platter. And I love this gamble for Vitality. It's the best they can do in this situation. They just have to hope Cloud9 misread this, overthink this, make a mistake. Cloud9 have the room to send a probe, a lurk. And just given what they've already shown us in this map, this B site has been so tantalizing. So once that bomb's picked up and Electronic makes his claim on Banana, this may just be that triple save for Vitality. Especially when you don't see a smoke blocking you at B. Cloud9 are keeping counts. They know Vitality have two more. But seeing none at this site beckons them in. Feels like Boomich is calling their bluff in this instance, right? Doesn't believe because it feels like you know what what Apex and the Vitality Boys want Cloud9 to anticipate here is that they've gone for this gamble, but over towards me. That's where all the rounds have ended. That's where all the rounds have ended for Cloud9. But they don't bite down on that bullet. Instead, it will just be Cloud9 moving into an empty B site and a three-man save forced from Vitality. Axile and Electronic both getting their entry kills, right? Axile's was pretty phenomenal on that flick on Apartments, and he has been the, the biggest question mark in Cloud9 for some time. This guy was you know, top five player in the world back-to-back -back last year, not even on the rankings, not even relevant. And now, even since Cologne, he's been struggling a lot on land, struggling a lot in CS2. He's trying to build back in. But in that elimination stage, he put up his second best land performance of his career. So a return to form for Axile at the picture perfect time for Cloud9. Yeah, I mean, you know, one of the one of the most talked about problems with this Cloud9 squad was the lack of AWP. And I think when you were looking uh, based on recent performances, Axile was one of the front runners to, to be in that conversation to get cut from the squad. Feels like he has to play to prove himself. He has to play for his life in the, in these games. And he's delivered across the board here at the Major. Yeah, and that's despite a very slow start. We mentioned this in the intro as well, but the, the depth of firepower on Cloud9 runs so deep. Different players being able to step up at different points in, in different stages, really. And while Perfecto has remained consistent across both two. Every other player has been a little up and down, having a strong start, a slow finish, or vice versa. But if Cloud9 were ever going to upset at Vitality, we need Axar, we need Electronic. The latter of which was a guy who stepped up to defeat this very team on their flawless RMR run to this very major. 
to put up or shut up for Cloud9 right now. They're answering the call. Yeah, two in a row. Vitality can feel this one really closing up and their control they once had after winning the pistol, that high they were riding, could get away from them here. It was a timeout called at the end of that last round. Time to talk it over. Apex, a 15-year veteran of Counter-Strike. Let's see what he's cooked up in that timeout. Finally, Zywoo making a play, or at least attempting to. He's been awfully passive since getting the AWP. I think that's the first time Cloud9 have even seen it. And he's playing an instant rotation as well, swapping out with Apex, or rather reinforcing. Grenades grabbed for this B defense. Double pit setup, it leaves the wrap open. Cloud9 won't know that, though. They feel like they read their calls have been on the money so far, but are they ready for this one-two punch? Apex the man to set them up. Flames playing the close angle, but right now the attention is on this Zaiwu AWP. He plays it very mobile in this round. That shot fired over at A. Oh. And now he's a part and parcel of the B side. Double kill from the AWP. And so finally Vitality throw down the gauntlet. They stop this B play in its tracks, but Cloud9 try to adjust, try to get past Sphinx oh, down oh, in the oh. pit, and Axar will find him. Gives way to a 2v2, Zaiwu in rotation. Apex fast through up Banana, all the way in the top mid. Zaiwu making noise over at long. Right now, you just need one kill in the right direction from Apex, and that would be worth its weight in gold. Not looking. No idea, Zaiwu has pulled the distraction off. Axile dead, Apex leads the charge. Ready. And so now it's Boomich, ready for two players up through the short side. Boomich rising above this smoke. Just Zaiwu, left to be, oh, but shot no! Oh no, Boomich! Brings it home for Cloud9! What a disaster! Both guns run dry, and the Glock beats the Deagle. On four health, they spammed him through the smoke. They don't stop the captain of Cloud9. Not in this clutch. What a read that they both wrapped around as well. Boomin just gives up long entirely, plays on top of the box, and all set up by stupendous shots from Axile. Cloud9 with that X Factor, and a third round. Promising start to the round from Zaiwu as well. And when he's got the hot hands like that, it's so hard to put a stop to him. It ends up being super ugly. What kind of heat on those hands, Harry? Is it fever? 6 1 for Zaiwu. A one shot miss that matters most. We've only got pistols on this B side right now. And getting absolutely blown to pieces. Forced to concede. Cloud9, a slow, methodical, painstaking T side so far, running these rounds down to the final 30 seconds every time. And the way that that round ends is a bit of a problem for, for Vitality and the, the back and forth mind games of the game, right? Like they haven't been able to repel these B plays. They finally do it, but then they get exec on into that A site. They come short in the clutch. They're trying to get to reel in this top banana control, and they can't do it. Boomich and Perfecto. Light up the pistols as they attempt to aggro down Banana. Oh, and Axel oh. taps Zai Wu out of the game. Goodbye. Axel is not missing a beat right now. What a great time for this guy to keep it going. That elimination stage performance at 1.35 rating. And trying to drag them even further through the quarterfinal. Mezzi, this round's already decided and not even a lick of damage from Vitality to celebrate. We said our Cloud9 would have plenty of time to get ready for this map, and it feels like they have. They bought their A game. Mezzi trying to do some damage in at the end. Something, a consolation prize for the round, but not allowed from Boomage. Topping the charts in that round there. Someone who has to rebuild everything about himself to, to come back in this Cloud9 squad. He's really put his name back on the map as Boomich.
Yeah, we sort of tried to get last major right with uh, with that one one win squad. He came through six months on the team, not even in game leading, just secondary calling. He looked really good as an individual. He proved his his you know firepower hadn't fallen off. But that's not what you need from him in this team. Despite that, he's doing it seven and three on Boomage while calling the shots and staying on Vitality's toes. Now look, looking to lap them entirely. Got a rebuy, got an AWP, it's glass. Armorless on this B bomb site. And the trade of nades has been a consistent factor. I'd say for the most part, Vitality have won that out. It's not necessarily led to them winning rounds, though. Yeah, if anything, that's that's the even wilder part, right? Oftentimes, it used to be the case, if you were winning that banana util fight, you would go on to win the banana control, but that's not been the story of this game so far. This is going to be a very early X that can change the pace for Cloud9. They've been going for these slow, long, drawn-out rounds, and even though Vitality take control, if they don't rotate someone back, this could go wrong. Cloud9 re-emerge in the banana, but they're ready to hit that other side. Ball, block smoke. That's a big move for Spinks. And Electronic begs them to push in. Sawu posted, but they don't know about Electronic. Oh, oh no! just got it, but not found. Flames at least comes up with a response. Hobbit now sees they block this smoke over at long. The bomb is on the back of Perfecto, waiting at Banana. So the route through CT is the best bet in for Cloud9. Axar puts the hurt on. Boomich caught in rotation. That bomb is now coming back. Hobbit transitions into having to cut down these players in rotation. And Hobbit will do exactly that. Just Mezzi left. And that bomb could go anywhere. That bomb is going B. Mezzi gets dodged and Axile don't want to be in the path of this guy right now. He is a force of nature. Force to be reckoned with. Hitting every headshot, every flick. Every opener right now that Cloud9 need, getting kills on both bomb sites. Vitality feeling the burn on their map pick, their home safe map. The map they took Cloud9 down on last time. Right now, an empty CT side once we've hit rifle rounds. Cloud9 in full control. Back of Banana, I mean, these anti-ecos have been a wash. Nothing of note. Nice grenades, either way. And again, a triple setup, but that re-smoke again buys time. I think Vitality have had so many B stacks as well in this map. Cloud9 have defeated every single one. This flame's ahead of it. Yeah, he's looking at activated, but Electronics is not today. They flash him through the smoke. Flames just looking for those few oh. kills to bring him back into the game. But Electronic, he spams, he wins, and so he just keeps going back for it. There's a time to call it off. Two low players for Cloud9. Let your high health players entry now and keep this round as clean as can be. Keep that boot to the neck. Spinks, can he save them yet again? He's been the consistency. He's been the guy for Vitality to keep the dream of getting to this position alive in spite of Zaiwu's absence. And so Spinks trying to get us all believing. One kill on the Deagle already. Zaiwu offering up assistance with the flashbang, but Spinks has got to go. And Bobby on chases oh. the kills of Banana. But can't get away with it. Zaiwu smoked off now. This one's coming out of the final few seconds. Spam on the smoke. Wait. Close! Bob plot denied! Zaiwu's trying to steal the round away. Zaiwu's trying to do it solo, but Perfecto just dodges capture. And so it's another one of these clutches for Messi. Another clutch that might just slip through the fingers of Vitality. Cloud9 keeps shutting them down. And since that pistol, since the anti-ecos, Vitality haven't found a thing. And it's not even close. Losing unwinnable clutches. Cloud9 keep this colossal T-side building. Two timeouts used already for the Vitality squad. We're not even through that first half. There was a chance, a glimmer of hope on that bomb denial. A perfect reposition. 
And even Axel turning from that Deagle push of Sphinx makes it very hard to hit the helmet. No clean kills, only damage. This has got to be it. We've got to see Vitality make a move, make a play, get Saiwu involved. They tried that mid boost earlier on. Cloud9 haven't touched the orb. Why not? This is the best map to avoid it on that T side. Even this stat line right here is a huge problem, right? We said how consistent Sphinx has found himself, how he's kind of been the backbone of this Vitality run through the Major so far. Well, currently Axel, half of his kills are on Sphinx. Half of his kills has shut down the oh. man. Through the smoke, they're sacrificed to flames. But that's going to trigger a bit of a response out of Cloud9. Faster rotate away from B. Into who, you ask? Into the woo. This has got to be his moment. This has got to be his time. Right place, right time for it. Zai Wu finds one on the AWP. Cloud9 still look undeterred. They want to follow through with this. Great off angle for Sphinx. Won't be clearing this first. Zai Wu coming to them. Ooh. Sphinx is going to crunch at the same time. That smoke up does nothing to deny the inevitable vitality. 5v2. Slaughter, Cloud9, Axel can't save them here, surely. This one is too far gone. Finally shutting Axel down. You can see he's feeling it, man. The snappy aim back to long, but... Can't expect him to offer up anything in that moment. 11 points of health, 1v3, his team churned up over in mid. And that's a, that's a nice turning point for Vitality. They finally shut down one of these rounds where even though they find the opener, that's not been safe in the past. I think that's one of Boomich's great qualities, actually, is he's so good at having solutions and, and contingency plans in place. So even if they don't win that first fight, there's always more to go off of. We even saw him doing that back in the old Na'Vi. Now he's doing it here in Cloud9. Yeah, remember, it's not just four major winners for Cloud9. It's a core of a major winning squad. All those years ago in Stockholm, we're not far from it now. Cloud9 trying to right their wrongs. Can Vitality build off of a single round in a piece of nowhere? Apex one for one, there's still flames to help. And he has been solid at giving up, going back to this B-bomb site, not overextending. So again, the call must be made for Cloud9. I don't know about this stack right now. It's that dice roll to avoid it. Hit the nail on the head every time before. Can they knock that nail into the coffin of vitality? Oh, huge play. Reagro back in a mid. I mean, this was how they found the success last round, right? That decision to group and fight for the top mid control, and this time. They've hit the golden window, Sphinx in with the backstab, and right now no one's looking. Sphinx has got the round on a platter right here, takes out that first man and then disappears. A ghostly apparition. There's no time to chase this kill, unless they want to save for the final round of the half, but Cloud9 have almost unlimited money. They need to go, they need to commit into the site, into Flames. Flames is the one to get past, but Vitality have left him here all alone. They were rotating over, but something something called it off. And so for now, Flames is TikTok. in this all alone, playing it down to the wire. Hobbit needs to chase Stick. this bomb plant. He's not going for the plant. What? The what? round gets away from them. The time gets away from them. That is a wild way to have given up this round. And then they do that. It doesn't even matter. Not really. It's a calamity for Cloud9, trying to clear everything. They don't have time for that. They just don't believe they've been given the site for free. They don't believe it. They don't buy. It's a perfect call for Vitality. 4v2, they can play the retake. They've already shown they can do it man down. Why not two men up? Use that util, go in as a unit, rather than offer up Cloud9 a kill. That's a really nice call, but Cloud9 definitely cooked the books. Beyond belief on the B site. And Groove has got to calm them down right now. Cloud9's yeah. first time out in this map. That's a sign of a few nerves, isn't it? Yeah. And it was Hobbit, the, not, not the man you would expect those, you know, to get to him. Wanna Picked up a major, what, seven years ago? Yeah. Most experienced player on this team. Having a world-beating performance at this very major. On a map, he took his trophy. 
rare to see, but Cloud9, it's all about how you brush it off and keep going. Yeah, I think that's the main thing for them here, right? They were very much in control on this T side. They, they felt unbeatable. They were they were countering everything Vitality were doing, and now that's all kind of been called into question, even the pause. It's letting Vitality know they're building back into this one. And so can Vitality tie it up on the half? They didn't put up a single rifle round since they found success in the pistol until just a couple ago. But now they're streaking them together. Still have like this pace of Cloud9, but it looks like they want to make plays earlier for a change. Trying to change their tune and their timing. They know where Zywu sits. Bearing down on the angle. And even Sphinx moving in. A risky reposition. This is a malleable spot. Cloud9. About to come through. Dodge the flash, Sphinx, new position, double up, and that rotating in from Zywu Zorb, that could have been the killing blow in this round, but the shot just sails past Electronic. And so Cloud9 is still very much in this one. Zywu and Mezzi to get past, but that smoke makes life a little more awkward. Mezzi holds the close angle, Zywu watches on from afar on that AWP, but this has got to be some combat orping from Zywu. Shots rally through the smoke, but nothing connects yet. Right now, Cloud9 don't feel safe to plant that bomb, and this is wasting precious time. Another miss from that AWP, but third time's the charm, and Flames gets there in time. Vitality embark on a streak to tie up this game heading into the second half. Yeah, they wake up, they roll out of bed just in time to give us something on this CT side. It's not bad, especially considering how it started. But there were those shaky moments, and no denying we've had Cloud9 players come to play in this must-win matchup, this opening playoff game for this first CS2 major. We want it competitive, that's what we're getting. And now we swap sides. That eternal question of the Cloud9 AWP on CT half. I wonder if it will come through. If so, who's donning it? It's been a map-dependent play. Boomage more often than not. But we've even seen Perfecto Hobbit take it at times. So he's not looking like a world beater. But he's doing just enough. Certainly room for this to be a pacier start, and I mean, they've given Zywu that P250. They want to bring him into the game. Sphinx is holding up his side of the bargain, and he has been across that entire first half. So now you want to get Zywu switched on. Apex lurking over towards Great the top aid. of Banana. Util is dodged. They managed to get away from it. Oh, oh and half it! It's a due to Apex. He's now knocked out of play. That leaves Vitality with only ground to cover. Left in this A side of the map. They've got to get past Axar and Electronic in a crossfire. They deal with the first. Axar oh. tries to retreat, but can't. And so now there's room for the bomb oh. plant. There's Zywu arriving. Clean tap, but so past Apex falling early. Everyone else from Vitality answers the call. I mean, Cloud9 knew exactly what was going on, even after that entry kill, it still didn't save them. It's like the first pistol all over again. Not the quickest clicking for Electronic on those duelies, I'll say. Feels like he could have gotten a lot more out of that crossfire with Axar on the balcony. But Cloud9 have got to do this map in with no pistols to their name. And surely they don't force here, that would be frantic. High risk, high reward, but... Not high rollers are Cloud9. See Apex at the conclusion of that round just explode, trying to get everyone hyped up on his team. You know, one of the one of the reasons why he kind of shied away from, from leadership early on. One of the reasons he's been criticized is he, is he is a very emotional player. But it's interesting to watch how he's tried to channel those emotions into something a little more positive here. Trying to have that pass across to everyone on the team. Now, they are walking in to the pistol stack right now, but that bomb is nowhere to be found. Oh, Apex oh. has even played wow. with the timings here on a smoke push. They shouldn't know. That's unbelievable. I feel like Cloud9 almost have an inkling, but they're going to find out the hard way. All five in the site. Apex here to send him a message. Oh, yeah. He knows. Apex knows. This one's his. 
the rest of the pistols get cut down. Cleanly done from Vitality. They walk into the stack. And Apex lives to tell the tale. Don't know how he walks past two players in CT there inside of that smoke, but he'll take it. Hornets will too. As Vitality continue to buzz forwards. Is the thing. This was almost identical to how that first half started. We can't get ahead of ourselves, right? Vitality found success off the back of the pistol. They stuck their landing on the conversions as well. Things were looking good, but you saw that bite back from Cloud9. And even though Boomich had great calls, you know, nice late XX and was avoiding the stacks, right? Apex, he led this team to a, a major win. He threw off his entry fragging shackles, and it was only when he truly did and learned to not necessarily be that opening man for the team that Vitality took trophies. You know they have their eyes set on another one. Early exec, but Mac 10 Galil, call it a bonus round. Vitality can throw themselves around these corners. They can throw some punches. Hobbit takes all of Banana, and that's a good timing. Freeze up Electronic. Similar start to that first half, but in come Vitality. Axile's about to have a lot of fights here, and with the form he's been in, that's scary. Boomich trying to draw a distraction. Axile dead. Boomich is going to be more than just the distraction. Two kills from him in the site. But that shouldn't be enough to pull Cloud9 back into this retake. They're, they're so far removed. They find Messi in mid, maybe, but Hobbit goes no further. And so this round is written off. This round is given to Vitality. Hard earned on the back of that Sphinx double up. Hobbit's still rooting pretty aggressively here. He wants to take something with him. Vitality can save on the CT side. And it seems like they realize that as well. No gap, no casualties, and nine rounds now. This is where Vitality really should take the reins of this game and start running away. Slow to start, strong to finish. And finishing is all that matters. I think it's very much worth noticing that this is the exact, you know, firepower trio that you would want rising to the occasion right now for Vitality. I know Zaiwu hasn't given us any sort of crazy Zaiwu moment yet. But even then, he sits second on the board, right behind Sphinx, top in the charts. Flames, who went from having a bit of a slower start here, has quickly risen up the board. And it was Flames and Sphinx who kept Vitality competitive throughout the elimination stage, kept them from dodging death, Hobbit. Secures an opening blow on a Zaiwu, and that's quite the kill to have found. That being said, it's not felt like 5v4s have mattered a huge amount in this map. We've got a lot of teams winning from a man down early. Both sides have done it. Still, despite that fact, Cloud9 are down to two smokes and two guns. Got to be very careful. Nice boost on this B site. They won't commit. The round lives and dies on a play like that. And these pistols sit on the other side. Cloud9 may be dropping smokes, but they are begging for Vitality to commit to B. And they may get their wish. Only two here. Progress getting made on the other side of the map. When will Flame Strike? It's very split up for Vitality. And up against the pistols, that does make you nervous. They, they've got a backup plan here. They can go and rejoin these players over towards A. Is Boomich going to save them once again? Well, in doing so, they've dodged the stack. This whole duo of Electronic and Boomich can still stand between them and getting that bomb down inside of A. Boomich pulling off into the pit. Electronic Ooh. moving in to help him. He is in the site now, ready to Ooh. go. Electronic with the first. Boomich finds another. The pistols are pulling it back. Electronic oh. won't go down without a fight, and Perfecto moves in! Cloud9, couple of Famuses, couple of pistols, and they lock Vitality out of the round. Yeah, forget the duelies, that 5-7 hits harder for Electronic. Fantastic work, buying as much time as possible for Perfecto to come swinging in through.
And Cloud9 with those three smokes of the B side stall it just enough to force their hand. Robbed round. But they can't celebrate too soon. This game has just begun. Zaiwu's AWP matches up against Boomage. As wild the statement as it is, the last time these teams played, Boomich did have more orb kills. He did find a lot of success on that AWP. Yeah, and even in the BO3, there were almost no head to heads. It was two to two. They barely clashed, and I think that's fair. Boomich knows he's not as good as Zywar on the AWP. He said it himself, even after 3 0 in the elimination stage. He said he didn't think he could, could be a stable orper. Cloud9 have done it regardless. He's had some great games, he's hit some fantastic shots, but he is no match for his counterpart here. So can he thin the herd? Pick off this rifling pack of vitality. A red hot sphinx. A fiery flames, perhaps. Well, not, not in this round. They're going back to B. Being said, Boomich's patience may uh, pay off back in the library. No motor smoke. That's going to leave sight lines open for this Boomich AWP. We've seen the barrel, they know he's there, but that just draws the crosshairs away from the true masters of this site. It's Axile and Electronic in the crossfire, and this crossfire has been destroying Vitality. They've not been able to deal with it. Run. And Sai Wu can't either. Try to run oh, through the hills. Oh. Axile chases him down. And Cloud9, after winning with pistols, after pulling the, the, the game back, they're right back in this one. Yeah, this would be a disastrous game for Vitality to lose if you consider the context of 3-0 at the start of the first half, 2-0 at the start of the second, Cloud9 winning with just a little bit. As Vitality barely sit comfortably in this map. Their map right now, they are only a round up. And that is another clean, concise round for Cloud9. They got so tunnel visioned on that AWP, it felt like everyone running up through short was all looking at Boomich. And if you're gonna give Axile and Electronic that much room, you are asking for trouble. Off it highlight and then that smoke hit him. But it's not a disaster, he's gonna have this angle over the top of it. Only pistols for Vitality. And even though you saw one of these come up in favor of Cloud9, this is far harder for the Vitality squad. Oh. Up at the top, if they go, that smoke. They might just look to go through it here. And at the perfect time, too, because Boomich is just up and left. So right now, it's only Axar to bear down on top middle. There's Sphinx's deep delivering. Boomich is oh, tagged no. up. Narrowly gets Ow. away. Narrowly makes it back into the side, oh. but run down. And Zywoo's now got his hands on that AWP. Where did this come from? This was a done deal, dead in the water. Vitality now in a perfect position to close the round. Can Hobbit's long rotation oh. No. Zywoo hits his flick. Tuned into the Zaiwu show just in time. And Perfecto faced with the impossible. Damage is his duty, nothing more. Just wants to stop this Zaiwu save. And Armorless, they gotta run it out. They're coming his way, they're playing right into his hands. They get out with the kill. Vitality, that is a defining round in this game. They had no reason to win that. And sure, Zai Wu, fantastic job once he gets that AWP, but that's what you expect out of him. That's what he's here for. Sphinx, I think, is the big hero of the round. To, to, to stop Axile in his tracks as he's two kills midway through, shutting down that play in top mid. Sphinx turns around with the Deagle and does that. And then the Glocks are the thing to bring it home. That one is going to leave a mark if you're Cloud9. Those rounds do not come along often. Vitality, this is the time to capitalize. This is the time to shut Cloud9 down.
If they win this one, the money gone for the Cloud9 squad. And so this is Vitality's chance to tee themselves up for the recovery on their map pick of Inferno. Slow and steady. Apex corrals his troops. Saiwu so goes back for the bomb. Vitality has been playing 2 2 for the majority of his T side. So uncertain for Cloud9 where that end execute is coming in. So little info, so much info on both sides of the map. It's a smoke screen, it's a farce for Vitality. Right now, Cloud9 seems to have made the right move. Is this only a reinforcement for utility, or will Electronic hang around? If he does, Cloud9 might have found the right positions at the perfect point. Who's comes up? Couldn't be better, do Vitality have the smoke for us? It doesn't look like they do. They have to find their success, or else Sphinx will never get a chance to play the round. Hobbit dead, traded after one. It's Zywoo's on with the reply. Damage done, but Zywoo delivers in the smoke. Electronic is hidden. Electronic is trying to make the round winning play. Oh, so little time left. Electronic, this could be his moment, but Apex puts the stop to it. And so Vitality, a, a must win round. On the back of finding success of the Pistols, they walk into the three-man stack and Electronic tries to make the play to stop them. But he can't do it. And since that pistol round, Sai Wu now back-to-back multi-kills, yeah. starting to find his form on that AWP. That T-side orb has been more impactful than the CT orb. That's not what you say on Inferno every day. But that's a crucial second entry kill into the B-bomb site to break open the stack, and even Electronic's position shrouded in the smoke is not enough. Disastrous round for Cloud9 to lose. It does feel like it's slipping through their fingers, and losing to Ecos has consequences. Cloud9 will learn that now. You live by the Eco round, you die by the Eco round. Cloud9 found one of their own. The Vitality has carried so much more impact, and here are the kills that Zai Wu is able to bring to the table here. Called for Cloud9, they might not have many more chances to recover this game. Roof getting involved. Must feel helpless at times for Groove, right? Some say he led this old Cloud9 ex Gambit squad to the number one spot, calling in that online era. Now, having to concede that role, it's out of his hands. Firmly in Boomich's, but sweaty palms right now as this map slips through Cloud9's fingers. The old team always swore by him, though. They always swore that he was, in their eyes, an award-winning coach. And so let's see if he's given them a solution here. I mean, what can you do with this kind of buy, right? You can set up your rifle, you can hope for the best, but... Vitality decide where this round ends, and they look to end it early, taking apartments very quick. A weak defense on this side of the map. And Cloud9 with this boost over the CT smoke. The whole round relies on it. It may not even play a part. Yet again, Apex moves those pieces into place on this board. One by one, the Rooks move in. It's Vitality set up to pounce. Boomich and Electronic, they were the two of the pistols that robbed this last time, but no such luck this time around. It's quick trade work out of Vitality. Clinical. And they can feel that this it's too good to be true.
This one is a lock-in. They are safely away with map point. That's going to give them four chances, four opportunities to close out this map. It always felt like it was meant to be right this, this series. We hoped it would go three. Anubis is the question mark, even though Cloud9 have won it before, going for the pick into a strong map for their opponent as well. But this was always meant to be Vitality starting strong. It just came with that question mark, that caveat of winning both pistols, but still being in the lot, uh, uh, losing place. Vitality had to come back off of that T-side eco win. And now they've shut this Cloud9 out of the server. Axel, silent CT side after starting so strong. He'll get a moment for Sphinx as well, who's been a bit of a rock for uh, for Vitality. He was getting shut down by Axile early on, but since getting into this second half, guys come into his own. Him, Zaiwu, and Flames, that, that triple threat of firepower on Vitality, a terrifying trio when they are all in form, and they are all in form right now. When it matters, that's what Apex said on the stage right before this game. This is a big match. This is where it counts. You can lose in the qualification, but there's no second chances on the stage. Vitality stepping up to the plate, looking to end this map. Hobbit, a decision to make that Molotov is too much. He won't bear the brunt of it. Cloud9 have three strong, and Apex is already wounded. His teammates have left him here, but that swing is crazy. Gives over the first pick to Boomich's AWP. Second time bringing it out. First time finding a great deal of success. An early 5v4 is good. Apex now hands off the mouse and keyboard. But he can still have his impact. He can still call the way to a round win. Do they read the rotate? It seems like they do. You don't want to keep three at B forever. Still so much of the map open. Cloud9 playing towards the extremities, back pit side, library side. They don't have that mid info. They don't know where Vitality are grouped. It's been this crossfire between pit and site that won Cloud9 so many rounds on their CT side, and it might be in that position where it's got to do it again, because with Perfecto falling over at long, a big chasm, a big hole has just opened up on this A-bomb site. Electronic now. Got to have eyes in the back of his head as they make their way out around long. Electronic is all that stands between Vitality and this map win. They move in with the bomb. A 3v2 in the post plant, one where Cloud9. Their positions are being considered. Sphinx waiting in the apartments. Hobbit timing is everything here. As he swings this, Sphinx picks it up. Sai Wu to close. And the stars are here for Vitality. There is no doubt about it. Sai Wu, recovery arc in the second half of that game, found a lot of impact on the T side with his AWP. Sphinx is a rock and Flames is in form. Cloud9, will they regret that Anubis pick? Level up your gaming space with metal posters from Displates. Hang your Displates in seconds. Swap them whenever you like. 
Get official art from your favorite games on a uniquely designed metal canvas and choose from thousands of posters. Join over 3 million collectors now. Your wall upgrade is here. Shop now at Displate.com. It's popular, it's loud, and this is ASONE's commercial. But ASONE spent all the money to make the headphones good, and they got no money left for the commercial. So I'm gonna need you to head to ASONE IO. A C E Z O N E. Yo. Code PGL 50 euros off. We got some headphones. Now and never. Welcome back to the inaugural CS2 major here in Copenhagen. Uh, we're going to break down what we just saw on the desk. Maniac Blair, I'm actually going to start with Maniac. Yeah. Because yeah, he was jumping up and down in the green room. <laughs> we got what you wanted, at least. A vitality. Yeah, they're meant to win that map pick. But what was reassuring was, for the first time, I think, here, they actually turned up. They did what they were supposed to do. Uh, to an extent, I will agree with you. I think winning both pistols set them up in a most favorable way possible. I think they definitely needed that second one to get the energy flowing. We could all sense that they were falling into this full rhythm in the first half where Klein put them to sleep. It was very lackluster from Vitality. I'll just put it up there as well. It took Zywo 18 rounds to start playing, but goddamn, it feels good when he shows up. <laughs> yeah, that yeah. round with the clock into the lightning fast. Kenny has like it would be shot the round after that. That's what you needed from him. And kudos to Spinks, kudos to Flames, because they were the one carrying that engine up until the moment he rose from the dead, almost from the dead. I'm gonna temper the uh, the emotions a little bit here, you know, having no real um, no real emotional attachment to either of these two teams. But I thought that was a pretty messy game overall, right? In all honesty, there were moments where it looked really good. Like I have to agree, like Vitality winning both the pistol rounds and converting them as well, really set them up really well. But then look at the first half, and there were so many rounds. I'm looking at the money on the side of Cloud9. It, it was like the Bank of Abu Dhabi. They were out of control. So much of money, seeming just toying around with the rotations from the side of Vitality. And even the second half, I look at round number 15, I believe it was a 16. Beg your pardon, where Vitality just a sloppy take towards a short position towards A, getting taken out by a couple of safe the masses, a couple of pistols, and right there I feel like this one's done, this one's over. Axel is having a lights out game as well. It's going to be Clown and stealing this away, and then we have disaster strike that one round with the Glocks and yeah. the one Deagle. What they just got caught with their pants down and just tripped over it, Richard. Yeah, and look, you did say this at the start, Matteo. You said that the other guys on Vitality, sometimes, you know, Siwoo might have a slow start, or sometimes he's, you know, not gonna be able to put in mm -hmm. a Superman-like performance. You have to come along for the ride and help out. And it's like you say, they gave Siwoo time to get into this series. Yeah. yeah, and he needed that because, honestly, his attitude in the beginning of the game was the right one. I think he was looking for the peaks. He was looking to make the difference. He was having a couple of moves with the AWP, but you just have to face the truth. He missed, he yeah, missed he, a couple of times. Some whiffs. He was putting in positions, and the shots that he normally connects, yeah, maybe he needed a couple of rounds. In fact, again, 15 plus to align. But once he did, that was it. But this man out on the screen, I think yes, he yes. deserves a huge shout out. You're talking about a CT side that was a little bit out of sorts from Vitality. The first multi kills that come out, that is Sphinx. Yep. He's the one that stabilizes. He's the one that closes the A side. Sends Cloud9 back to B again and again and again. So Sphinx currently behaving like an MVP within this roster. Has another strong case to his name. 
putting him on his shoulders. And I will, I will attach a little bit of love to Flames as well, because I think the entries we saw on the T side Absolutely. is exactly what you wanted him for. You had that job interview, and you said, listen, at the very top of the task, I'm going to need you to provide a couple of entries. I'm going to need you to channel the wildness that you have in you, swing wide, get me an entry. And as we can see, he did that a couple times as well in the second half. And look at the kills he's getting on the CD side as well. Listen, playing the rotation player, playing towards Arch, pretty much isolated by your lonesome, you know, alone as a rifler is not an easy task at all. And he was absolutely tested by Cloud9. You can see the streak, streak of rounds Cloud9 went on when it was 6-3. to three. I was starting to worry a bit. I was starting to worry about, you know, f about Maniac's heart beat as well. Sure. It was just, he was just getting shook. But then the final three rounds, I think it was absolutely imperative that they won those rounds. And 100% agree with you, Flames. He stood to the task. I had my doubts in the arena, in front of the crowd. Can he, you know, just, just channel that group stage energy? He did yeah. so. I mean, listen, we're here at the playoff of a major, and we know they are rounds who dictate the destiny of a game. That's what it goes on with big games, and I think round 18 qualifies. It's an absolute catastrophe yep. for Cloud9, and it's the moment where Vitality just pick up the oh. absolute pace. We see here the, the crossing of the smoke. No There's flashes, a good spray from Exile. Immediate punishment for Sphinx. And then here, Cloud9, a little bit exposed in how they lose control of the rotations as well. You see Flames being able to go out of apps, find a shot. By the way, Zywood destroys Boomage, and here yeah, right now, that's a flashback. That. I guarantee you, when he hit that shot, I knew he was back. This, this, there is no, there's no way around it. When you hit that flick, that's all you needed. The next round, 19, he goes on to have a multi kill opening the B side, and this is the Zaiwu I was absolutely pulling my hair off to see at the beginning of the map. Showed up from this moment on. That's what Vitality needed. It's such a tragedy for Cloud9 because there, there were no flashes. They just waited in the smoke for a few seconds, ran on out. Axel caught kind of an island uh, on an island, so to speak, by himself towards short. He, 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 he does his job. He gets yeah. two. Sphinx with a blind of a 180 deagle shot, and Boomich is so out of position. He gets instant dinked. By the way, they all have head armor as well. Instant dinked by the Glock. He gets chased down into the bomb site. But Electronic, what was he doing in pit? He needed at least one kill. You know what happens to him? He dies. I don't know how he, he dies. He, to gets, he gets from Flames. That's a timing. Flames got him completely blindsided. So Electronic is probably being called by Boomage. They're swinging long, they're swinging long. He loses track of apps, turns too long, and that's Flames he coming but, 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 in. But that's kind of strike. But, but the panic right there setting in, and from then on, it was just the Dunzo right yeah. there for Cloud9. Unfortunate way to kind of, considering they seem like they're about to pull this one back, to lose in that fashion, it kind of sucks. Yeah, and a real shame, because Cloud9 obviously were in the game. And from being in the game to being in the crowd, uh, Parley, you, you're talking to people out there, aren't you? Richard, I absolutely am. We've got some heroic boys in the building. Can I ask the extended audience, do we have any Danish Counter-Strike fans in the building? <laughs> boys, what are your names? Oh, Nicholas. Nicholas. Krugs. Krugs. Yupi. Yupi. And Giorgio. And Giorgio. Guys, how are you doing? Are you enjoying this first matchup between C9 and Vitality? Heck yeah! Yeah, it's a good fucking Counter-Strike. I like that it's competitive. I mean, obviously Heroic didn't make it, so I'm here just to watch some good fucking Counter-Strike. I am rooting for Vitality, though, but I mean, I, li I like what I'm saying. Any Vitality fans? I thought there were some Vitality fans in this arena! Final thought for the gentleman on my left. Do you think Cloud9 are going to bounce back or have Vitality got this into? Uh, actually, the matchup is just so close. I have no fucking idea, to be honest. Uh, I've seen such great Counter Strike. I, I, I don't know if that's PG, but I've legit got a boner. Right, okay. With that being said, I think it's time to head back to the desk. Can I hear you make some noise? Yeah. The uh, good news is I don't. Right, let's. <laughs> <laughs> this is it, look. It's live showbiz, guys. So I uh, apologize for the language, but whatever. Uh, we, we've let a few slip ourselves, haven't we, back in the day? But something that will not slip from your wall is our sponsor, Displate. Obviously, been sponsoring us here uh, for the major. This time, the iconic map of Dust Two. That one is long gone. Yeah, well, it's, I miss it. I actually miss the Dust Two. I don't, I don't feel it is Counter Strike without an active version of Dust Two in the in it, the map. Room. I mean, it's the most famous map in all of video Indeed. games. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, exactly. Uh, so obviously, uh, you can uh, go to Displate.com and use the code PGL. And now, because they love you so much, uh, they've increased. 
the discount. So if you get two disc plates, you get a 30% discount. But if you go three or more, you get 36% off. Super easy to mount, look great on a wall. You can even see they've got ones for the new pins everyone's been asking nice. about down there. So we're going to put that to one side. No more talk about Dust 2. Time to talk about Anubis. Guys, there was visceral disgust <laughs> coming out of you. Like, you made some awful noises uh, when you saw I the Anubis pick. No, I, I would say disgust, right? It's more surprise because I feel like it's a map where if Vitality would kind of shake hands, but all right, let's make it a decider, so to speak, so we, they bring it out early. But there is no margin for error right now for Cloud9. I mean, listen, the, the recent history is Cloud9 teaching Vitality the lessons on Anubis. That, that's what happened in the, I, the Armor. And I think there, there, is no, there is no way around it. They absolutely, completely destroyed them on Anubis at the RMR. So mm. if it is a Cloud9 that maybe got blinded a little bit by, you know, hubris is a word you lose, enough to use that during the major as well. Is that the case? Overall, Cloud9 absolutely took them for a spin. Good example here, that was against G2. Uh, th this is a different Cloud9, by the way, and uh, this is Axel. Axel being activated on the CT side, this is where we're starting to see the Axel of old. Someone take, willing to take duels, not playing it too safe, being aggressive, and have another round here. This, of course, overpassed the map that we kind of expect them to go for. We can see this against Navi, where they absolutely dismantled them on the CT mm. side. A lot of this recent success that Cloud9 have been having, have been predicated of the fact that Axel seems to be finally playing with a little bit of confidence. And we saw that here in map number one as well on Inferno. And if he needs to, if they take Anubis, it's going to come down to Axel being the same yeah. that we've seen from him here on the CT side especially. Yeah, there's going to be a bunch of duels probably happening between Mezzi and Axile towards the A side, yes. towards that A main. Yep. And I think for Vitality early on, you're going to have to establish dominance over that area. You cannot just send a measly Mezzi with one flash. No, I would like them to put numbers there, like put two or three players. Make sure that if Axile is taking the kind of risk we're talking about, yeah. just yep. slap them in the face immediately. The Vitality that played C9 on Anubis was tasteless at the armor. It was tasteless, mm -hmm. really. The rhythm was wrong. The executes were poor. Zai would try to cross the smoke in cave a couple times. Hobbit had the easiest kills of his life. So I want them to be way more decisive in where they decide to strike. Don't be loose. They also gave away a couple of power plays, 4v3s and all. Yes. So if lessons have been learned, we might look, be looking at a different well, game, but that's a big if. That was going to be my next question. You know, what, would, what must the change up have been if they're this confident to sort of pick it? Because there's other maps you said in this segment, you know, you they should have gone here, they could have gone there, they could have left it in, there was no need to pick it at all, it might have come up. I feel the, the cloud line we saw when they beat Vitality a month ago in the RMR on this map, sorry, they're actually better right now. I feel they're playing even better on this map right now, in all honesty. I'm looking at Axel, I'm looking at the way him and, and uh, alongside Electronic are just kind of moving around like a, like a Hydra, so to speak, towards a mid and, of course, a mid position. But I... Disagree me if you want to, Matthew, but I feel like watching... How dare you? Uh, okay, all right, all right, you're getting feisty there. <laughs> Boop, this might be Boop's best map with the AW. Yeah, that's fair. No, that's a fair yeah, point. No. I have no problem with and that statement. Everywhere. And yeah. he's everywhere. He's going to be solo holding towards... And we agree on that point. Yeah, we agree on that. Cool, right fair there. enough. That's great. Especially when I have Zai with a server. You know, I don't know which Matthew I'm getting, but I'm watching Axel and Electronic towards mid. I'm watching Boomich towards uh, towards A main position. They switch things around. They're mixing things a lot. So I put, feel a potential weakness here. Not that they've shown much of it, but a potential chink in the armor for the side of Cloud9 to CT is at B bomb site. Uh, I want to see a little bit more pressure being applied there by Vitality because if they go A towards mid, I feel th the task is too much. Yeah, and look, I, I just want to talk a little bit about Boomich. You know, he is someone who is a playoff specialist. You know, he's managed to find ways to get teams that on paper they don't look great. And he's done it with Quantum Bellator Fire, he's done it with Windstrike. You know, he actually low key has got all this experience in, in masterminding ways to get through. And obviously, did it at the expense of his former org as well to even be here right now. And he's kind of slept on. So, is there That's something fair. that we could be missing here? Because as you said, this is the map where he can all effectively. Well, if anything, what he's accomplishing with Cloud9 is what deserves the most, I think, praises for mm. Bumich's career. You look at QB Fire, it was a different setup. He was more of a fragging, crazy animal out there. You're talking about his, his win strike time, also different. He came on to Na'Vi. First, he was obviously on par with Zeus as a player, and then they gave him the reins. The issue is, when you have Simple and Electronic on your team, nobody's going to give you the time of day if you win. No one is going to take a minute to applaud you as a leader awesome. when you win with Simple and Electronic. Yep. But the fact is, he came into a dysfunctional Cloud9. He yes. came into so profound issues that were happening within this roster. Issues that are still yet to be sort of uh, solutioned, if you yeah. will, me, solved, right? Yeah. There's no opera. The man says, you know what, actually, I'll do it 
fine, fine. I'll be the leader, I'll be the sniper, I'll make toast for you, I'll pick <laughs> your ties if I have to, I'll do everything I got to. So it's, if at this point you're not paying attention to him, yeah. surely you're missing something. It, it's, it's getting it done no matter what, right? And I love this entire little love to hate, this entire op roulette they have going as well. And what map, you have the perfecto, here we go, here's the AWP. Some other times I hop it, you turn to op. This doesn't make any sense. Yeah, I op, hate all of it. I hate all of it, I absolutely disgusts me, but you still get it done, Rich. Yeah. And that is why when I feel like we need to give a flowers to him, especially after Antwerp, where was he? He disappeared from the team, disappeared from tier one Counter-Strike, he was in, in, in the wilderness, is floating around, and when a call came for him to answer, he delivered. So you can't take anything away from it. And yes, I have been, I think we've all been a little surprised with Anubis pick coming in, but they have shown that they have what it take to be one of the best in the world out there. Sure, and obviously, Vitality, no slouches on the map. That is the big cause of the consternation with this pick. Uh, so Vitality warming up, knowing they've got that extra map advantage. I mean, it's like you said, Macho, this conceivably could be a 2-0. This is a gamble by Cloudland. I, I agree, and I do think the 2-0 is still a necessity for Vitality. I still don't think that they are currently stable and strong enough to withstand the loss of Anubis and then moving on to a Mirage, which is a very murky territory for them. Mm -hmm. A map where they're looking for reference wins for quite a while now. So you have an opportunity now. If you're Vitality, you've been granted a pass for um, an Inferno that wasn't exactly the highest level, but you got the pistol rounds going, and you had your crazy round at the end, and you push it over the finish line. That's fine. You have to strike right now when the iron is hot. You have to get on that action. You have to get to the 2-0. Oh, absolutely. And especially considering the last time they won, they beat Complexity on this map, and it was Flames having to put up a monstrous performance. So, yeah, this is now or never for Vitality. Yeah, now or never indeed. Uh, so we got like about 25 seconds before we get in. I haven't asked anyone for any predictions, but since this match is so personally invested, <laughs> are Vitality doing this one? Yeah, they do. 2-0 Vitality. 2-0 Vitality, he's a believer. Anyway, guys, as always, loads of fun on the desk. The crowd getting settled back into their seats, but they're gonna be standing up because now I'm about to throw you over to Harry and Hugo to bring this one to life. A map in the pocket for Vitality, but Cloud9's big gamble of Anubis, a map that they are undefeated on in the major circuit, from the RMR to the major itself. They've got faith in their pool, but do they have faith in themselves? Because they're going to need it here. That's a huge question. Vitality's no sleeper either, right? Seven and one in the past six months on this map, but their only loss to this exact roster. Vitality looks for vengeance in this map. And in this match, Mirage is uncertain. And they don't want to go there. Can Vitality make it clean and clinical on this stage? Cloud9 with a brick wall on Inferno. They got brittle, they got broken apart after that eco round win. And now Vitality look to go all the way around the world, back to this A site. Got a double setup here, electronic baiting with a smoke out. And Axel, a commendable performance in the first map, keeping up his elimination stage run, but with the entirety of vitality coming his way. Gonna have to work it out for them. Electronic underhands that smoke in, just dropping it close, and even goes on to open. Cloud9, they will lose the point, man. Electronic is spammed out, and Vitality now move Eight. back. They're gonna join up with Apex. Apex has played Cloud9 like a fiddle here. The, the rotate comes out, and he finds the perfect gap. Apex threads the needle, allowing that bomb plant to come in. And so now the retake afoot for Cloud9. A little ways out is Axile, so they've got to wait. They've got to be patient. Wait till everyone is ready to strike. Apex spotted inside Wu to take the next contact. Kills going back and forth, but Vitality will edge it out. And Flames is the man to step up and start this one strong. That is every pistol round in this series going the way of Vitality. Oh, that, those footsteps and rotations being run are music to Apex's ears. He plays them for a fall. And Cloud9, you can feel the pressure falling on their heads right now. The fact that they full rotate off of the B site when they even have a smoke in the way at A, that is desperation for Cloud9. A disastrous call to make. And no doubt that Apex is outcalled Boomage in this matchup already, despite a strong T-side start on Inferno. Vitality one up them in that uh, uh, offensive half. 
and a pistol round deploys vitality for a strong start on Anubis as well. Because remember, when we saw this team take on and lose the Cloud9 and the RMR, it was not close. 13-5, it was a stop for Cloud9. But it was also a map Vitality knew was coming in today, one way or another, two or three, that was the question. So you know Vitality already. I'm glad you talk about this head-to-head -head of Apex v Boomage because, you know, one of the things that I think has been so cool is watching this evolution of Apex as a player from ending his Source career on that very game squad all the way through into CSGO where he had to live through the French Shuffle, he had to rebuild himself, moving off of the entry role into that IGLing territory, a task that he said he always wanted to do but didn't feel comfortable doing, not until he had to when Alex stepped out of this roster. And so over time, you've witnessed him constantly evolve. Another challenge emerges when Vitality make the call to go international. And so he's dropped into a whole new environment, has to step up again. But this guy has always been able to adapt. He's always been able to overcome. And so if he has gone away and he did do the prep after they got beaten down by Cloud9 on this map last time, anticipating that it was going to crop up at some point in this series, you know that Apex is going to come into this with ideas. Yeah, he certainly had pieces around him, fantastic pieces around him, but yeah, it's a punch being thrown the way of Apex. I mean, even losing Zonic for this Vitality organization was a big question mark, with x having to come in, some of the largest shoes to fill in Counter-Strike against the best GOAT, about uh, the GOAT of coaching. And on top of that, Zywoo even being sick in that elimination stage. You, you know, that's a rarity, Zywoo farms groups. But at least he's shown up here for the stage. That T side was a great side from Zyde. Some would say that's where he does his best work. And so seeing, you know, Zawu in this position now where the kind of excuses are not, that there's no, no one's like floating around. You, you want him to show that he can do it versus, you know, in a top 20 squad up here on the stage at a major. I mean, this is just the beginning, right? Of course, you have questions about that second quarter final, the phase spirit conundrum, the possibility, maybe some would say probability, that we have Zywoo with Donk, a matchup we've yet to have. But you've got to get there first. And Cloud9 don't look too disturbed just yet. Talk about star players turning in game leaders, electronic on your screen. He had to go through the same thing in Cloud9. It was quite the opposite to Apex, I'll say that. Yeah, I mean, the difference there was, right, where Apex was able to kind of overcome that emotional barrier and keep going with the leadership role, Electronic wasn't. Hey, he even said it himself, he gets too emotional, he gets too invested, he shuts down at times. And so it always felt inevitable that Cloud9 would have to fix the roles in this team. It's always been the biggest talking point, lack of all. Lack of in-game leader, lack of identity, but not lack of firepower. No, it's certainly not with uh, Axile's form looking to have a serious uptick. I mean, I know they fall down in that first map, but some of the kills he was getting, some of the flicks yeah. that were coming through, you could just, you know, for a moment, it was like you were watching Axile at its very best. And that's something that's been out of reach for the longest time now. He was a one half hero though, Harry. Need that consistency across the board, and that has been the biggest problem for Cloud9, while we call it the rotating door of rifles. Anyone can step up on the stage and match. But there's no guarantees, and without that, quarters may have been as far as you go. How can you establish an era or a dynasty or take trophies with such unreliable results? Cloud9 are getting put to the test in this opening round. Someone that it's well worth talking about, Sphinx on our screens, just kind of taking a moment to take it all in, looking out into the crowd. The last, you know, two, two majors or three majors go rather, Sphinx quarterfinal against this very core of Cloud9. He was in Ents, they were in Na'Vi. Back at Antwerp, well, we know how that went. Na'Vi all the way to those finals. Yeah. Right now he's looking for revenge. And Sphinx, before he headed into that semi-final, he even said he, he wanted to play versus that Na'Vi squad. He wanted to beat them. He wanted a chance to play up against the very best. And in that series, even though they got banged out, Sphinx was the guy trying to keep uh, his squad in it. 
And even when he left that ends team where he kind of kick-started his whole career, removed to this Vitality squad, he admitted that was a very tough decision, but at the end of the day, he wanted to lift trophies. And so that was his reason for joining Vitality. That's what this team is supposed to do. And so that little tech pause out of the way. We're ready to get right back into this. Royal Arena, come on, let me hear you! That's more like it, okay. Vitality have won the pistol. They've often been good at converting them. I don't need to tell you that. And Cloud9 aren't bringing any resistance to the party this time. They want to get those rifles out straight away. There should be very little room for this one to get weird. C CT side of Nubis, an extremely uncomfortable position to be, an unenviable position to be for Cloud9. So already as Vitality continue their hot streak of converting pistols, I'm assured in this round, Cloud9 once again start from the back foot. Defense doing them no favors in this series. Yeah, this is a lock-in round at Cloud9, I know it. There, there was no illusion in their minds. They're very much playing for when those rifles come out. And you mentioned it, they've been playing on the back foot all series long with no pistol rounds found so far. They've always had to try and battle back into this from behind. Okay, overcommitment, but it shouldn't be an issue. That gun gets grabbed. And crisis averted for Vitality. It's almost as clean as it could be. Last time these teams matched up on this map, Cloud9 dominated them, and so they want to get back to those winning ways as fast as they can. They need to. They need something to look forward to in this series, and this was supposed to be it. It was a Hail Mary of a pick. A lot of people anticipated that Overpass would be the map we see come through for this Cloud9 squad. And that was off the back, you know, that previous game, off of an eight-round CT side. So this is where Cloud9 should be comfortable. That's against the rule. That's the exception. So what a Vitality learned from that loss. Aggressive start for Hobbit, attempting to swing through that dark smoke. He won't meet Vitality there. And even as he exits, his path fraught with danger. Grenades going through in that mid pop as well. Flames finds Electronic getting aggressive. There's another one coming Ooh. through. And Axar's here for his head. Takes a second kill. So much damage done down to these players outside of A. Both Messi and Zaiwu are low. Vitality are going to look to punish this. get punished rather, but they end up leaving. They end up getting out of there. And so for now, they'll maintain this four on four, but they are wounded, they are hurting. As the gamble going for Cloud9, that's the question on the tip of Apex's tongue. Can you find the answer of the block? An attempt at an opener for Spinks, nothing is found. Nothing is guaranteed, oh. and nothing in this A site but Boomich. Something's called him back. Drops back into the site. Smoke off over in main. Vitality were grouping for the A hit. Boomich is all that stands here for Cloud9. Two low players on the other side of this smoke in Zaiwu and Mezzi. And Boomich with the weight of the world on his shoulders. Is that too much to bear? Smoke blowing open. Boomich can't get back. And so the captains clash, and Apex comes out smiling. That was a huge opportunity for Boomich, right? Two players in his crosshair, the low player first, even on that smoke break, but perfect utility on the execute for Vitality. They answer the call and keep theirs as well. 3-0 off of this T side. The pressure of this stage is a very different beast to the comfort of a land hall for Cloud9. It has been some time. The 
it's the thing though, you know, you, you talk about pressure. This is where you, you have to rise to the occasion. You have to step up. Someone like Flames on the other side, right? He's adjusting fantastically to this. Yeah. Only 20 years old, youngest player on Vitality, and he's had standout performances on both maps. Even in this one, he's the guy who starts it off over here in middle. I mean, you have a lot to compete with when you talk about young players in this Vitality team, right? Look at Zaiwu's uh, breakout year. That's straight to number one. The youngest player to ever do that. Followed it up the next year as well. Of course, a couple more in there a couple years later. And I mean, even now, we've never had a teenager be number one in their debut year. Oh, Axel. It's a nice play, but he just crossed past it. These new smokes are beautiful to look at. But they're not doing Cloud9 any favors. They've got to pop through on A main. Boomage with a block. Nothing but this smoke. Cloud9 often find a lot of success in challenging for these fights. On players crossing over towards A, able to lock out rounds a lot of the time in this portion of the map. And right now, Vitality have dodged that threat time and time again. So clearly, work has gone in. They were ready for this today. The A defense is just Boomich on a USP, and even as Electronic moves in to join him, great, now there's a P250 here as well. That's hardly a winning recipe. And Vitality, full onslaught, a util. Oh, full focus as they come through. One out of Boomich on the USP, but he's got to do more, and he can't. Mezzi secures both the openers. And Vitality are home free in this round. Maybe if Spinks gives this one up, but he's not being overzealous. Instead, he's just holding for this swing back in. And now he's got Mezzi alongside him. Signed and sealed here for Vitality to send a message to Cloud9. We will abuse this A-bomb site. And with a doubt with that pistol round thrown in, that late lurk through dark, Cloud9 can't always be confident that that's necessarily where Vitality are going, even if they find that opening kill. A couple of rounds of, hit, uh, of clean executes for Vitality has set a precedent to start this map. 4-0, Cloud9 need to come back. And Apex is acutely aware of how he's making Cloud9 feel. It felt like back with Inferno, Cloud9's whole game plan was to try and bully Apex over towards B, deny that banana control, get rid of that early. And we saw the effect that that had. Vitality started leaning more players over towards that side of the map. And then that would open up other avenues later on in the game. Vitality are now seeking to do the same thing. They want Cloud9 paranoid. They want that A site scared. They want extra numbers pulled over towards A because we already saw in the pistol. They've got that ability to change direction on the fly. Which is all comes out early. It's a great map for it. Lots of opening positions to be played. Lots of moves to be made. So I will hold on to Dark, but they get an HE right on his head. Boomage is not looking to tackle with the best. Spinks holding strong outside of B. Again, Vitality play towards the water. They're giving time and space for not only Zywu to find a kill, but for Flames to keep the pressure on middle. All over the map, Cloud9 losing information, losing real estate. They've got to take something. It's got to be B. To do that, they've got to get through Spinks, which is easier said than done. First kill found, they're going to try to flash him off the angle, but Sphinx a little faster, a little smarter, was ready for that play. And so Perfecto is never given the chance to trade, but he wants it, he needs it. That voice in his head is calling him back for it, but he'll back up. Concede that opening kill, Boomich wow. besting Zai Wu, but Perfecto is caught in the crossfire. Boomich has got to do this all alone now. This all on his back is the only thing that stands between that and the vitality round being won. Boomich, all these shots missing. Nails the first, but can't take it any further. Zai Wu is just so damn fast. Even as Perfecto's on that wider angle, he somehow removes him from the round before Boomich gets the trade off. And that is a worthy one for one for Vitality. Cracking open an undefended B-bomb site. Where even Boomich's antics on the AWP are not enough, not a surprise as this has been the biggest question point for Cloud9. High highs, low lows, no AWP, the most pivotal role in Counter-Strike. 
Cloud9 have been unable to feel those huge boots left by Shiro. Will be on this very stage later today. Vitality proving that that Cloud9 eight round CT side might just be an, an, an anomaly in this stage matchup. Right now, it's not like Cloud9 have anything to go off of. It's not like anyone's been given that heroic performance thus far. You know, Axar was inspiring a lot of faith, a lot of confidence back on Inferno. But here, it, it is a slow start across the board. Yeah. And what a sad way for the Cloud9 to you know, fall apart if that's what we're going to get in the second map as well, because their major run has been absolutely phenomenal. Near flawless from the RMR, a 3 0, a win over Vitality, straight into the major, taking down big dogs, taking down Na'Vi, G2. Their only loss in this whole circuit is to Spirit, and we'll give them that. Vitality, sure, they've been fairly clean, but they've not nearly faced the same level of opposition the Cloud9 have had to contend with. Wins over Imperial, the Mongols. And sure, complexity made them work for it. And that warm up came at the right time. Vitality red hot in the Royal Arena. Is there any stopping them? Is there any slowing down this T side? Cloud9 have not had solutions yet. Vitality have been full of those. Another roll out for Boomich here, finds its way over towards B once again. Vitality once more set their eyes on this A site. It's again painstakingly slow on these T sides for Vitality, getting all their ducks in a row. And knocking down Axile, he's trapped out. That volley forces a fight, he'll only take one. Does well to get out of it with a one-for-one one there. The util would have wrecked him, so he had to take that swing. Vitality aren't feeling pressure to commit. They've still got plenty of time left to play with. They like toying with Cloud9. They like getting in their heads. They want them doubting every move, and so as Cloud9 have adjusted heavy over towards middle, over towards A, Hobbit is left as the sole b site defender. Sphinx has been waiting back at B-Long since the start of the round. Hobbit pushes into dark. It's just the one-for-one one as Zywu Zork fires off in reply. Some of the most phenomenal trading for Vitality in this map so far. No kill, goes unpunished, no play, comes out for free. And now a free B bomb site it's in, in its entirety. A smoke to stop Perfecto from getting involved. That bomb doesn't have to cross. Zyu can take this fight if he wants, but it would be risky. Oh, he can wall bang. Boomage. The quads come oh! denied by Boomich. 10 seconds. Someone's got to save him. Perfecto can filter through. Boomich takes two, and Cloud9 are on the board. And it's Boomich's AWP that gets them there. About time. Just Take, that taking out spotted. the most decorated AWP that we have in these uh, in these major playoffs. And he's the guy where the AWP's just the decoration. But look at this, he spots an arm, he takes the leg two times over. Can't be one and done. It's got to be the start of something here on a very difficult half. I mean, in that game, we touched upon it earlier on when these teams have matched up on this map last time. Boomich did actually outshine on that AWP, which is a wild thing to even take into consideration. But a little 2K like that, it's put some wind in his sails. He starts this round off aggressive over towards A main. It's a very different day. It's very different stakes. Staying ahead of the curve. Boomich is on a new line. Of course, that's a round of Vitality. Leave this position open completely. Nice nade to put pressure on Dora. Allows Vitality to walk all the way through the middle. They can play the fade of this smoke and use it to spot Apex with little tricks on this mid take. Start pressuring. They're going oh, through that yeah. smoke. Axile is run down. Boomich again has got to deliver on this AWP and it just sails past Flames who seems determined 
who seems so active on this T side. Flames top in the charts right now. And see, so he was like the, the one man you could have looked to have questioned for this Vitality squad. The one man you could have made a case for, for struggling under the bright lights. But not in this game. Flames is here to stay, that much is apparent. And he's the reason they got here so clean as well. That game over complexity was an absolute struggle for Vitality. He had to drag them out. It was on this map. He came through with a massive second pistol round with a 3K that propelled them into a comeback. It put them 3-1. They needed the help, they needed extra hands. Zaiwoos were not working. And right now we're seeing that statement from Boomich after the 3-0 opening stage come true. I am not a stable author, he claims. Continuing to show us one glimmer of hope, one nice round in the mix, but with the exception of that, it's been all misses. And they're so determined to keep it in play, they keep going back to it. Boomich donning that AWP again, and it will be a focal point for this CT side. It will be something you have to keep an eye on here, you have to acknowledge no one else showing up around him. He sits top of the board for Cloud9 in spite of the missteps. And so this offers something to answer for, but where is everyone else for Cloud9? Vitality have not lost this trade in dark one round. Ollie forces a decision. Hobbit must escape. Vitality get this one for free, finally. There is blocking Utah on this B bomb site, but it has to hurry up quick. It has to come through as Perfecto drops his final nade. Vitality emerge into the site. Zywu can't find that entry kill. Hobbit holds for one, but again, not enough. Feels like it won't be the last time we say that for Cloud9. They crumble. A brittle B site. Electronics trying to make a move here. Trying to rejuvenate the squad as he plays through this smoke, but tagged up on the push. Axile instead tries to take up the mantle of the man to pull this back, but set up from the flashbang. Apex puts Flames in a spot to succeed, and he continues to exert that dominance over this T side. Flames is absolutely on fire. That position gained up on the lip so he can wait for the flash. He was in no hurry. He just wants to end this round and take everything away. He saw the AWP. He knows Boomich is here and they want that gone. This AWP is the only threatening thing coming out next round and it will get removed. Vitality aren't just confident anymore. They do not respect Cloud9. They want this win to be a brutal and swift vengeance. <laughs> the timeout for Cloud9, but I don't think that this will be enough to save them here. This is fantastic for, for Vitality, there is no doubt about it. They had a pretty harrowing start to the year. It's always, or at least usually, downhill after winning the major. It's so hard to keep it up, especially with roster changes on the horizon. The GOAT coach gone. Pastures are more green, but it's still Vitality succeeding on major stages. Exactly what this team was made to do. Exactly what, you, what you'd expect from the caliber of players this roster fields. And the captain is keeping them in it. Anything but calm. Ferocious t half of Anubis right now. Another AWP, another heavy investment. Will these purchases ever pay off? Even if that orb starts firing on all cylinders, even if somehow Boomich rises to the occasion, he's not the big issue in this one. There's no supporting cast around him. So sure, they're putting a lot of money in to keep bringing it out. You've got to have some faith in this orb on Boomich right now. Flames, full faith in this guy, 12 and two. Top in the charts for Vitality and carving a path to the semi finals. It's all flames. Eight and one, another save for Cloud9. This is getting dismal. This is getting brutal. This is exactly how Vitality, if you ask them, this is exactly how they would envision a grudge match between these teams going down.
This is how you want to propel yourself into those semis. You need the confidence up. You want Flames believing in this squad and bringing his best. Oh, he is not stopping right now. Absolutely brutal. Got to save this orb in something, but is it nothing for Cloud9? Four major winners on this squad. They are crumbling under the bright lights. And it's recency bias. It's the next generation. It's the young stars shining for vitality. Flames doesn't have this stage experience. It is not deterring him. Absolutely dominating the server. And no successor for Cloud9. And this has even been the story throughout the rest of the major so far for Vitality. It's been spearheaded by Sphinx and by Flames. And Flames is showing oh, his oh, best oh. look yet here in the quarterfinals. He has become what Cloud9 feared. Flames is rocking their world. Setting fire to the rain that falls on Cloud9's parade. Boomich is holding on tightly to this AWP. He's clutching his mouse right now like never before, hoping that he can do something, he can deliver anything to Cloud9. But they don't make life easy for Orpus. They don't make life easy for Boomich. A fast reposition out of dark. Gets posted on main. Vitality are going to come walking into this AWP. Perfecto dead as he tries to make a play. And now it is just Boomich left in the clutch. Trying to get ahead of them. He's trying to read one step further than Vitality. But they don't fear. They don't cower in front of the Boomich orb. They're going back into the bomb site as Boomich goes around the world. Hoping, praying. The Vitality overdo this, but they don't. Determined walk into this B bomb site. And a prawn that puts them well and truly in a winning position. Nine and one, maybe guaranteed. Can Boomich even justify this rotation? And this is just a brutal way to lose a round. For Boomich, you know, he was trying to build into this one. He gets that first kill, was in the right place, and he tries to get ahead of it. That's the leader in him, trying to outread the opposition. But it leaves him far and away from winning this clutch. And so it will never even get attempted. Now, not only are they getting outperformed, they're getting outcalled, they're getting outmaneuvered, they're getting outread. Vitality coming through with their A game. Yeah, I gotta say, you know, even though Flames is, is red hot right now, he's 15 and 2, he's looking indomitable. The calling has been fantastic for Vitality. No kill has gone untraded, with the exception of Zyru walking through that smoke. Vitality have been so cautious, they've been so together. Axel has been offered nothing more than a one-for-one -one on A main, and he was the star of the show back on Inferno. He was a guy getting the rounds going for Cloud9. He has just been absolutely iced out in this map as an A anchor. A very difficult position on a good day. Vitality make it look like hell on earth. And so Apex's leadership once again, putting Vitality at the forefront of a major run. Simply four rounds from semis and a quick day in the office. You can't even imagine what this must feel like for Flames. This is one of these like career highlight moments. This is one of these career defining matches. Yeah, look at Sphinx, he's one and four. He's not a factor. We haven't yeah. said Zywu's name. None of this matters. And you know, when you're on a team with someone who had to rise as fast and as hard as Zywu, and everyone's talking about you, that speaks volumes. Zywu decides he wants to be bought into that conversation. Gets involved here and now. Speak of the devil and he shall appear. It's Zai Wu's double kill that tees up Vitality for double digits. They're making it look, look like Inferno. One, two kills, you just win the round. Cloud9 are trying to get aggressive to regain space, but Vitality are still waiting on their default. This will give them something. This will give them more kills. It's gonna get worse before it gets better. But Flames a missed shot, and Electronic keeps Cloud9 in consideration. Awkward thing here, this is actually one of the better spots you've been in to attempt a retake, and even then, Sphinx roars to life. Haven't even had to mention him throughout this game so far, but he gets his. 
and Vitality looking to get theirs is now Cloud9. Two versus four, and it might be another dismal save. With each one of these, they have to sit there, let the round wash over them, let the game wash over them. They can't come to terms with their failures here, but they have been let down in this second map. It felt wild. The Anubis pick comes through. That's Cloud9 believing in their pool, believing in their game. They've had good results on this one, but Vitality have come through ready. They have come through prepared. Yeah, you almost wonder if Cloud9 got into their own head right with that veto, knowing that this map would be allowed as a third. Sure, Mirage was never going to be comfortable for Vitality, but Cloud9 make a case for the best CT site in the world on Overpass. And I bet they are wishing they had the chance to show that today. Obliterated on Anubis. Cloud Nine come crashing down. If this keeps up, right at the dawn of CS2, you might have the most dominant loss in a major playoff game, right? Just uh, looking to come down the pipeline as a CS2 record set early, pending any 13 0s in the remainder of the tournament. It's a pretty, pretty rough one to have to try and beat. Cloud9, uh, Cloud9 keep their head in it right now. Relentless orb investments. Sure, it paid off for their one round. But is that reproducible? Or is it just a flash in the pan? A domineering vitality. Looking to again, again walk it over the line. Got a double setup here. Two of the most terrifying stars of Cloud9, but snuffed out, eclipsed in this map. Axel and Electronic on a final stand. And that's actually how much Electronic is shaking right now. Look at him go up close towards me, and Axel holds this tight line, looking for anything, but he's out of it. Check oh! out Electronic! Just might bring them back in right when you thought it was over. Shooting for the stars at two on the half. And what a time for him to have stepped up here. This was about to be a wash, no contest. Still very much could be, but Cloud9 looking for anything, clutching at straws, clutching at electronic. Zywoo forced out by the Molotov into that AWP. And now it's just Sphinx. Stone Cold on the first half, never had to do anything, was never required. Left in a rough 1v4 at electronic. Rising to the occasion with four kills. Last of the half is put up by Cloud9. Absolutely nothing to celebrate. Not even a smile on the face at this point because Cloud9 have still lost every single pistol in this series. The conversions for the most part clean on Vitality. They've got to break the streak at the hardest point in the match. At their last dawn on this playoff run. It never even begun. And even the difference in just the body language that we're seeing as we get ready to head into this second half. Cloud9 pull off a round like that. Usually those are the ones you're celebrating over, but there's nothing to celebrate when you get two rounds on your CT side. Not when it was the CT side that carried you to that dominant win over this squad last time you matched up. Vitality, they just refocus. They want this one over and done with now, and nothing in this series is there to suggest that Cloud9 have got what it takes to win a pistol round. If they lose this pistol, then it is not to, not left to the imagination, not left to wonder as to why they lost this series. They would not have picked up a single pistol on both maps. Vitality, it's the expectation. It's what we're used to. And they're looking to make moves in the mid-round to complicate matters. Pushing out through B-Main. Boomic and Perfecto are here. They spot that push at least. Electronic picks up a kill over in middle. Starting to pick up form at the end of regulation. Hobbit with that reply at least gets the trade onto Flames. A huge kill to find with the form that Flames is showing here. So now Spinks is left as the sole defender of this B site. This 
is a nice move. It's going to give Vitality a bit of info. It will let Mezzi gamble, but it's still up to Sphinx. Silent in that first half, alone at the back of the site. The backstab a second too late. Sphinx is covered by Smokes, but he's got an open sight line here to stop that ball. Oh. While Mezzi taps that two, Sphinx is here to help, and it's domination from Vitality. Not just in this map, not just in this series, but in the pistols as well. What a turnaround. You thought for a moment if you were Cloud9, you had something. You had something going your way, but Messi and Sphinx robbed that pistol. I think they even missed the smokes there. That smoke's in the middle of the site. There's one on CT. That feels like it's meant for Temple. Cloud9 crumbling under the weight of major winners. Here they go, a final dish hurrah, a force with no plant, explosion into this site. Messi is caught with a Molotov in hand. He's got a crossing help, but it won't last long. Cloud9 break in, then they break down. Apex is here to hound them. Sets and this him might be as good with. as done. Axile's a long way away. Vitality are going for the throat. They want this to be embarrassing. They want this to be one-sided. They want to go into that semi-finals riding a high, and they just might. One round. And Apex, as the tenured captain, as the veteran, is the one that opens up that retake. There is no doubting Vitality are here in Copenhagen, and they mean business. They brought their cohort. Almost feels like home advantage, but Paris was last year. And in the present moment, Cloud9 take a breather. They take their final opportunity. A timeout up against elimination point here at the playoffs. Vitality making a statement. Spirit of your favorites, we're here to play as well. Cloud9 certainly can't get in their way. Showing as well that the talent on this roster goes far deeper than just as I woo. This has been all about flames. This one's been all about Sphinx. Zaiwu's barely had to lift a finger. His teammates have got this. He believes in them. And so this could be it. This could be Vitality reaching the semi-finals right now in ludicrously dominant fashion. Cloud9, they've looked done since the midpoint of that first half. They have been overpowered, they have been outcalled, they've got nothing to show for this Anubis pick. A map that has been nothing but kind to the Cloud9 squad becomes their greatest enemy in a major quarterfinal. And after such a clean run, such a dominant run from RMR to the playoffs, one lost series in a BO1 to the world favorites. And Cloud9. Nothing short of indefensible in this series. Vitality, again, info play gathering it towards B. It's going to free up rotations. They know Cloud9 are in the middle. They're using Util to block, to buy time. Zaiwu has the bulk. He sees them coming. Flames and Zaiwu here to withstand this. They will open up. Zaiwu getting involved. And now it's just Flames toppled and run down. Sphinx on the rotate out through middle. Vitality sit a man up in this retake. They want this one over and done with here and now. And one man stands between them and that semi-final. Today, V is for victory and for vengeance. Vitality come through swinging and they don't miss. They might have fallen to Cloud9 last time around. But they get their revenge here and now, and it's Cloud9 who wilt away on the big stage. Yeah, fantastic signs on that first map, but Cloud9 absolutely disappear. Uh, an indefensible orb, even the leadership lacking on these T sides, and Cloud9, there is no silver lining in this cloud. They will need more performances like that from Flames, more performances like this from Sphinx, and they're gonna need Zaiwu come that semi-final. There's even a world where we get that Zaiwu v Donk matchup. They'll need these players to keep up this level of performance, but this is exactly 
how Vitality wanted their quarter-final run to start. Yeah, what a debut in CS2 after ending Go at the highest of highs. It was never going to be easy to keep it up, but now we can see as they start their run in the Royal Arena. Vitality have secured their semi-final spot. And Flames, when it came to you guys qualifying for the playoffs, you put up a huge performance. Just now on Anubis, you were feeling that you were just going off? Yeah, I think uh, obviously we prepared because we knew this, the group stage was a bit off from us, but we also had two sick players, we lacked a lot of energy, and uh, now we can feel the energy. Matu is awake, uh, Spinks is awake, Dan gave great calls, so we, he showed on the server today. What about you though? Did something change for you in this? Ah, sometimes, you know, I play good. It just depends. I felt good today, so we played good today. I'm happy of, of the performance. But uh, but yeah, I'm happy with how the team was. Because of the team, I, I couldn't play like that. And I want to ask you, it's your first time being in a major playoffs. How good did that feel for you? It felt it felt really weird in the morning. I was really nervous. I, I, I knew that today is going to be a different day. Uh, but but we, we know this arena. We've been here in full final. And uh, today we were just, uh, I felt like the better team, but we were also the better individuals. Uh, but yeah, it feels it feel like a, a major playoffs. It feels way different than every, every, any tournament I've been in. For you to have nerves, sometimes it's good to have those nerves for sure. I want to ask about on this Inferno, there was a moment where you guys got upset by the pistols, then you glocked them right back. After that, did you feel like, okay, we've got them? You know, it was actually it was actually really weird round because we, Dan was speaking, we were talking about how to counter them to the next rounds, and we were adapting, and we were just AFK, you know, nobody was looking at his monitor, I was playing with my with my fingers, and uh, and then we were like, we made a plan up, I said, guys, I'm gonna burn on the molly on ups and just go rush mid, and then, I don't know, Zayu was just running along so fast, Exile, like, picked pit, the kills got together, and then we were like, yeah, let's keep going, boys. And that certainly worked out for you. How much confidence does this kind of performance inspire for you and the whole team? Well, it, it gives us a lot of confidence. Uh, obviously, now we have one day off and we're going to prepare for a spirit of, spirit of faith. We're going to watch the game. But uh, we're confident. We know, we know we can win any team if we play on our good side. And we just need to stick to it. And I know you gave an interview where you said, right, it would be the dream to win the major, the goal for you to have it alongside some of your other teammates who have already got that. Does it feel if this vitality shows up like you did today that that can come true? Yeah, I, th I think it, well, we never know. Phase of Spirit could have a really good day. Like, we just need to do our best and not lose to ourselves and uh, we'll see how it goes. And what do you think of this amazing crowd and also the Golden Hornets out there? Oh, I love you guys. We, we woke up today to a really loud fans and uh, yeah, it's just amazing. I thank all of you guys. It was amazing. It's been amazing so far and that was one hell of a start to the major playoffs. Guys, make some noise for Flamesy and Vitality! Yes, make some noise indeed. Uh, well, look, sometimes, Matthew, as I'm sure you're aware, a man of your lived in experience, when you gamble at the casino of life, sometimes you lose. <laughs> and that's what happened for Cloud9 today. We, you know, the veto was off for Cloud9, but the analysis from us was on point. Anubis, just a nightmare for them. Yeah, they, they burned their fingers. I think after that Anubis victory at the RMR, might have maybe misanalyzed why they won, maybe lacked a little bit of distance, realizing they won both pistols, they had all the key rounds. Here it's a completely different story. It's Vitality with great starts, something that they had been looking for almost yeah. this entire major. And I think it is a very strong statement to how careful we have to be from group stage form to playoff form, because it's an entirely different Vitality who showed up, powered up by an incredible flames on the offense once again, yep. with quality across the roster, with great calls from Apex. I mean, that in itself is enough to start again the conversation of a trophy for Vitality, which we hadn't prior to the mm. I mean, we touched upon this entire hubris of this map that coming in from the side of Cloud9. And look, a, a lot of the wins on this map has been predicated off winning the pistol rounds, having four or five round CT start. But Vitality came with such an almost an impeccable game plan. We did touch upon, we, we alluded to the fact that this B hold from Cloud9, there are a few holes here, it can be a weakness. And that is something Vitality exploited early on in this map. And after which, once flames got activated, they were just calling perfect rounds here. They're going towards A, just toying with the rotations and Cloud9. They, they, they weren't, weren't even in the server here. Not only were the calls good from Vitality and we're gonna give Apex his flowers rightfully for that, but the spacing and the training oh. was the one of a team that is yeah. absolutely in the flow state. Something that I hadn't seen in a group stage, very rightly highlighted by the casters, fantastic job at it. 
never could someone from Cloud9 do more than a kill before getting traded. Yep. That's when the T side is in flow state. They are yes. following each other by the pocket. You fall, I trade you. You fall, I trade you. The space has been taken. They could never stop them. I mean, and also the utility protocol coming out from these guys was insane, but we have to touch ah, upon damn. the French Foreign Legion that is the Flames and Sphinx package. We touched upon Sphinx on Info yeah. and what he pulled off, and Flames was just, he was unplayable, and he was in that flow state, so to speak, and whatever doubts were. They might not even be here right now if it wasn't for this guy. 100%. No, that's fair. And, and, and we weren't sure if we'd be able to replicate this on the on the stage and arena, but clearly, who woke up the right side of the bed. And I think it's a good moment just to consider the position of Flames in the upper echelon of Counter-Strike because when he was an OG, we thought of him as a little bit inconsistent. You know, he had good games here and there. He was obviously a little bit dragged down by the rest of the lineup, but we wonder, you know, how is he going to fare in the big stage? He didn't know the big stage with OG. They never made it to that kind of setup. But now I think he's starting to slowly build the resume of extremely strong maps in moments of high importance. Yes. The Major, of course, is the moment where he pops up, or rather the full final was it plus here again. He did it in the group stage. This man is starting to build a little bit of a legacy already yes. in the Vitality jersey as you can rely on me. I'm, I'm gonna do the carry mode. I'm gonna give you the 20 plus kills. I'm capable of it. Yeah, uh, go on. No, uh, and indeed, and this is something I, I was worried a little bit about, the fact that the Hive needs to rally around the king that is Zaiwu. That is exactly what we saw here. Sure, it was a little a little uncomfortable in map number one, but map number two was a complete blowout, and I have to give credit to them. They really stepped up, and they, it's no, it doesn't feel the Zaiwu show I mean, show he, I don't think he's there yet. No, I don't think I we have seen. I, I think it would be a disservice Zywoo to say... hasn't woken up. No, yet. I mean, even I, I'm the greatest fanboy out there. Everybody knows that but I think it would be the dishonesty for me to say, oh, you know what, the greats has arrived, like Zywoo is here. Yeah. I don't think that's the case. I mean, put it this way, there's there's a world where we could be talking about this at the end, where Vitality win a major, and it's like, I know, Zywoo got carried. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> like I guess for right, now, gonna play like that. for now, he's not in a conversation for the MVP race. No. I'll just put it out there. That, yeah, that's not pretty at simple. All. There are games to be still played. I, I do think the Anubis was of better quality. I think whenever he was given a chance, he struck and he found the kills, but we are far away from his best. And in itself, for Vitality, that's a good sign. You got quality across the board who drag you through, not even drag you through the finish line. Hell, you let them in. You let them, that's like Wally Coyote over there. Yeah. You had, had no chance if you Cloud9. <laughs> yeah, not at all. Uh, I, I do want to talk a little bit about Cloud9. Obviously, yeah. we're not going to see them anymore in the tournament. Um, they still have existential issues that they need to resolve after this. But I would think overall, making the top eight, I, I, you should go away being philosophically proud. Of um, yes, in a way. I, I, can't, I can't disagree with you on that. But also, I have to touch upon the fact that that we were talking about, and we've spoken about this time and time again, this op roulette they've been uh, have going on. I even it's talked about the resolved. fact that Boomich can actually op these to Anubis. That didn't happen here. When they really needed a proper opera, the number of times that AWP had virtually zero impact, apart from the one round they won, that cannot be allowed. And you can see now, if they don't see this, this problem in this team after this game, by the way, congratulations, top eight, great job. You need to make that change, you need to switch it up. Yeah. But a tiny little tweak, this is a team I could be happy about. I'm actually extremely angry, because prior to the major, I thought my solution was all found. I thought, just remove Axel, bring a different player, Hobbit can be the fill, and it's gonna be fine. But now I feel like he just scrambled all the pieces again. Yes. Like, coming to life at this major, I'm just thinking, okay, hold on a minute now. Do do you have my attention? Have I been impatient with you? Are you showing up again? Because I don't think he's to be damned for this showing here. I think on no. Inferno, he was the one finding yes. a lot of the opening kills. He was the one who played the better Counter-Strike yes. overall in that roster. So I'm kind of in flux on that. I think the body of work that has been disappointing is much bigger than this event where he actually showed up. So I'm a little bit complex on what change to make, but we should not be fooled. It is still a team that is dysfunctional and they've been exposed today yes. by Vitality who abuse the lack of a strong AWP to stop you in these executes time and time again. Yeah, and obviously people have been out there on social media, everyone's praying for kind of the, the Munasi Cloud9 move in G2. <laughs> are like, he's not for sale, stop it guys. But I mean, they really do need to find a, an opera, I think. You have to have a dedicated player in that Everybody's role. got a prize, listen, Richard. It's yeah, all well, about the money. But so, also, like me, <laughs> why, that's, that's why I'm in. The, it is kind of ironic considering, you know, we're talking about this, this era of CIS, generational opera and talent coming out from the region. The fact they don't even have a, a real opera in the team just boggles my imagination, right? But yeah, hopefully a couple of changes. I don't know which what the change is going to be. I think, you know, overall the run has been very solid. Is it Axel? Is it Hobbit? Ah. It, it's, it's rough to call, but they do have a couple of weeks to maybe mm. reset themselves and figure out what the future is because I really truly believe there is still a future for this for the majority of this team.
Okay. Uh, well, Vitality did show up today. We're going to hear the buzz of the Hornets at least one more time. Uh, obviously, we're not going to be doing the desk uh, for the next game, Spirit versus FaZe. What do you mean? We, uh, we have to go? Uh, yeah, have to I know, I know. I'm going to get changed. I'm going to get out the suit. Like, I by the way, a beer by the way I do want to say, just for Reddit's benefit, Maniac dressed me today. That's why I look good. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> uh, right. Team Spirit versus FaZe. I just want to pick your brains about that matchup. Uh, obviously, FaZe, they didn't look good. Very similar to Vitality in that sense you know we haven't seen their a game yet but prior to this there was a compelling argument that they're the best team in cs2 no, i agree with you and, and i do think again um the way i lay out my prediction is the following if phase manages to snatch one of the two first maps i think they win in three mm. i think their job is to push spirit into a situation where they can uncomfortable acknowledge yep. the possibility of losing because nobody puts spirit in that position quite yet on stage no one did at, at any point sure yes. mouse beat them at group the armor that's stage. different yep. navi took him up here and there but nobody Nobody forced Spirit to look in the eyes of defeat and realize you might disappoint everybody. I think FaZe can do that. They have to be one of the two first maps, then we have a conversation. Yeah, and they're going to have a home crowd as well. A lot of FaZe fans right, out yeah. there. What are your thoughts, bud? No, I completely agree with uh, with, with Maniac. I actually have FaZe in my pickups going all the way through. I feel like this is going to be cat. Right. I have him. I have King Carrigan pulling off something absolutely ludicrous and just catching everyone off guard. I think FaZe are going to accelerate into this playoffs because we've seen that. FaZe on the stage is a whole different beast. And if they slay the dragon that is spirit, who's going to stop? And listen, that? worst case, we're going to look like fools again, as in Katowice. I, it's okay. I, I've, I've come to come to peace with that. You know, yeah, I said, it oh, happens. don't, you know, wait a minute. I give him a better opponent. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> wait, no, he actually did it again. I'll wait for the stage. Oh, my God, it's wait, happening you, again. Wait, yeah. you were being logical. So I, I try to be logical and I burned myself a couple of times. So I'm just ready to do it again. Yep, donk, I did it again. <laughs> All right, guys, uh, great talking to you. Uh, I'm going to head out into the crowd, get a beer, and, and watch this amazing game that's coming up, Team Spirit versus FaZe Clan. I recommend you watch as well. We're going to have Shots, Moses, and Pimp will be coming into the desk to break that one down after just a short break, so stick around. City, boom. I'm blind. I'm fresh again. Yeah, fresh again. Touch. Boom. City, fall back. Santa is dead. City, one, one fall back. I push and go to the small guy. Yeah, save it. Saving, 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 saving. Go, go fast, uh, you should leave on this. Fast, fast, Okay. Go short, uh, short. Yeah, I'll go short to exit. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's going out, eh? Yeah, yeah it's running to side, free short banana. One. Can be no man's as well. Could be. Perfect. I think they're banana. Yeah, yeah, banana, banana in heaven. They're yeah, banana, banana. 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 Don't banana. Pushing him. Push your banana. Oh, he's stuck. Nice. Nice. Let's boys. go, boys! Yeah, boys, look at that! Nice we don't give a fuck! We play together! Yeah. Let's go! Clinical, clinical, what's that? Clinical. Oh, you're so <laughs> world is changing quickly. To clear. Shoot it. Thing remains the same. Victories with one X bet. Level up your gaming space with metal posters from Displate. Paint your displates in seconds. Swap them whenever you like. Get official art from your favorite games on a uniquely designed metal canvas and choose from thousands of posters. Join over 3 million collectors now. Your wall upgrade is here. Shop now at Displate.com. We are proud to announce new additions to the XL series. Both are using fast TN panels and newly upgraded DIAC2 technology. Fast TN panel with its faster native response time can reveal enemy outlines quicker during flashbang attacks. For IPS panel, more overdrive is required to enhance response speed, leading to dynamic image blurring due to the panel's inability to handle the load. These new monitors integrate new dynamic accuracy technology, DIAC2. The upgraded dual backlight design not only provides FPS players with clearer visuals at dynamic aiming and spray control, but are also more friendly to your eyes. Moreover, built in the monitor panel, DIAC2 functions independently and doesn't require any sync with PCs, ensuring no impact on game performance. 
Excel setting to share now has auto game mode feature. Besides download, save, share your settings, it will auto apply different color settings based on your usage scenarios. Outlook of the latest monitors are refreshed. It has incorporated industrial grade bearings into the height adjustment mechanism, allowing easier and smoother adjustment to the exact desired height. The new monitor series continue to evolve, refining details to ensure players can perform their best consistently in games. This is a brief introduction of the new XL monitor. Feel free to DM us if you have any questions. Yeah, it was popular, it's loud. And this is ASON's commercial. But ASON spent all the money to make the headphones good. And they got no money left for the commercial. So I'm gonna need you to head to ASON IO. A C E Z O N E. Yo. Code PGL, 50 euros off. We got some headphones. It's now and never. We've reached the playoff stage here at the PGL Copenhagen Major and a team that dominated their way through to no surprise by many was Team Spirit. I've got Magix and Donk with me here. How are you guys doing? Good. Good? They were doing great. Doing great. And I'm sure after how you performed. Now, for you, Donk, first major, straight first time to the playoffs. You had kind of a similar run if we talk about a big event like Katowice and how that went for you. How does this feel at the major? Does it feel any different? Not really. What do you feel? I don't feel like some special. Like I just play this tournament like Katowice. That's it. For you, Magix, obviously you've been through this. You understand how this is. But for you, does it feel like there's more chance for you to have an opportunity to win this major? Does it feel different in that sense? Or do you have the same belief even in your old times on Spirit? It's obviously different, uh, like, uh, different team, different, uh, like, uh, feelings uh, while playing. Mm. Uh, just feeling different, but nothing really much. Just, it's just the same game, but uh, I have no idea. <laughs> and we're just playing the game, yeah. What do you think about how strong this playoff bracket is and the other teams that you might face off against? I genuinely believe that that's the best bracket we could have got, like, and we got in the past years. Mm -hmm. And just imagine if you have to beat like number one, number three, and number four team in order to win the tournament. So yeah, the playoffs looks great, and there's an eternal fire who are not that high ranked team, mm -hmm. but from the past months they've shown a great form. Definitely, we've seen that from them. Now for you, Donk. Remember after you beat Na'Vi, you went 3-0, you told me, okay, you had a headache, but you were not happy with your own performance in the Newt game. We still look at your performances and say it's really good. So what do you see as like a good performance for you? When is it good? When is it bad in your opinion? Good when I'm not doing like some stupid mistakes and I'm not like dying like a noob or, and <laughs> that's a good performance but if i'm losing uh, some silly clutches uh, mm -hmm. doing stupid mistakes that's it now for the opening game you go up against phase clan for you you just mentioned to me magics you can play against some of the very best teams right the highest ranked teams for your major journey what do you think of where phase are at right now as a team because it seems this major so far they didn't play to their level do you feel like they have a chance to take you down this time or do you feel like this is quite a comfortable game for you? Yeah, well, whatever happens, happens, but FaZe is definitely is a team 
<sighs> who are getting better throughout the tournament because mm-hmm. they understand that like uh, you can make like conclusions about the tournament not about, not in how you started it but how you ended it so okay. they're a team who are good in playoffs and in big matches they have players who can show up so there's no way it, it's going to be easy i think you said to me before the mvp medals you don't care about but do you care about winning the major how important is that to you on like a personal level mm. sure it uh, it means a lot for me like uh, for every player who's playing CS, yes, so like it's uh, it's not means like more than some another big event it mm-hmm. uh, means like almost the same oh, wow. like i think major just uh, yeah sure means uh, more than some other big event because it's major it's uh, like two two tournaments in a year so mm-hmm. yeah sure i want to win this ma- this tournament so magic i want to ask you around what would it mean to you someone who has played counter strike for such a long time how long you've been on spirit to be able to win the pgl copenhagen major you can't imagine whatever you're gonna feel if you can make it like and you it's like not the thing that you need to be thinking about is the thing uh, if you can make it you have to enjoy the most like the momentum if it can, if it happens so just don't be too excited then stay hungry and <laughs> stay hungry and enjoy the moment i like that well good luck on your whole major journey guys i'm excited to see what you can do in the arena FaZe Clan survived the elimination stage here at the Copenhagen Major, but now it's all about these playoffs, and they seem to be in good spirits, at least how you're acting so far. But Carrigan, i got to ask straight away, just, you're used to this, you've been through these stressful moments, but did this one feel any different to you? Was this an extra level of stress? I don't think so. I think the stress will come now. Uh, obviously, going into the arena, um, having a lot of thoughts of, what our dream scenario could be. Uh, first of all, first is two major, uh, winning that uh, first major in Copenhagen. Was I stressed before complexity? I don't think I was stressed, I'm more like excited. I mean, okay. this is this is a very simple scenario. You're two two, one game away. It's not about who you, if you beat this team, who you're gonna meet and think of all these scenarios. I like when I know what is very simple, win or beat this team, qualify. Yeah. And I think at that moment I realize it's, it's my own hands, right? If you ask me three months ago, uh, not knowing where we were, 2-2 game against Complexity, you go through the playoff, I'll take it any day. Okay, so that was a, a good matchup for you for sure. And you showed up. This was the real phase we saw, I would say. Frozen for you, what's it like going through these phase games? You've now had a few months on the team. What what, what a wild journey it's been for you. Mm, I mean, obviously, I would say, I would lie if I said I wasn't stressed in some way. Uh, probably Finn has more experience in these stressful situations than yeah. I do. Um, it was in our own hands to, you know, qualify and make it to the playoffs. So, yeah, there was a little bit of stress, but, you know, as I as well think uh, that in phase you need to be used to, you know, a uh, little bit of stress. Karen, you gave quite a, a good speech before your complexity game. Do you feel like complexity game was the only game you played to the level of what phase was, or was that not even enough then? I just think when it came to complexity game, I knew that one thing I cannot regret is not pushing my team to the to the limit of showing that I'm here today, no matter the cost, no matter how bad I'm playing, no matter how bad we play, we need to be there as a team. Uh, that's the only way we're going to get through this. And um, you can always win games by playing good as a team, but you can also win games as playing individually, right? Mm-hmm. And if you want to win the major, you need a mixture of both. And for me, the first step is always the hardest to make sure that we're here. Yeah. And um, let me just put it like this. I love to call when I have nothing to lose. Mm. If there's not a smoke, I won't push. <laughs> <laughs> so they should be very scared of all of this, that's for sure. <laughs> My man. <laughs> Gap coming. Or not. <laughs> and looking at your career, right, you've made top four at a major before when we come back to Rio with Mattels, but everyone's goal, everyone's dream is to win it, even if you've won it before. For you, though, have your own expectations, your own belief in that 
dream becoming true changed? Has your mentality changed around that because now you sit in this jersey? I mean, I feel like I always had very high ambitions, even though when I was in uh, Mouse and maybe we didn't look the great uh, at some time. But, you know, I think I always had a bigger picture in my head and I was always focusing on the, on the big trophies. I think obviously maybe now it feels way more possible than it was maybe before in the video, yeah. I would say. Yeah, I don't think it changed. I'm, I'm, I'm still hungry as I was ever before. Great, and that's what we want to see and we want to hear for sure. I want to look at this playoff bracket that we've got and the teams we've got. How crazy does it seem when you, you we finally have a bracket that we haven't had for a long time? Does it feel like you have maybe the strongest bracket and this is maybe the most open major? I'm so excited, actually. I think um, if you want to win the major, uh, let's say we go all the way to the final, I think you, there's not a thing you can't put if we didn't deserve it, right? I think mm -hmm. there's always this question now about the major. Uh, if you're a team that goes deep, what kind of bracket did you get, right? Um, that's what you want to do. You want to see the major champion that actually wrecked everyone in the bracket, even though it was the hardest way. Um, now, would, you can always say, yeah, I went to the semifinal of, of major, but does that really matter? In the end, if you're quarterfinal or, or, or second place, the nobody nobody remembers you unless <laughs> unless you you choked in Boston like we did. Then people remember, but you don't remember second place as much no. unless they had the chance and the fruit. Um, so it doesn't matter really. I don't think so. The coin game is still the same, you know. It doesn't yeah. matter if you're quarters, semis, or finalists. Yeah. Only thing changes is if you are actually champion. And you want that trophy. <laughs> and you get an extra sticker capsule. Yeah, you get an extra sticker. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's a few benefits to that. <laughs> For you, Frozen. Lastly, just what would it mean for you? to win this major and to do it with face? I think there are still a lot of matches to, you know, play, but uh, I think obviously it will be a dream come true. I think it's a dream come true for every single player. I think, you know, this is why we wake up. This is why we grind every day. This is the, this is the trophy you want in your cabinet. Um, so yeah, I think it will be a definitely a dream come true. But, uh, you know, so far, the way I look at it, you know, there is three more games in front of us. I take one game by game. I don't want to get too, too ahead of ourselves, even though I know how good we can be. And I know this team is a title contender and no one should count them out at any point. But yeah, just game by game. But it would, uh, it would be a dream come true. I like the, what I'm feeling. I like what I'm seeing. You guys are in a good mood. Everything seems very relaxed. Everything seems pretty cool. Let's see how it goes when we get to the arena. Welcome back everyone to Copenhagen to the beautiful Royal Arena as we get into FaZe versus Spirit. A chance to get into that semi-final and go up against Vitality who look hot to trot. My name is Shox and I'm joined here at the desk by Moses and by Pimp. And uh, Pimp, I'm gonna give it to you first because you are from here, from yeah. Denmark. This must feel amazing. I mean, it, it does feel amazing. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to pretend that being inside the Royal <laughs> Arena at a major, at the very first CS2 major as well, is not a fantastic feeling for me. But also for the Danish people here, we had a couple of tournaments in Denmark, obviously with the Blast tournament. But to have a major hosted in Denmark, I think it was about goddamn time. And on a Thursday night, people showed up. Absolutely love it. Absolutely. Maybe we would have wished that there were a couple more Danes uh, in the server, but there is at least one today. Yeah, yeah. I guess it sucks to suck, you know? <laughs> <laughs> hey, I know, I know that feeling. I know yeah. where it comes from. But yeah, you're right. Kerrigan is like, the all important one of the greatest of all time in-game leaders. That's a figure you're obviously going to love having in front of you as a Danish crowd. And look, we know he's going to fire it up. He always kind of brings his crowd hype to different arenas, to different countries around the world. Now he gets to do it in his hometown. Absolutely. We have a little bit of time before we get into the specifics of this matchup. So I just want to touch on the bigger tournament structure overall. All. Um, Cloud9 just got a shellacking from Vitality. And uh, we were just talking in the green room about how it can all go so fast. You know, you prepare so much for this major. Then you make it through the RMR. You make it through the opening stage and the elimination stage. You have a bit of a break. Then you come here, you're Cloud9, and boom, it's all over. Yeah, you, you really feel, I mean, I passed a couple of them walking over to the desk and they, they just looked out, like knocked out on their feet, just kind of, you know, glazed over eyes, just not even realizing what had just happened. But I think on the other side of the coin, you got to say, for a vitality that looked shaky for a lot of the group stages and some of the circumstances they had to play through, this is where these kinds of teams like Vitality, like FaZe coming up, this is where they come alive. These pressure moments that they're experienced with on the stage at the biggest tournaments. I'm not going to lie, I wasn't even surprised by that outcome. You know, for, for Cloud9 to even get into the playoff, that was impressive in itself. I think we all called for roster changes coming into the tournament. We were all doubting whether or not they were going to be competitive at the opening stage, the elimination stage for that matter as well. And, you know, they made it into the playoff. I think that in itself, with what they had to work with, was a positive. But we're still looking at a team that is looking towards a roster change. It's a positive from the outside looking in. Yeah. If you're 
you're on the inside of Cloud9, there ain't nothing positive to talk about right now. Well, maybe there is. We'll see. I don't think so either. But Pala was able to catch up with Boomic after that, so let's listen. Boomich, commiserations, you are now out of the major. Uh, do you think you were as prepared as possible for this team vitality that you just faced? Uh, you know, the feelings was on second map, like they have the better preparation for today, but still, uh, I'm happy to result to the playoffs, the first uh, CS2 major, and I think this is uh, okay for myself because I'm back not a long time, but uh, still, they was just better team today, and uh, I have no feelings right now. Talking about making top eight, do you feel you beat expectations? And in that sense, that's a positive to take away for you in Cloud9. Yeah, of course. Uh, then we was qualified for the playoffs. I said like a lot of analytics and community talking shit about us. Uh, we understand this and, uh, you know, we just want to do our best like as uh, as we wish. <laughs> uh, like in first interview when I was talking with Banks, uh, I was trying to tell, I just want to enjoy this tournament and uh, it was really great uh, arena, great crowd and uh, it was the best feelings. Like we lost 13-2 but still you can see a smile on my face so it's okay and thank you everyone who was supporting us. Bumich, final two questions then. Going forward, do you see a bright future for you in this Cloud9 roster? Uh, we will see, we will see of course uh, next tournament soon so I think we just need to chill some days and go to the next tournament. Bumic, thank you for your time. Is there anything else that you'd like to say to the fans watching at home? Thank you guys for support. We was trying our best and uh, I think this is the legendary moment, the first CS2 major. Just watch next matches and thank you. Thank you so much for that, Paula. Uh, he is right, what Paula said. Boomich gave a very, very similar interview to Banks at the beginning of the elimination, uh, elimination stage, rather about taking it game to game, etc. But I think you've kind of said it all, right? Uh, if it was the goal to get to the playoffs, that is great, but you were still left wanting. I mean, if you're a Counter-Strike fan, I think you're happy that Cloud9 lost in the sense that the worst possible thing that could have happened to them was them going into a semifinal, them thinking, nah, we don't need a roster change, we don't need an AWP player. It would be kind of like a, a faking a disguise for that, you know? So so I think they did themselves a favor, at least from an outside perspective, okay. realizing that, listen, there's a lot of talent within this team. We made it to a major playoff. We made it to top eight, given that our roster is not as good as it's supposed to be. We don't have the role that we need with the AWP as well. There's still an awful lot of skill within this lineup. They just need that one brick to fall into place. Yeah, maybe. May I mean, look, you got to give credit to Boomich of coming into this team and, and doing a really good job with Shiro's departure of kind of averting complete disaster. And I think a lot of credit goes towards him as an in-game leader in that, in that position. But I, I think it kind of says it all that it was it was very like whether he's putting out a face or not just like we were happy to be here You know, we, we kind of got to the playoffs. That's cool for me I'm kind of back in business, but there were no real expectations of moving on. Oh, we are left wanting for vitality though Maybe quickly. Wow. What a performance coming in here now uh, We talked so much about a stacked bracket like they even made it more stacked with the way they played him yeah, they played good. You know, they played good, solid Counter-Strike. I think first map was a bit shaky for the standards of Vitality, but that's okay. Uh, maybe a bit of nerves coming into it as well. You gotta play your way into the game. Second map, there was no doubt that they were the better team. And I think we've all forgotten how good Vitality is. Felt like coming into this tournament, we're all looking towards didn't, Spirit. Don't worry. Obviously, he's been he's been honing down on it, but we're looking to Spirit. We're looking to Face, obviously, with Kerrigan taking the stage. But Vitality have been the best team in CS2 together with Face for the vast majority of time. So I think we uh, we can't count them out, and I think they're only gonna get better playing on the stage. Well, let's be honest. Like Vitality looked like ass in the, in the group stage. They they looked like nothing. They looked like a shadow of themselves. And I mean, there were circumstances, right? We had the sickness at Zaiwu. We had Apex talking time and time again that they didn't feel coordinated. Good to see Zaiwu on map one. Good to see Flamesy continue dominating Anubis. And good to see that those favorites can recover when it gets to the stage. And I think we're looking at FaZe through that lens specifically. They're up versus Spirit. I'm so hyped about this matchup specifically. Just because of the promise what it could be if, hopefully, FaZe has found solutions. Because we got to think back to Katowice. But this time we're in the Royal Arena, Moses. Yeah, I mean, but this is this is the point with FaZe that we just touched on with Vitality. A team like that, ranked number one at the moment, although I test probably wouldn't suggest the same thing. But throughout this team's, this core's existence together, competing together, they get better through group stages. This is a team that's always been able to kind of hit the snooze button through those group stages, show up onto the stage into the playoffs. Now, it obviously doesn't look like that against Spirit, who had an absolutely dominant run back at Katowice, played five times 
times, five maps. They've beat him all five times, all five maps. That's that incredible, like, not just career tournament from Donk, it's also basically like an industry tournament from Donk. Like, nobody does that the way that he did it in Katowice. They don't have it quite yet, that same level out of him here so far, but they've got other players stepping up. And yeah, FaZe have to find a solution, but they've got plenty of tape to review. They got plenty of tape to review, and as you said, it is a team that is getting significantly better when the stakes get higher, especially inside an arena like this. You cannot discredit the fact that Kerrigan is also playing at home soil. He's a guy that really loves to play with the crowd, motivate his teammates as well. Having a major on Danny's home soil for Kerrigan as well is a massive motivation. And he's shown me time and time again, he's shown all of us time and time again throughout the past 10 years, that when he's motivated, he is arguably one of the best in-game leaders in the world. Can Chopper match up with Kerrigan on a stage like this? Well, we're about to see. Yeah, I mean, he did it in Katowice. That was a pretty big one as well. I think it's like, it's so difficult because you've kind of seen this in similar situations already. Mm -hmm. And yes, you can point to the experience factor, but to me, that is null and void already because of what they have shown. I think the difference of level between the two teams that we've seen at the major so far is staggering. That's my issue. Right? Okay. Spirit have looked fantastic so far in the group states. I know they lost one map against Navi on Nuke, I believe that was. It was a double overtime. Jail having the game of his life, dropping 40 kills. Apart from that, Spirit have looked flawless so final tournament. Whereas for FaZe, we were wondering whether or not they were even going to make the playoff. Kerrigan was in a position where he was one loss away from not getting to play in front of this crowd. So, yes, the level of gameplay that we've seen so far from FaZe has not been great at all, but I have full faith, full trust that we're going to see a better version of FaZe inside this arena. Oh, you absolutely should. And I mean, when you talk about Kerrigan, just, just the calling that he can bust out in pressure situations, the way he kind of can call on the fly and he can work magic in, in, those, in, in these scenarios on these stages. I don't care about anything outside the server. I don't think Kerrigan needs Needs any kind of motivational speech. I don't think he needs a big speech for this team. Let's remember, they got embarrassed in Katowice. If not for the gameplay, if just for the fact that remember Kerrigan's goal was to win a trophy in Katowice for Neo standing behind him. Now you have the same kind of motivation, winning a, a trophy for, for Kerrigan's home crowd in Denmark. I don't think he needs any speeches. I don't think he needs any excitement built up for him. No, and he has such a trophy case already. You know, he's already one of the very best there will ever be. But there is that little voice in your head that says, it is a major in Copenhagen. This is it. When is this going to ever happen again? Again, can I do it now and can I rally? And I think that is so cool in terms of the motivations that are going into this matchup. And he has the, he has the right mindset for it as well. I think, I, I think honestly, Kerrigan doesn't give, give a damn that there's trophies in Copenhagen. I don't think he cares whatsoever. You could see him in the interview as well. If you're not first, you might as well be last place. He doesn't care about second, he doesn't care about quarterfinals, and he's got, a, he's got a really tough road to get there, and I think he's focused so much on Spirit right now. And let's fo uh, focus on the counterpart then in Chopper. Such a long road it has been for him. Um, he said to in an interview to HLTV, Yes, there's been other teams that have come knocking on my door, but I wanted to do it myself with something that I believed in. And he's done that time and time again with newer players, and now he's arguably has the best crop to work with. Yeah, there's no denying that Chopper has found an awful lot of success with what he's had to work with down the years. And I think the, the big difference now is that he have all the tools in the toolbox to make it work. You got Shiro into a lineup. You got arguably the greatest talent in Counter-Strike as of right now with Dunk on the lineup as well. Sontix coming out of nowhere playing fantastic anchor roles. And when you're Magics, he's been around for quite some time as well. So if you're Chubba, you've shown time and time again that you're a great in-game leader, you've been in major playoffs before with lineups where you look at the firepower, didn't really justify getting him so far, so we know his qualities. Now finally have all the tools in the toolbox where he can go in here inside this arena and own a guy like Kerry. I mean, if you look at Spirit and Katowice, that, that tournament was basically sending out the signal that the addition of Shiro is going to make this team an immediate contender, that they're actually here to fight, they're here for trophies, they're here to establish themselves as the best team in the world. The major is about the actually taking that crown away and they've got to go through phase they've got to go through vitality if they make it through phase to get there but that's the difference between these two tournaments Katowice sent the signal to the entire scene spirits here they're as strong as we thought now let's see them take the crown away and let's talk about what JL said when we had him on the desk yep. of course at the end of uh, Navi qualifying he said I don't think it's going to be the same game I think in playing them it didn't feel as oppressive as usual uh, and maybe it will be completely different because of all the tape so what do you think about this quote I don't buy into it at all maybe <laughs> maybe <laughs> Maybe for Navi, it didn't feel that difficult. It's also Navi who've been able to take maps off Spirit. Yeah. They did it in Katowice. They did it here at this tournament on Nuke. Maybe for Jail, it feels comfortable. He did drop 40 kills 40 in a kills, double yeah, overtime uh... game against Spirit on Nuke for them to win it. So maybe Navi have something when it comes to playing against Team Spirit. I think if you're Kerrigan, if you're Face, you have the uttermost respect for what Spirit has done so far. I don't really buy into that. I think Spirit have played by far the best Counter-Strike we've seen in 2024. I, I, buy, I actually buy into it completely. I actually yeah. think he's dead on. For, the, for players that play against this team, I, I think 
there is that kind of shock factor back in mm -hmm. Poland. I think there was that like, oh my God, how, how do we actually kill Donk? How is he doing this? How do we stop this team when you have a player at this caliber? And I think coming into this event when teams have gotten that experience of playing against them, gotten that experience of how they make their moves, I think players can adapt. I think today's professional players are going to find tricks, going to find details they can exploit. We saw Navi do it. Why can't Kerrigan? Why can't FaZe? They arguably have a better team from top to bottom. I guess it all comes down to the simple fact uh, of CS, which is can you hit your shots better than they can? And that is where the cookie often crumbles when you play Spirit. Maus is the only ones that have done it in a series this year. So can you put your faith in the fact you say they're better top to bottom? that they outfrag them every single round that is needed in order to get them to the semifinal today. Yeah, I think they can. I, I think you're going to have to, I mean, you're going to have to buy into the if statement, right? If you're going to yeah. put faith in phase in this series, you're going to have to take a look at the history overall okay. and watch the way that this team historically has always been pressure you know, mounts and, and we rise to it. We actually step up to that pressure. We don't crumble, we don't give up. You have to remember all those tournaments, they've had those incredible comebacks in back in the day. And, and you have to say, we're gonna see a different phase on this stage than we did in the group stage. You kind of have to believe all those if statements. And they've shown us, I think, enough of a body of work to put faith in that. That's my issue. There's too many ifs, right? There's too many if, buts, and maybes. There's also a situation with Rubs, who came into CS2 and played absolutely fantastic counter -thank. I think we all praised him as being one of the best rifles out there to begin with. He's dropped a little bit in level. I'm not saying Rubs is not a great Counter-Strike player anymore, but he's dropped just a tiny bit in level. You see the difference right here from 23 to 24. A 0.07 rating in that regard is a lot for a star player like Rubs, especially when you're going up against Donk. So my issue with face is, yes, they can do it. Maybe there's a couple of ifs as well, but the issue is who is going to match Donk on the server? Who's going to match Shiro on the server? They have no one to play out against him. Uh, maybe it will be Frozen. Rain did also say in an interview uh, that when Frozen came in, he got a lot of the positions that Robs had. He had to step into that role and be a star for that team as well, which is shared, which could, of course, explain the fact that, you know, you, you can't frag more people than there are in the server, right? So do you think they're kind of, I don't want to say limping, but they're suffering from that? Maybe a little bit, you know, I think Frozen came in to face and played good counter so like we were all impressed with how he debuted with the lineup. Maybe he stagnated a little bit, it's still too too soon for me to, to have any judgment on that. I think, however, if they want to beat Spirit today, Frozen needs to step it up, Frozen needs to be on the server. He's supposed to be a star player, he's supposed to replace Twist, a guy you know sure. very well. Yeah. So without Frozen, there's going to be no face victory. Yeah, I think there's. I think it's a little bit of a trap. I don't think you can have one player rise to the occasion. I think if you look at someone like Rain, he needs to have a good game, but top to bottom, FaZe needs to be able to match up against, not Donk, I don't care about Donk. He has to match against Shiro. He has to match against Zontix and Magix, who are all having incredible tournaments overshadowed by Donk. I'm glad you started to bring it up. We'll get into that in a second. But we do have Paula standing by on the floor with a special guest. I absolutely do have a very special guest shock. So on one side of the stage, we have Team Spirit. And then on the other, we have FaZe, one of the final teams that has one of our two Danish Counter-Strike players remaining. And that player, he goes by the name of Kerrigan. And stood by me, I have Carlsten, Kerrigan's father, Anderson. Carlsten, a pleasure to have you here and see you again. Two simple questions. What's it like to have a major here in Copenhagen? It's really amazing. And it's also the first major in the new CS2. So it, it will be making history here. No? And uh, have a son who have played 1-6, CSGO, and now CS2. And maybe, I think, if they can defeat the Spirit today, it might succeed to make the radio, but it would be a tough game. Everyone in here, do you think FaZe can do it? <laughs> and the final question, Carsten, what's it like for you to see your son, your Danish son, playing on this Danish stage in the capital of Denmark? Actually, he's half German. No? My wife is German, but... Uh, we live in Denmark, so we consider us Danish. It's uh, a privilege. And uh, I'm nervous every time. And here in the Royal Arena, he had never won anything, so it would be so nice if it succeeded. No? It would be so nice and so special. Carsten, thank you 
for your time. Everybody in here, give it up for Carlston, Carrigan's father, Anderson! Shot to the desk, back to you. Thank you so much. I love that we got that check-in, doing a lot of our storytelling for us as well. Also, getting so much support from your father. Must be nice. Don't know what it's like, but uh, <laughs> it's great. <laughs> there we go. Him. Also making sure he doesn't piss off the, the German fans uh, of Kerrigan. There we so. go. He's actually a bit of a living legend in Denmark as well. Yeah. He's been supporting Kerrigan for a long, long time. Whatever Kerrigan teams has played for, they also always get invited into his home. He's going to load up the barbecue for them. He's going to invite them into his house. And oh, yeah. he's making them part of the family. Have so. you personally experienced it? Uh, no, because we kicked Kerrigan from the time they were well, playing with him, oh. so I don't think we were in good standing back then. No barbecues for Pip. Nope. nope. Um, but uh, he touched on a couple of things there that are, are really cool. Also saying, like, inside the Royal Arena, it really hasn't clicked for Finn yet, Moses, right? So that kind of goes back into the idea of the motivation into this match specifically. Yeah, I mean, that, that is, the, it, it always is, is I mean, that kind of concept of wanting to win on home soil. And it's, it's a fun, again, it's a fun romantic storyline from the outside, but I, but I, you know, if you're someone like Kerrigan, who's been in the scene for this long, his father even mentioned it, 1.6, CSGO obviously, now CS2, who's been playing forever, I don't think that's as big of a factor as we think. I don't believe you. I don't believe you at all. It's just trophy. It's about the trophies. The location, it's cool. It's a nice little cherry on top, but it's about the trophy above all I think the else. cherry's, like, not small. Okay? Okay, a big Don't cherry. clip that. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> I understand where you're coming from. You know, you, you don't get in, in Kerrigan's position without being a serial winner. Yeah. At that yeah. point, it doesn't matter where you win. We saw how devastated he was in, in Katowice when he didn't get that trophy, when he sure. lost to Team Spirit. That wasn't on home soil. But I also will say, you know, I, I don't buy fully into it. Of course, Kerrigan on home soil won a win. We all remember what happened when Heroic lifted the trophy. Yeah. And like, Kerrigan was smashing the states and, you know, almost killing everyone around him, you know, and, and giving out hawks and the screens and everything was, was flying all over the place. If you're a Danish person, you want to win inside the Royal Arena. There's no Half doubt Danish. about it. Half Danish, sorry. Half Danish, okay, we got it, the technicalities. Uh, also touching on the fact, yeah, you know, um, now in CS2, right, going through the different versions of Counter-Strike, giving so much of his life to this game, up versus a flock and a, and a, a flock of players that are very, very new and that come into CS2, but I think a different kind of approach. I mean, that also touches on just like a grander look at this game of like the old guard versus versus the new guard coming in, the spirit team that has so many young stars, you know, Shiro kind of really emerging during the online era, Donk obviously new, Zontix obviously new, um, Magic's been, Chopper been around for a bit and I've seen things, but then you have FaZe and, and that's a question is, th we're going to see so much of it, we're going to see so much transition as CS2 gets deeper and deeper, we get more time with it of the players who are so good in CS2 or CSGO, can they keep it up? Can they adapt? Can they keep up with the young players who are grinding this game over and over, where instead you're trying to adapt your skills to a new game? I think that's the question, right? Can FaZe apply enough pressure for Spirit to show weakness? That's what we want to see. Obviously, we're a little bit biased by what we've seen in 24 from Spirit. It's been absolutely fantastic. The Armour one was great. Obviously, at Katowice, they were dominating. What happens if FaZe win the first map? What happens if Spirit all of a sudden starts doubting himself? You said it yourself. They're relatively new to it. As long as Shiro has been around, he hasn't played a lot of Grand Finals or a lot of majors on big stages. He's had a habit of not qualifying for them within Cloud9 as well. So we are looking at a team that, yes, in you know, in, in time and essence right now, they are fantastic. They played good Counter-Strike. But what happens if I face, sorry, can apply pressure, win the first map, maybe win the second map, go into a third, maybe Spirit could crumble. We've only seen them play well at one LAN tournament. That was Katowice, and they didn't get pressure at all. Okay, talk a bit more about the, the Oppers then to me. Uh, different styles, it seems, coming in, right, Pim? Yeah, very different styles. Obviously, Jason, you know Brokey pretty uh -huh. well. He's, uh, he's a guy yeah. that is flying around all over the place, whereas for Shiro, a little bit more stable, a little more defensive. You can rely on Shiro, where Brokey, he shows up once in a while. Well, I mean, I also, Brokey, just in terms of like a round-to-round -round basis, is, is mm -hmm. the guy who thrives under chaos when, when things are crumbling around him. And I think more, more, even more so than Shiro, thinking of Shiro like, yeah, stable opera, his clutches are incredible. For Brokey, equally has some amazing clutches under his belt, but also he's a guy that just turns rounds on its head. He knows how to hunt down impactful frags, and it's such a beautiful benefit for FaZe to have him playing the way he did in the group stage, because as much as FaZe looked awful throughout the group stage, Brokey was the one shining spot. If he keeps that up, I mean, in terms of an op battle, I think Brokey he's going to dictate a lot in this series. I think that's a good point, and I think he's a, a major win condition for FaZe as well. You remember a lot of the finals FaZe have played. You remember a lot of the great comebacks they played. They always start from a brokey clutch, you know, a 1v2, yep. a 1v3, where you said it yourself, he thrives in chaos. So again, for FaZe, it's all about applying pressure to Team Spirit. Let's have a good game. Let's have a pressured game. Let's get into the other counters, right? Because that's when brokey is succeeding. And in the same vein, like you said, if FaZe can apply that pressure and maybe make Spirit drop that first map, we have a different series. There's also uh, the other side of that, right? If Spirit come again and step onto the server the way they did back in that final and they don't drop the ball 
at all, and then it could be detrimental. Look, I, I, don't, I don't want to apply the story of, like, can they actually withstand the pressure, because we did that all during Pol Poland, and they rose to the occasion each and every time. I don't give them a pass for the potential inexperience of guys like Donk and like Zontix. They've already shown us what they can do at one of the S-tier tournaments that we have in the circuit. This is, again, I'll reiterate, this is about Team Spirit actually taking the crown away from the phases, from the vitalities as the best teams in the world, and establish themselves as a team that can be the best in CS2. And you don't get passes when you have this opportunity, because they don't come around. And if you look at this series, complete domination from Spirit, complete domination from Donk. I mean, th if you're phase, you're embarrassed. That, that's, that's, a, that's a game you have to recover from. It was also a Donk putting up a 1.70 rating at IM Katowice. Yeah, which, which rarely happens. Rarely, it never happens, not at that level. I think level. Nico at New York in like 2016 or 2017. Something like that's that. That's the only other time we've seen a rating. And I think it was three or four maps less than Donk played throughout Katowice as well. So that was absolutely fantastic. And as you saw right here, phase get, get close. 13 to 11 on one map, 13 to 9 on a map as well. We have seen Donk play so far. Obviously, he's in a great shape, but he's not at a 1.7 shape right now. So I think the playing field is evened out just a little bit in that regard. I know you did request uh, the stats specifically from Donk. I don't know exactly what time period that you're looking at, but what are you trying to show us with his numbers? Well, it's just his stats from the LAN events that he's played so far. He's, sure. he's relatively new to the event, you know, relatively new to playing on LAN, but every single time he shows up at a LAN, he's owning it. Look at this. To put up a 1.7 rating at Katowice is ridiculous. 1.64 at the Katowice play in. Even some of the smaller tournaments he's played out there, he's just been owning it so far. We're talking about a dunk that is maybe cooled off a little bit at a 1.43 rating at the major elimination states. It is absolutely <laughs> ridiculous. Yeah, ice cold that. Yeah, that's, that's beastly. But I mean, again, <laughs> I, think, I think there's a trap that's being set. I think if you focus as a team, if you're phase, if you're someone going up against this team, it is a trap to think that you can only focus on Donk. Yeah, 100%. We've, we've seen Na Navi in this tournament kind of have some ideas how he played. Alexi B was able to counter him outside on Nuke a couple of times in their, in their games in the, in, the, uh, in the elimination stage. But I mean, the dangerous thing about Spirit isn't just Donk. It's the fact that Shiro is, is equaling him at this tournament so far. He's got the same exact rating as Donk at the moment does. They're, they're tied for third so far in the event in terms of their rating. Zon is an absolute beast and he plays from crit critical positions as an anchor like you have a full team and that's where when you look at this it's like if you focus so much and if you think the key to stopping this team is slowing down donk and stopping donk you're gonna lose nah. you're gonna overlook so much we tried that before yeah <laughs> and it didn't really work i see banks down there meaning we're getting closer to the introduction of the teams on stage as counter-strike fans how excited are you and uh, what does the series have to give you in order to to give you the maximum excitement well i just want to see close maps i want to see a close game i also do think that we're going to find the winner of the major between these two teams if FaZe were to beat him, I Ooh. think they can go all the way, win the entire thing. And for Spirit, obviously, if they were to win the game, they can go all the way and win as well. So for my money, this is a game you want to watch if you want to see who's winning the major. I want, I want to see, I want to see obviously, Spirit tested, as you mentioned, putting pressure on him. I want to see Kerrigan call some very, very good rounds. I want to see Rain step up. I think if he hasn't stepped up from his level in the elimination stage, FaZe is in some trouble. And he is one of, like, the eternal big stage players um, along those lines. I, I think otherwise, you're going to look over at Spirit and, uh, yeah, Donk can be playing well. I want to see Zontix having a great game. I just want to see the way that FaZe, if they get under trouble, I think Kerrigan can work them out of it. I'm not sure if Chopper can do the same. He wants it all? He wants it all. I, I want it all as well. I'd love to see that. I hope we get it. And also, I hope we get to introduce our teams. And Banks is ready to do just that. Royal Arena, how are we feeling? Now, this is a clash of the number one and number two teams in the world already in our quarterfinals. But I want to feel which side are we going on here? Do we have some Spirit fans in the house? And what about FaZe Clan? Well, no matter what you say, we heard the same noise in Katowice when our first team took to the stage. They defied the odds and they had a dominant performance. They came through and they were not pressured by the stage. They held their own the entire way. And they're looking to do that again. Some people say they're the favorites for the whole major. The question is, can they do it on the biggest stage of their careers and of their lives? The Dragons are here. It's Team Spirit!
and their opponents, which you guys have already showed me, are the fan favorites in this one. They are the most consistent team in Counter-Strike right now, and they have a point to prove. Their major journey did have some struggles, but they came through and they made it to the playoffs. This team is a team that is built to win championships. This is a team that steps up when it matters most, and they say they bring their best when they hit this stage. We say it, and we see it over and over again, but now they must do it against their toughest test yet. Royal Arena, let me hear you for FaZe Clan! Zondix, come join me over here. Carrigan, you come on over as well. Zondix, first ever major, first time hitting the playoffs, and you guys, it seems like you're the favorites to win it, but you always say in interviews, you're playing a game by game. Do you do this just to take that pressure off and have a good mentality in these games? I don't care if this is a major or anything. I think, uh, and I think any player thinks that if you just play your best game, you're most likely to win. So if face play their best, maybe they will win. If we play our best, we will win. That's it. Okay, but where's your confidence at? Because you've beaten these guys two times before, also on stage to lift the trophy before. Yeah, of course, we haven't lost a map to them, but I don't think that matters because, uh, you know, it's, it's major. Anything can happen. It's not even best of five. Anything can happen here. And that's the beauty of the major as well. But what would it mean to you personally to be able to win again here and go on to win the whole major? Of course, uh, I enjoy playing on a big stage more than uh, online. And of course, I would like to be in a major, that, uh, anything that matters to me. I just, I just want to win. I like it. There we go. We're getting some bright words from you. Carrigan. Well, we know they love you and you're back in the Royal Arena once again. Feel like home? Yes, I think it feels like home, right guys? Now one thing you've always been amazing at is getting the crowd on your side, but I don't think it will be hard at this time. But you told me, not coming in as the favorites, it changes things for you. So what is the feeling in the team right now? I think we're feeling good. We are going go again, somebody wants to take the first place from us. I think this game determines a lot right now. Um, how the lens goes is going to go forward. I think it's going to be a fantastic game. And I need everyone to shout in here and just cheer for great CS. That's what I need today. And I'm sure they will. But I have to ask you, you're coming into this, right? And yes, you're facing off against Spirit again. But it's been struggles against them. Have you been able to see anything different? Have you been able to change anything to make it a different result this time? I think everybody knows that you learn the most when you lose. That's where you need to show great adaptability. And um, I think coming to this best of three, we know what we did wrong. We know what we need to do good. Now it's all about doing the perfect game plan. And if you don't do that, we're not going to win. But I know if you play like FaZe Clan, we can win every team in the world. And that's what it's all about. Good luck, have fun, guys. The stage is set, and it definitely sounds like the Royal Arena is ready. Are you ready for this? I want to hear every single one of you cheer, roar, and enjoy this moment. It's FaZe, take it on spirit.
unbelievable job, Banks, but they got to deal with us for a little bit more, so I feel like they'll feel hoodwinked after that one. Uh, there's a couple of things I want to pick up there. Uh, I love what... Um, what Kerrigan said there about looking at the bigger picture, about what this means in terms of if they, I mean, I'm reading between the lines, if Spirit beat them again, that then means, okay, maybe the mantle has shifted. But if FaZe are able to do it, then they are back maybe on a, a road back to an era. I think Jason has said it a couple of times, yeah. you know, you, you laid out the groundwork for it. You're not wrong saying that if Spirit were to win this game, they can't be crowned. Oh win the major for that matter as well. Of course, we crown them as the best team in the world, especially considering how well they played in 24. Whereas if FaZe were to beat them, I feel like it doesn't only open up the conversation for who's the best team in the world, it opens up the entire major. It also opens up the second bottom of the bracket. I think then, you know, EF, Na'Vi, you name it, the team from that one, Mouse, who's played fantastically well, they can also look at FaZe, Vitality, and say, we can beat them. The only team I feel is somewhat unbeatable right now is Spirit, so if FaZe can do that for the rest of the teams at the tournament, it opens up the landscape completely. Yeah, but it also signals to the rest of the landscape that that phase did show up on the stage in that scary level of phase, the one that Kerrigan's referencing. You asked me what I wanted before we kind of went to that interview. I waffled a little bit, but really what I want to see is that phase that we all expect to show up here in the quarterfinals, that phase that has shown they are the best team in the world time and time again, because win or lose, if we get that phase, this game's going to be absolute fire. Yeah, I want to see that phase clan show up as we get into the map, Fido, in just a second. In terms of the crowd, I talked to Constantine from Spirit a little bit, and I asked him, you know, you, there are against you in the arena and he says doesn't we don't care it started with uh, magics and chopper and Halley back in rio mm. when uh, there was kind of an unfortunate event and everyone started booing us it kept going in katowice they really don't care uh, and that's good because that means it doesn't influence their counter strike and that means that on the other side perhaps we're going to see a reinvigorated phase that does have everyone behind them if anything you can use that energy against you we've seen that with heroic as well you know traveling the world it was always the world against heroic kdm was very great at honing that energy and making it listen guys it's everyone against us. If uh, Spirit can do the same thing, maybe it's even a positive for them. I don't think, I don't think even Spirit probably is honing in on that too much. I, nah. Maybe they are, but I think on the other hand, they're just saying, we're supremely confident. Who the hell cares? Another game for us. Map Veto is kind of interesting. Kind of, kind of the conversation is, what does FaZe float the Veto of Vertigo and they do it? Oh, yep. that is interesting, right? So Vertigo is for the picking. It's not going to happen. Spirit likes to play Mirage. They're going to pick Mirage. So well done to, uh, I, to I, FaZe Clan. I never thought there would be any danger, really, because I, I don't, no. I mean, FaZe is Vertigo. They haven't played it since no, uh, November. It is going to be the third and oh. final map. Yeah, because if you're Spirit, you prepare for this. You prepare for the float. You pe prepare for the potential pick. And teams have kind of decided that Vertigo is maybe a little bit of a weakness uh, for Spirit. But they've now played it so many times since the RMR where we first saw that weakness. I think Spirit's going to be pretty strong. I love like that. that. I love that. It's a statement for Spirit as well. Because as you said, everyone saw it. Everyone saw Vertigo being as a bit, a bit of a weakness. Everyone was starting to pick into Vertigo against Team Spirit. We saw Mouse do it at the Arma as well. But they had three weeks to prepare Vertigo for this tournament. So what a way to pull it out. If we were to need a third map, I'm curious to see if Donk is still playing as the anchor on the B bomb side. I'm curious to see if Donk is still, you know, not the same Donk as he is on every other map when it comes to Vertigo. But it does require FaZe to push it to that third map. And that's going to be tough. What does your gut tell you? It's going to be tough with Mirage and Nuke specifically? Yeah, I think FaZe so far had looked great on, on Nuke at this specific tournament. They have played it twice against each other. Spirit won both times, but we did see Spirit lose to Na'Vi at this tournament. Yeah. And Kerrigan said it himself, you learn an awful lot when you lose against the team and then get to replay them once more. They've done that two times now on Nuke, so I hope to see a better face coming. Yeah, putting sock in the whole third time is the charm kind of a situation. Hopefully, hopefully. Yeah, I mean, that, that is kind of the thing. You, you have some chances to recover. You have some chances to look at these maps. And, and this also is going to be where you contend, you know, with this map, obviously, on Nuke. You're going to have Donk outside, but you also of Shiro and Zontix who are going to be extremely strong. And this is where, if you wanted to actually do a little bit more research, not into your own games, but you look at the way Navi was able to find ways to beat them, you look at ways Alexi was able to kind of neg uh, negate them outside and put a stop to their kind of initial plans on these maps, there's a real chance here. But this map's about, this match is about taking the crown away from FaZe. Absolutely. And looking at the bigger picture of this tournament, of this major, of the CS2 uh, scene in general, and I hope it is an unbelievable matchup and we get what we deserve when we take a look at Team Spirit versus phase for a spot in the semi-final with Sponge and Machine. All right then, Copenhagen, are you ready for some Counter-Strike? <laughs> T-Star for Team Spirit, phase Clan. Onto the CT side, and it's interesting that Carrigan expects this one to be a barn burner. The fact that he knows if they play FaZe Clan game, we kind of know 
the Spirit are a known quantity. If FaZe can match them, this could be one hell of a Counter-Strike game, Chad. Yeah, just a quick little tech pause. We'll get the hiccups out of the way. That'll give us a moment to marinate in the Royal Arena. Just a slight mic issue. No dramas. We've been here before. We've seen this story. It was just over a month ago in Katowice. It was a grand final. It was a best of five, and it was all spirits all the way. That was uh, Donk's coming out party, showing to the world, hey, you want to set more bars? I'll continue to leap and bound all over them. Plenty of ifs and buts have been labeled for this one. If FaZe can wake up on the stage, if sure. spirit will shrink under the pressure. Yeah. Nothing stopped them so far. No, and me and you were side by side in Katowice when the first shellacking happened. We had all these expectations for of grandiose grand finals, and it ended up kind of petering out into a one-sided slobber knocker. Yeah, Stop disbelief. Hurting them. It felt like uh, disbelief as map number three was unfolding, and they were just being absolutely destroyed on overpass. But we are starting on Mirage. Freeze time ticking down, and we can let you know what that means. We're about to get things underway. This Spirit roster played Mirage 11 times, lost it once, and that was to Maus at the RMR. So that was the only time they've lost a series this year without the caveat of stand-ins. So this is home turf for Spirit. It's a very heavy utility pistol, a call from Chopper out of the gates. It's like an A execute, you're gonna have one player over towards Ticket, that's Rain. Lowest rated player for FaZe so far, but major MVP once upon a time. He tends to be considered a big game player. Well, no bigger game than this. Singular limb, MR12, best of three for all the marbles for a semi-final. Here comes the utility. Rain missing off. Couple of shots there. They're taking the sight, seizing it as Don does manage to find the head of two. Good clicks, but there's Rain and Brokey. Three versus three, tips the scales further with Shiro. Broken ahead of the smoke, had a chance, but it's Chopper straight to his head. And Carrigan in a 1v3. The captain's clutch on the captain's stage, the Dane with it all to do. First, second, can't connect the dots. Zontix will take him down. And that safe bearer hand, Zontix, starting off with some impact, silencing the leader before it can get out of control. It's got to feel good when you've had so much time to kind of stew on it, when you've had so much of a time between your last game and this one. Just thinking, you know, in your head, as an IGL, I'm sure Chopper's been going, how do I open Mirage? What's the pistol call? How do we start as we mean to go on? And it, well, it starts strong. Yeah, that's what they're looking for. And a big conversation, obviously, by the desk and by the people at home, and I'm sure by many Counter-Strike fans in the arena, Vertigo. It's been said that it's a spirit weakness. Well, you know, Spirit have been playing good teams on Vertigo. It's not like they've been losing to teams who have it as their perma ban. And, well, it is FaZe's perma ban. They haven't even played it with Frozen, and I say, that because, well, once upon a time, FaZe is the type of team to pull it out as a strange pick or leave it in the veto. We saw it against Ents when they were able to win Pro That's League, right. pick themselves up the Grand Slam. So you know they're able to pull it out when necessary. And Spirit are the ones who chose to punish with that. They've removed Ancient and the final ban within the veto. Take us to Vertigo as the third and decider. And that's if we need to get there. I messaged you, Chad. I said, what are the chances of Vertigo? And you said, if FaZe pick it, it's a sign of them already being weak. Yeah, I, I thought it's a sign of no confidence. It's right. like, well, we, we can't beat them on any of the maps that we actually play. We have to go for a bogey map. But floating it to the third and having Spirit pick it, what does that do to them to the the lay of the land? Well, this is the thing. Would Spirit have been prepping for it? They must have known it, it could have been a possibility. Oh, but sure. how much time would they put into it? It's one of those games where they go, we'll just play our game yeah. right, and hope that it stands up to the test. So this is where FaZe, if they knew that it was going to go through as the third or it was an option, you'd be hoping they prepped heavy to try and find some of those hiccups that other teams have been able to identify in the game. Jacob now, raised yeah. the point about Bianca Donk. I'm, I wouldn't be surprised if he sticks around on that. We'll find out, of course, if it's required. I, I think we heard from Zontix as well in an interview earlier in the event say they don't even think Vertigo is a weakness for them. No. Well, uh, back in with another tech issue. And there's some Donk fans. Oh, wow, that's impressive. Beautiful bit of artwork there. Hand drawn, but I'm not sure with yeah. the hand in the cast. Uh, no, but beautiful. That's the right or the left. Very impressive. Got the whole squad there. I can see a magic to chop up. There is no end to Counter Strike fans' creativity. I mean, I don't, I'm not saying I get all of them. No, I don't know what that no, is. No, I don't know what that is. No. Maybe, it's a, maybe it's their pal. It could be, their yeah. buddy. Shout out. I saw a nice crochet FaZe Clan logo. Really? In the lobby. Yeah, very impressive. Okay. 
we had uh, at the start of the day Richard doing a bit of a temperature check. Checking in on G2, checking in on a Hooksy. Yeah, it didn't actually feel like there was many Hooksy fans in the venue at all. Oh man, I don't know. That yeah. VP win seems to be a loss for G2 and uh, the second Dane that we have uh, donning the arena tomorrow. Yeah, that is a weird twist and turn. I wasn't expecting uh, here in uh, Copenhagen. Well, oh, there was almost a guarantee that Hooks would be getting a lot of love here. But for a Thursday, I have to say, Royal Arena already got a good amount of bums in seats. We've got drums in seats, and we've got round two ready to get back underway. He knows it isn't a full force flash on Faye. It's just going to be a couple of flashes on Carrigan. Drops into a P250. The rest just with the USP. So how much damage can Faze do in round number two? Carrigan with the flashes at the ready. Zontic's having a look. Backs off immediately. Mid control, sprawled towards the top mid, mid box is Chopper. Has the support of Shiro, having a very good event is Shiro. And over towards the B-Apps, Magix now through the underpass, a big diligent. Want to identify first and foremost, is it a phase force? Is it a phase eco? Shouldn't be too many dramas in this unless it's a perfect flash and a fight from phase. Yeah, it's a cool idea. It's something. Yeah, it's better than nothing. Carrigan had options if they were quick and there goes the first flash. They'll try and seize ramp control, but Chopper's going to be picturing in nicely. Hang on! With a double dink out of Ray, that USP has done more than they were expecting. Rain's even taken a heavy chunk out of Magics as well. Don, whoa, he didn't clear his corners! They're both low. They are both low. There is a world where Rob's can do this. Quiet this tournament. Question marks around Rob's. Where has he been? He's a smart cookie, is Rob's, and for now, taking advantage of the CT side, repositioning behind his smoke. Yeah, has the bomb on his side of the fence. Shiro, ready for the round the world maneuver while the smoke is up. So gonna allow this one to subside, about 35 seconds left on the clock. It's gonna have to be a great trade for the two of them here, and this is difficult with Rops' position. Could this, be round number two for FaZe. This would be crazy, a full economical, a couple of flashes from Karakun. There's such good trade potential, but Rops, he knows they're low. Rain hit some absolutely fantastic. Oh, they got the pump. Oh, they did. They, they the just stuck it away. away. Just like that. <laughs> he was looking for the tips of their toes, and it's still not a guarantee. Shiro hears it, and down he goes. Saved by Shiro. Well handled with poise and grace from Spirit. The smoke comes up. They don't rush the issue. They allow it to subside. They creep in quietly, carefully, and rip that bomb under the nose of Rops. That's beautiful. <laughs> yeah, no, it really could have gone wrong. In my world, I was seeing that Galil, just one little spray, brrr, both gone. They were so low, so suspicious acceptable to that Galil spray. I loved his elevated angle, but yeah, restraint. It works out for Spirit, and what was supposed to just be a nice little stroll in the park got a bit scary, but a 2-0 nonetheless. Or into the guns, Brokey has his primary weapon of the AWP out to play. Brokey's gonna take that towards B, see if he can deal with Zontix and Donk. Powerful angle, this one. He's actually chosen to elevate further. Plenty of business on the other side, and if they wanted to bully Carrigan, well, they've got to deal with the big green. Perhaps targeting Carrigan's sight. This is Brokey. It is a monster shot, and he delivers. Strong start for phase into the guns. Brokey's up revealed. Does that curtail the commit? I don't think it does. No, well, if you can still land your utility on point, the AWP would have a difficult time. Silent crawl up cap from Chopper. There's another one from Brokey. Stunning work on the Donk. Chopper's applying pressure. He's been loud about this. Garrigan ready. Brokey still locking down the side. Carrigan has his Chopper unaware. One back from Shiro, but this round is done, folks. Shiro up against the world. One versus four. A bomb plant would go a long way, but Rob's on site. Not going to allow that. Carrigan down. Picks it up. That's FaZe Clan round on the board early. Yeah, playing ahead of the execute there, the AWP finding clear impact from Brokey. And there's the rain support in the crowd, the family. Alongside to see if they can succeed once more in this FaZe jersey. Brokey's opening onto Zontix and then onto Donk, the two major rookies. First major, first playoff and coming in as the favorites. But all that damage they took in round number two has echoes of effect. Donk with an AK, pistol upgrades with some util for the rest of Team Spirit. Working on the mid control and seeing if they can get Donk started. Three kills so far. 
Chopper. Rising to the top of the world ranks of in-game leaders. A lot of discussion about him and what he's been able to achieve. Flubbed run boost. That doesn't look pretty. Yeah. Doesn't cost them too much, but they put a lot of uh, investment into Donk on the rifle. Pretty standard anti-eco or anti-force setup from FaZe. They're not playing aggressively window and connected to give away rifles. They're more sight-centric. Oh. Considerable damage from the HE onto Zontix. Rain unloads his magazine, and it's just shy of this crawl up cap. Made on the smoke, it's a little late. Maybe, oh yeah, he does spot one. Good idea as to where they're going, what their objective is. Up short, Carrigan and Frozen. Brokey shifted over. There's three here to defend for FaZe. Donk, given this rifle for a reason, spotted out and deleted his Carrigan in combination and sending them right back to spawn. Five alive for FaZe. Tidy rounds, very important. Really, with the pistol loss and the second round being so competitive with these two on the trot, confident counter-strike from FaZe. Heard from Carrigan in the pre-game interview saying if they play like FaZe Clan, something that seems to have been lacking, you know, not taking those peaks, not going for those wider swings, not backing their aim, which has been their brand. It's the superstars, it's the rock stars. And the rock star, you know, I've got my eyes on him. Want to see if Robin Gould's got it in him. Some very uncharacteristic um, postings of ratings in this tournament so far. Yeah, desk highlighted. Well, uh, it's going to be Glocks. Yeah, and doesn't stop Roki having a little cheeky look, see? Well, don't allow this round to fester for too long. FaZe know exactly what they're up against, understanding the financial situation. Oi. Don't cop it. Had a hefty bit of damage there from that AG. It's understandable, right, in these type of rounds, if you know that a team is going to try and bully your in-game leader. We've seen it plenty of times before. Back in the day when Zeus was still on Na'Vi, Right, that's sent simple with the AWP over towards the site to back him up. Right. Be that third piece, make sure that they can't just exploit that site. And then you go, well, we can't just keep returning to B because what if the AWP is the game plan? What if he's there the entire time? That's the word I was about to say myself. We heard it from Carrigan in the pre-match. Game plan. And so far, that game plan seems to be going and working wonders. Carrigan, lovely little transfer there on the anti-eco. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that will do something for the confidence for sure. The showman yeah, that's it. in the Royal Arena. Oh, this is his palace right now. Takes the crowd everywhere he goes, it seems, Mr. Finn Anderson. One of the best to ever do it in terms of getting the crowd on your side, playing along with them, and forcing Team Spirit into their first tactical timeout. Halley with an opportunity to get on the mic. The same for Neo, an absolute legend of the game. Now in that phase jersey. Well, this is just an eco bash. But uh, still, great to see Carrigan settling in for a couple of tidy frags. They all matter, someone's got to get them. No AWP yet to speak of for Shiro. Finances are not there. Galil in the hands of Magix. And an insta window deployed. AWP a Brokey floating now. We'll be starting over towards Connector. Aggression from Rain towards Ramp. Big setup here. This is dynamic. If he's actually going to push on that. Ooh, he's. What? What? Rain out dueling the Donk. Oh, Donk swinging into that. Had a good idea to push off yeah. the back of the flash. And those are the type of kills you expect Donk to be hitting. So, Rain. <laughs> How many years are between those two players right there? My gosh. That's a huge opener to find. This year, FaZe and Spirit have tussled a couple of times. Mirage has been on the agenda. Both times falling in favor of Spirit. Yeah, 12-year difference, 12-year age gap. And Rain out duels him with quick reactions. Full open runway to this site, though, Chad. Oh, info at the bare minimum. They're not pushing the issue, still worried. It's been a rotation from FaZe. They've gambled towards the other side of the map. Brokey, can he make a dent? Oh, he can. He certainly can. Through the corner, puts Zontix low. He's starting to become aware of the position. You can see they're already T-spawned. The bomb yet to be planted. Chopper making sure that's done now. The clock will be extended and Spirit establishing and erecting a post plant. It's Carrigan in the feed to make it a two round or rather two kill discrepancy. Magix and Shiro combined to change that narrative. Here comes Brokey, deleted by Chopper. 
So wait, you two for the retake. Molly, there's, Smoke, Hey Chi. There's a way in. There's certainly a way in, but Shiro, that Molly's going to force him wide into the fight. Or can he go back? Finds a safe haven. A misplaced on the incendiary. Rob's trying to clear out Chopper. Time becoming a factor. There's no time here for Frozen. Cut his losses. Get out. And Chopper, he will find that AWP as well as round three. That was a massive advantage for FaZe in that one. It was. The fact that Carrigan, sure, almost made a meal of it, but takes down Sontix, low on HP, coming back towards that ramp. I feel like they had a big number advantage, but stepping up some of the unlikely candidates. Donk goes down early, Zontix the next to fall. And it's the supporting cast of Spirit to secure round number three. Chopper with some impact, they held on. You see it here again. Shiro stepping out, dealing with Rain already low from the initial exchange. Magics and then Chopper, all three of them, just immediately lighting up the scoreboard. Heavy through underpass right now from Spirit. Double AWP in the mix. Nade on the smoke there, Frozen and Chopper. Doing battle. And oh, okay. Frozen just locks through the smoke into Chopper. It could be Carrigan's AWP onto Zontix. Every round so far, Chad, has felt very unpredictable for the T side. Oh, knowing we, what they're up against. We just had a three on five, but Romps this time, he's the one let off the leash. Going, looking, another shot from Carrigan. There's pressure coming his way. Support available. This is huge. Yeah, there's no way back if you're Spirit. There's still over a minute left on the clock and they've been locked down. Jumping to clear that magic. He's gonna be punished. Solid work from Robs. He knows he's done enough. Gets away with his life as well. Team Spirit. So coming to some of these opening uh, gambits, FaZe have thrown their way, pulling out the double orb, just after letting one slip away. Well, uh, Robs didn't have success from this position in the clutch, but it's a whole different story this time round. Hmm. Only 30 seconds remain. And how much is Robs hearing? Because if we see the pieces on the map start to gravitate back, it means he's heard an awful lot. Always worried about a slip in this 2v5 situation. It should be a shutdown for FaZe. Might even just be a save. Spirit, they are locked in. Rob's starting to push and clear spawn. Doesn't see anything. 10 seconds left on the clock. And do they want to throw guns into this phase? The only one who could fight would be Rain. Looking likely to investigate. You die after time. You'll only have 200 bucks if you're Shiro. 500 now as he gets the frag. And yeah. Dissuades anything further from Rain. Well, that's going to do the openings, right? Frozen getting a freebie onto Chopper through that top mid smoke, and then Carrigan's AWP. And Carrigan at the tippy top of the scoreboard, the man on your screen, has forced another tactical timeout out of spirit already within this first half of play. And that's going to be a really positive sign. It means you're putting them under pressure. They're having to ha need a conversation. Donk still held to only three frags. It's Shiro at the top of the scoreboard for the Dragon. As far as the loss bonus is concerned, it's 2,400 into the next. It'll just have to be these two saved rifles, but you're in a bad spot regardless. They didn't get any loss bonus, so next round. What was this? Oh. A premonition. Yeah, it's, you know, it looks quite reminiscent of uh, Donkin Kato and Yard doing these kind of smoke spams, just getting that little premonition, as he put it. But they're quite neutered now. Yeah, right? absolutely. Spirit really aren't able to get away with the fights they're looking for. They can get in towards the side, it can be difficult to deal with, as we've already seen. Now, they've decided to force. Sontix flying quite late out of spawn. It's Chopper went in, but Magix and Sontix didn't. So this is an interesting investment, considering the finances. Very interesting. They look to be aiming once again at Carrigan's bomb site. This time, however, the support network is a little further astray. They've trusted Carrigan with the big green to be able to hold on to this site relatively isolated. I say that, frozen. He's close by. Coming in. Flashes high. Carrigan, what Good have you molly. got? Good. Molotov and actually hits the leg shot onto Magix. He's the only one further forward. They're going to double pump this. Carrigan doesn't hit the shot. Known to be quite the AWP. Different stages in his career. Support there. Down goes Carrigan, though. It's Donk in the feet. Ooh, Frozen puts it one into his head. It's all Frozen there. Brokey. Finishes one off with the flames, it's Donk in the clutch. An ace clutch demanded of Donk, and Brokey's having absolutely none of it. 
They picked up the AWP, so that's something that FaZe want to continue forward is this double AWP setup. But one of the keys right there, and it's just a little detail, the finances did not allow Spirit to have a smoke to extinguish that molly. So Frozen bailing out that B pressure, only one player able to push through, the rest not able to brave the flames. And again, it's another one of these buys where Spirit are lacking. Lost bonus is not there. Deagle's Tech 9, scout for Shiro. Some degree of intention on the left side of our screen. Well, note that the AWP that Rops picked up has not gone back into the hands of Carrigan. They're trying to keep this CT side unpredictable. Absolute boy. It certainly seems like that's been going to plan so far. Now it's Rops and Carrigan adopting this more forward position towards short side. Good flash. Sets him up for success. It's Frozen racking him up. Taking down Chopper, the head of the Dragon. Oh, oh hello. That's a Donk Deke. Dispatches of Carrigan. Puts a rifle into his hands. This could change the narrative completely. If Frozen gets caught by the Scout, but he lives on. Flames put him low. Frozen 18 points of health as Magic's getting that bomb in. This is threatening now from Team Spirit. This is very tough for FaZe to retake. Sure, they have a lot of utility, but the bomb's down ticking and rotation is just heading over to the party now. Oh, Zontix. This is a play. This is a big play. He's getting cheeky with it. Up on the fade. Frozen deleted. His head exposed. It's Rops holds fun with the USP. Brokey next victim. It's Donk, who has brought this round into reality. One Deagle headshot, and yeah, Rops is already getting out of there. Not even fully invested, Chad, but a Deagle headshot built upon by the rest of the team. Yeah, and look, when they took the timeout, the second timeout, Donk only had three kills. Now he's up to eight, so finding impact in the last few, and that's what we expect from the new start. 17 years young, and the new phenomenon of Counter-Strike delivers a round for Spirit. Drawing this back to just a one-round game. As far as opening jewels are concerned, they've only been able to win out one on this T-Sup. The rest have been falling in the favor of FaZe time and time again. Four for Frozen, two for Rain. Scatter a couple across Carrigan and Brokey. And I think that was with the AWPs. Yeah, so I mean, even in that one, they didn't get the opening. It was just well found by Don coming out apps. Catching Carrigan. Putting them in a uh, position of conversation, have Spirit Finance is starting to Run a little bit dry for FaZe. Next round with a 1900 loss, which is going either way. It's the back and forth nature of this half so far. FaZe might be bottoming out without the save. There's the Deagle on the replay. And Zontix, yeah, you could see making that play. He could have been caught. There was the late rotation point coming in to deal with him from market. But happy with that one. It's a very important round. Spirit win this. They could really run away with the half. It certainly could, Chad. However, Bobs on the AWP, firing off an early warning shot. They've got Brokey back to start towards the second letter of the alphabet. Chopper, quick, large and in charge, up towards Con. With no initial resistance. It's a nice angle for adopted by Robs, but how does this penny drop? How does this opening kill transpire? Let's find out. Oh, I would have seen the trajectory of the util, so Chopper aware he's going to park himself over towards Delpan. Rotation back around the world. With a lot of mid-pressure felt early, there are some gaps that FaZe have to worry about. A window boost will always start to present a couple of problems. Up close and personal towards a Frozen, traditionally over towards Short, now finding himself helping Rain on the defense. Walking on in a jiggle. An incendiary should be fine for Rain. Oh, say that, Wolf Loses a great deal of his health, has to stand his ground, trying to brave it was Doc. Look at that. The, the young'un thought he had it in him, tries to push the flame, got pulled back by his teammates. 12 HP on him. Chopper in con side, supported by the Shiro Orp. Any the final finish here. FaZe's setup seems good for this, and Chopper, he has opened the floodgates now. Rob's firing off a warning shot. They're waiting for him to repeat. Frozen goes on. What? Carrigan just takes down Chopper. Finds the fight. Magic's not clearing. Frozen solid. And just like that, the CT side find their sick. It's Frozen with a multi-kill triple from the Slovakian. Yeah, that's something that FaZe likes to do, right? Using one of their loose pieces. 
one of the traditional B defenders over towards short would be frozen and he tucks in towards A. So if you're playing counter strike by the nameplates, Maiko overlooked. You already dealt with Rain. He's meant to be the anchor. There's an AWP over towards Ticket. What does this setup look like? Great work from Frozen. That impact. Replacing an individual like Twist, someone who would always find impact in the big games. Big shoes to fill. This one hurts for Spirit. The success of the Deagles now back down to them. I feel like they've been here an awful lot on this T side. Yeah, finances not on their side. And around like that, you want to try and at least get the bomb down. Not the case, as they do set up for an A execute. Rookie and Rain once more. Solid setup again. Should be comfortable to receive this. Problem is, Drops is to respond with a second AWP from Connector. They're so close. Brokey onto Chopper, it keeps it clean. And it's Rain down after one. Drops. From that orping, you can see just dipping back towards the stairs. Hang on, dump, oh, he, he is putting pressure onto Brokey. How does he find the headshot there? A versus game for a moment, and a quick scope from Donk. He could do more. He certainly could do more. Nails rushed, it's frozen to break Donk's heart. Yeah, no bullets oh. left in that AWP just there. Just wanting to take the fight, but they were already coming to oh. him. I really thought he was cooking, Chad. If he still had bullets in the AWP, he's rounding that he corner with that in hand, and that could have been his round. Oh my god, he preheated the oven. He cracked a couple of eggs. I thought he was cooking. Two bullets left. You're right. This was such a smart pre-aim onto Rob, but onto the Deeg. Frozen saves face from red faces. Seven in the back. Spirit looking to salvage this with a fifth of their own. Back into the AK, still lacking slightly in U2. Early pressure towards middle. Chopper looking for that space once more, but he's going to have company from short. Frozen this time aggressive. He's won uh -oh. out this fight several times. Chopper oh. missed the chop, missed the chance. The chopper is going to correct. Yeah, Robs reveals himself. Look at where Robs is taking these shots from. He was in the underpass with the AWP. Now Rain gets the flag. All of their homework has been thrown in the bin right now. As Faith and CT side constantly changing forms. Metamorphizing magic and something though. Tooth and nail, 2v2. One bullet left for Brokey. Nade looks good. Zontix on your end, son! <laughs> oh, that's a nice angle. He's isolated the 1v1. Brokey will close what could have been so many times. Garrigan getting the Royal Arena on his side and one hell of a first half of Counter-Strike from FaZe. Hey, look at the pace of some of those rounds and the skirmishes coming their way. FaZe is a team that we'd always talk about once upon a time who like to take those heads up fights, like the duels to come their way, and they definitely did. Fantastic half from FaZe Clan. That devastation that Carrigan felt in the loss in Katowice, you saw it on his face, there was tears. They got absolutely blown out in that best of five final. It wasn't even close. I don't think he wants to feel that way ever again. So what would you say are your takeaways, Chad? Um, Phase's CT side and this constant dynamicism we haven't always seen. It's that big stage buff, perhaps. I, I like how fluid they kept it. They were constantly changing things up. There was different looks. But for me, overall, is the confidence in the type of fights that they were taking. They weren't backing down. They weren't shying yeah. away. They were very jarring. They weren't allowing Team Spirit just to execute cleanly. Another takeaway for me is that Donk is once again completely not lost in the source of the stage. He's playing his game. It doesn't matter where he's playing. Nice start from Shiro 2. Tapped away out on the USP. Looks like it could be both pistols for Spirit, unless Fangs were able to win out a 3v5. A return to top middle. This would be both pistols. If I'm not mistaken. No, you're bang on. Plenty of time left on the clock. FaZe would love to try and get a plant out of this. We know T signs, if you can just get that bomb down, it facilitates a very juicy looking second round with the Galils. Look at Carrigan as well. He's playing the aim role in this pistol. 
Oh, but Magix is the one hitting the shots. Frozen does not need to rush this. 45 seconds. They're trying to find Carrigan and have done so. Frozen, what have you got for us? A bullet between the eyes is what he has. Both pistols for Team Spirit in our first map of this quarterfinal. Yeah, all five staying alive, so tidy stuff. Can be very happy with that. And now they know it's very unlikely to see a phase force. Should be taking the oh. fullest of Ecos as Shiro just laid them out top middle. Mm. Magix with a tidy one as well. Four rounds on the T side of Mirage is more than workable. Again, we'll return to the stat line of this Team Spirit roster on Mirage. Played it 11 times. They've only lost it once to Mouse. So they're very confident this is their home turf for reasons they picked it into this major quarterfinal against what you could argue is the current Counter-Strike landscape final boss of stage matches. They've already defeated them once. Yeah, hard to argue against that. Right now, the uh, biggest shoes to fill conversation of Frozen. He's definitely pulled his way in the first half of play. Oh, an opportunity there. This also pull it past the head of the jump spot, the anchor. And Chad, can you explain the thought process behind Chopper not investing into a, a weapon at all here? Is this Vogue? Is this meta? Well, he, he did invest. He gave it to Shiro. Right. So Shiro's been able to hold on to his cash so he can bring out an AWP with, into that first gun round of play. Right. So uh, one individual on Spirit trying to facilitate the AWP and Chopper just acting as a little bit of a canary in the coal mine. You can see he's just jiggling, playing yeah. for information, wants Bank to try and Chopper. set... Yeah, see if he can set these... MP9's up for the multi-kill. It is just one M4 on Donk, so they know the AKs are likely to come out into the next. I'll be interested to see what their CT approach is with that in mind. This feels very reminiscent of his overpass jump spot towards the signpost. He's just jumping around. Chopper's even found one with his USP, and Donk, he's gonna take two. So they managed to try and um, exhaust the nades, but look at the results. Uh, Spirit held on to everything. Yeah, and now Shiro coming into this round had uh, 7.8K, so more than enough money to get that AWP in his hands. If that's hand-drawn, yeah. bloody good job. Very good job. You've done very well. But yeah, there's this way in which Donk likes to kind of play for info, not really going to throw his nades out without... Well, not really going to be throwing his nades out at all, especially when he's so oh, comfortable whoa, on the cross there. Blocking a little. Yeah, fat in the vent from Shiro. Yeah, well, he's got his AWP out early. Got it out lickety split. Robs could be across ahead of Chopper's expectation here. Jiggles with the smoke. Robs starts his progression. Oh, <laughs> Chopper's getting run down. Oh! And Robs can't do it. <laughs> Finished off by Frozen, but what a pick. Good work from the old lad. And now here comes Magix up. Aggressive into Carrigan, testing him. Oh, and the MP9s on either extremity working wonders. Even gets the info there. You see that from Magix. Yeah, that is huge play, right? Didn't just run away after the opening exchange, stayed for a little bit of info, and now Donk facilitated on a fight of his own, has been able to vacuum up a lot of this space. Yeah, the chum is in the water, Jad. And here comes Donk. Timing. Look at this. Oh, beautiful awareness there from Frozen. He has managed to dispatch of the hunt. Now it's a 3v3, but Magix, his positioning time after time is rewarded. Not this time. Nate, shy of the mark, jumping out. Could isolate these jewels. Can Shiro have an Oh, not far off Frozen with a quad kill to save Face Clan there. That could have got awkward in so many different ways. And that is actually wild that they pulled that off. You don't often see Zontix making that type of a mistake, but his incendiary missed. It bounced off, landed front sight. If he had landed that, they would have been stuck in B apartments. It landed front sight directly in front of Magix, who was already low from his exchange. Right. And Zontix is always a safe pair of hands. The fact that he didn't land that, that stings. That leaves a massive mark. MP9's opening up the round in favor of Spirit, and they still lose the round. Those are the type of rounds that will make the difference in this series. And in this map of Mirage, that one has forced a tactical timeout of a spirit, their third and final. Frozen with the quad kill. They are feeling the heat right now. So he started with the trade. This was fantastic awareness onto the Donk push. Yeah, and that's the thing, the Donk push, you felt it's a number advantage situation. It looked like he had them cut off in the pass, and he gave over the kill that allowed them back into the round. Now their finances are on the rope. Spirits are in trouble. 
Oh boy. Well, last time they were on the ropes, a dangerous and dastardly dig dug them out. See how this one goes down. Round 16. If they can't course correct immediately, th those are literally the difference makers in a MR12 game of Counter-Strike. We talk opening kills, we talk pistols, right. and we talk, well, man disadvantage scenarios, and that's one of them. And it was a donk push, you know? It wasn't necessarily demanded of him. Magic's got the info, and I can understand the bloodlust. It opened the door to this ninth now being nestled next to FaZe Clan's name. Okay, so early sound cues are heard. B Apartments occupied, Shiro and Chopper. Establish a more forward setup with a flash. Oh, and find the frag onto Frozen. Gets his revenge. Last round he dealt with Robs and then Frozen with the trade through the smoke. So again, an opening for Spirit, but they need to be able to convert this time round. The in-game leader in consecutive has given them a man advantage, and that's more than you can ask for. Yeah, they threw this util for B Apartments. And now more util arrives. Donk, you can see indecision, uncertain as to where he's required. 35 seconds, though. This is becoming problematic for phase two. Or maybe not. Shiro down to the Brokey Orb. A decision to be made. Carrigan, yeah, they want to try and pressure A. They're leaving the lurk. He's trying to sell the fake. And he's managed to fight Magics as well. Chopper, Donk. This is it. How diligent you clear? It's Ray with a stunning headshot. And Dom, good for one. Can he sweep more under the rug with only 10 seconds left? Rops has to plant. He could be wallbanged here. Brokey providing overwatch and cover. Gets it down into a 2v2. All to play for. No, no kid on the retake. Time is a problem. Brokey's got the power position. They're going to have to go quick. Go wide. He's too quick. Two down fast with the AWP. Takes a chunk out of Zontix. 5 and 12, and his 13th death is imminent. His fate sealed by that AWP bullet. Brokey just playing with him, teasing him. That sinking feeling in his stomach, realizing there's nothing for him to do here. They're running away from him, but he's going down with the ship. It's 10 for Face Clan. Team Spirit's home turf. Yeah, says he doesn't feel the pressure. Stage what? Well, right now, Zontic's under pressure. This is tough now for Spirit to get back into. We already discussed the finances are on the ropes. Two rounds consecutive, opening kills. Unable to convert. Brokey bailing them out. The AWP on Shiro, an open doorway, the immediate react. That's the FaZe Clan we know and love. The one that doesn't second guess, the one that doesn't doubt. The one that trusts their gut. Looks like they're breaking Spirit in map number one of this series. Eleven, a certainty. Yeah, very comfortable for Faith Clan. Quite the opposite for Team Spirit. Both pistols. Your map pick, and you're down 10 6. Yeah, this speaks of a blowout. They have uh, a deagle in the hand of Donk. That's the only real investment to worry about if you are Faith. But it looks like they're B splitting, Alex. There's a, there's a chance for them to try and do some damage. I would imagine Frozen becomes somewhat of a scout in towards the much lesser guarded site. But let's have a look. Oh, Chopper, a dink landed. There is a commitment of sorts here. Walking into the trap, Donk Deeg on terrain. Awkward, uncomfortable, in the flame. Burnt to a crisp. And look at Paragon's just face. It feels like he's been thinking about this game, this game plan for, what, four days now? Probably since uh, a month ago when he lost in the final. Probably yeah, thinking, how too. can he get his revenge? That too. Well, this would be one way to get it knocking them out. But, uh, the PGL Copenhagen Major, the first CS2 Major, and Team Spirit of the Talk of the Town. It's meant to be the Year of the Dragon. That's a lot of people's expectation. A lot of people's pick them leaning towards Team Spirit after such a statement victory. And count of Vita 24. Against FaZe Clan, no less. Now Carrigan looking to find and coordinate what would be the 12. This looks like they're trying to sell a bit of a fake here. So you can see the bomb's over towards T-Spawn, broken top mid, frozen towards B-Apps. They're forcing a reaction out of Team Spirit. And right now, because they're on the back foot down, 
five rounds, they're a little bit more skittish, right? The type of team that would be moving, searching for information, rotating in to help the bomb site. It's a double fake. Oh my goodness. Wait. So now you smoke mid window. The mid players are blind. Rain starts his crawl into A. Down to Chopper. Good find. Good flash. No frag. Zomtix is here. Everyone's here. Carrigan the one to claw him back, but there's Zontix and Donk, it's Brokey's life next on the line, and the bomb is under enemy control. What damage can Frozen do? A very difficult clutch, but still around where he can make Spirit squirm. A kill or two, that would be great, any more. He's done his job, Frozen the first spotted over towards the top of Ticket. Knows he's under pressure. Donk just running at him. Yeah, which is wild. The CT's gonna need the money, but Donk <laughs> needs the kill, charging him down, and that's the confidence. Here I come. Yeah, making no secret of it, was he? That was a serious look on the face of Donk. It was, wasn't it? It's not the jovial 17-year-old having a great time. I think he might have a score to settle now. Four rounds the difference. Spirit, can they work back into this match? Donk has managed to match the output of Phase's highest fragger. With that, his 18th picked up. Let's see. Just the hero AK for Rops to work with. A couple of Tech 9 to dig. Carrigan keeping it extremely light. Wanting to bait him into the fight, you could see that. Frozen making noise, so Dom's a... What? Uh, uh, that was a Glock? What is going on here, Chad? They've managed to find not only the one, but the second with just a Glock. AK-47 lies idle in mid. Not like this team spirit. I was looking at the drum line. I was admiring the atmosphere, and I looked back to my screen in complete disbelief. A hero rifler who hasn't had to be the hero. It's Frozen and Carrigan to draw first blood, but they can pick this up. They can dust themselves down, right? This is a very tough round for Spirit now. There's so many gaps they have to worry about. Someone has to step up. Someone needs a multi-kill from Spirit. Could be magic. He stayed very stalwart on this position. The smoke implies the crawl. Oh, he's getting swung on. It's another one. Frozen taking down magics. This is abysmal for Team Spirit. Oh, and the precision is there. Shiro missing his orb shot. Is it really five alive from Faceland? It is five alive and giggling. We have been on the quarterfinal stage. That's one way to secure 12. And Carrigan likes the way that one feels. You bring in a couple of upgraded pistols, a hero AK, and you walk away with 12 rounds in your back pocket. Here's that Glock kill again. Zontix, no chance, no hope. And Spirit, they're in the bin on their map choice. Can't quite believe the way in which that went down, Chad. That is unbelievable. Team Spirit, you said they lost Mirage once in recent history? Yeah. Once? against Maus, I believe, was what Chaddy B was telling me, but now we find ourselves one round away from FaZe joining that list. Jiggle spot, double forward setup of ramp. Mid is definitely under FaZe's remit. Bombs in spawn. Just a free day right now in the jailbreak server for FaZe. Uh-oh, that's a barrel. And that's a setup, a crossfire erected with Zontix on the bricks. He's a dead man jumping, spotted by Rain, baited by Rain, and, well, it's Carrigan's day in the sun. Walking straight past him, trigger discipline here on Shiro. This is naughty. Getting them both would be very important. Instead, it's a 3v3. He slipped away CT. The bomb's still loose. Look how far away it is from either bomb site. Well, this is a very unusual round. I'll let you digest this one as Carrigan takes down Shiro. Another frag for Carrigan, 20 frags deep. He got a drive-by Glock in the previous, now a triple kill. 
to twist the knife and stamp out Team Spirit's Mirage. Rosontix could maybe finally find some impact in this game. Oh, that's impactful. A beautiful headshot found. Brokey's hunting him, and yeah, down he goes. 10 seconds, though. Where's the plant, lads? Carrigan. He's going to get it down just in time. Covered by Brokey, and what a long-range burst. It's Brokey to close it out. Face Clan with a statement in the first half of this quarterfinal. Look at them, so amped up. And they've gone up against the top dog right now on Carrigan's home soil. Map number one is in the bag. It's their map up next. I can get you to, I can get you to get off. I think Shanti yeah. has up still, okay? Go yeah. on, you Ready? Swing it wide here, okay? We're gonna end the next Ready? Go. Maybe I'll yeah. short. Fancy shot. Yeah, I'll smoke, smoke yes, 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 I know. Come on. We should smoke jungle and split A, no? We can, yeah. We can tap on A. Can you go? Now. He might be ticket picking now, careful. We should I'll go. One broke here, I'll go short. We're gonna split con. Yeah. Come to wait out, wait out the ram smoke. Oh, you can smoke top con, the finger split B and you walk through it. I think it's fucking good. Do like that. Sure. Smoke top con? Smoking con now. Yeah, then walk in after. I'll walk first. Yeah. Be short, I'll short now. Shot, 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 shot. I'm fucking B. That's so bomb. That's B player, that's B player. Maybe B clear. Checking B. I'm checking B now. I'm running. Don't see, don't see anything A. Don't see anything A. Big safe. Shot, shot, shot. B side, B side. Sound, sound. B side. Oh, that's for jungle. Keep sound, sound. Nice! Fucking shit, man. This is Space Clan. Let's fucking go, man. Thank you. The world is changing, but one thing remains the same. Victories with 1x bet. Level up your gaming space with metal posters from Displate. Paint your Displates in seconds. Swap them whenever you like. Get official art from your favorite games on a uniquely designed metal canvas and choose from thousands of posters. Join over 3 million collectors now. Your wall upgrade is here. Shop now at Displate.com. It's popular, it's loud, and this is Asone's commercial. But Asone spent all the money to make the headphones good, and they got no money left for the commercial. So I'm gonna need you to head to Asone.io. A C E Z O N E. Yo. Code PGL, 50 euros off. We got some headphones. Now and never. Well, Carrigan said if the real face clan shows up here today, we've got a game. The real face clan 
they are here and Kerrigan posting all the frags his team needs to boot as the captain Moses what is happening yeah that's that's an incredible performance out of Kerrigan that that's a, that's a fan that's an unbelievable performance individually from him but even before that I think Kerrigan set up a, a fantastic game plan for this map for the opening half for the CT side of Mirage the first seven rounds all about setting the tone they were up in spirits face they, they spent seven rounds aggro and B halls with all picks with all kills they had the double off setup that was confusing flash aggro peaks down a ramp flanks coming in left and right and that game plan put spirit on the back foot and made it so hard for them to figure out what was happening on the map and that exactly prime phase to take over this game i 100 percent agree with you the foundation for phase winning mirage was laid in the first half sure you could argue it was a close first half at a point it was five to four but every single time phase had to win around or sorry spirit had to win around it had to be a magical play coming up from a player it had to be something extraordinary because kerrigan and phase they were as you said proactive on the map in your face double up setup and not on the same players kerrigan had the double up in bfs then they switched it to rups in another round yeah. they were so mobile so fluent so proactive all over the map that I think Chopper was sitting back thinking, what on earth is going on? Yeah, and that, that is the real phase. That is a team that has so many setups that, you know, players like just, just playing together, like going from the aggressive plays to then hiding an extra player in the A bomb site behind your anchor and rain. When he goes down, all of a sudden they don't realize Frozen's not in middle. He's actually waiting underneath the balcony. Uh, I mean, then you want to talk about Frozen. We touch mm -hmm. on Kerrigan and the game he had. Frozen wasn't scared of any fights in middle. Frozen was peeking window, peeking off catwalk, picking off players left and right. He was peeking every chance he got. And that's a phase that is not afraid of anything individual that Spirit brought to the table. No, playing viscerally, playing so well off each other. And I remember in Katowice looking at the cameras of phase specifically Frozen and the amount of times that he threw his head down or he threw his head back when there was this round that Spirit pulled out of nothing and got a 3K or a 4K or an unwittable situation. It must feel so great that the shoe is on the other foot. Yeah, it feels fantastic for Frozen. Another breakout map coming in for him, of course. We did see him early on when he first joined Phase Clan that there was some potential maybe not as consistent as you'd like it and he hasn't really been consistent at this tournament but I think what we saw on Mirage right here confirms what we knew already about the man on your screen right here when he's on it he is one of the absolute best rifles in the world he showed that in mouse for many many years there's a reason why they picked him up there's a reason why he was being brought in to replace twist and there's a reason why I said I think he's an upgrade I think frozen as a player is better pound for pound than twist has been the last couple of years and he confirmed that right here right now and there's some there's some unquiet quantifiable factor in phase that, that you can't really put a name to when when they get into when they get into these kind of stage games because all of a sudden it's like they looked a little bit I mean they looked extremely disorganized and discombobulated individual throughout the group stage now they've got great double peaks they're baiting each other perfectly they're swinging at the perfect timings off each other's gameplay and obviously that, that dynamic gameplay of the different looks that they gave out and that is what makes phase such a such a dangerous team is I mean, they're the just no mistakes on this T side. You even you even look at a round where, you know, they, they win. Kerrigan outduels Zontex with a Glock on towards Catwalk, and he has a perfectly timed swing to eliminate the second follow-up player on Catwalk with Frozen peeking from Khan. And they're just, that, that synergy of fighting those double peaks is nearly impossible to stop once they hit that peak. And you saw that in the first half, right? Spirit winning the pistol, converting, and from that point on onwards, they only won two rounds. And it was these uncharacteristic rounds where a single individual from Spirit would show up and do what Spirit does the best. But apart from that, it was face all over in the first half. They laid the foundation. Spirit won both pistols. They converted both pistols and they still lost 13 to 7. This wasn't even a close game. No. Well, that, that's why that's why I love the, the game plan that Kerrigan came out with. Because if you come into these playoffs, and, and I mean, you, you kind of probably have confidence that your team's going to step up, but you're also saying individuals felt off, teamwork felt off. Let's set up a game plan where I can get my teammates aggressive. I can get them into the groove early. We're going to push an op up in B halls. We're going to flash rain down a ramp, and we're going to get everyone feeling the game really, really early on. And it does help, of course, that he has one of those games which Kerrigan has some games specifically in big games where he says, you get on my back for a while. In the beginning of this game, I'll make sure that you're comfortable. I'll hit the shots that, you know, you don't always expect it from me, but that is such a help in the first game of a series like this. Yeah, usually I feel like Kerrigan's good for like one miracle clutch a tournament, like out of nowhere. Sure. <laughs> and here it's just an entirely just a god tier performance from start to finish in the map. And um, yeah, you, you got to give him credit. I, I mean, there's nothing mind blowing in what he's done. Reading the game very well, extremely focused, playing off his teammates very good, and just hitting the hitting the kills in front of him, finding the way to get the frags that are on a screen. It's nothing special. 
I was, like the way you said that. He just read it. Yeah, he read it and he was on it. He wasn't afraid to take the duels himself. You're going to see a spray transfer. You're going to see him flanking. You're going to see him with an AWP and B apps right here, getting an entry. Kerrigan was all over the place and he was not afraid of taking shots. He was also the guy in the very last round of the game, or at least the final nail in the coffin. He was the guy on the T side coming in with a triple entry into the A bomb side, winning the round for Face Clan. Kerrigan had a fantastic showing you see right here. Yeah, he was just he was just so smart. And I mean, I think I think fearless too. And, and I mean, I mentioned that about Frozen as well, but you can just see in these players, there's no doubt in the fights they take and the positions they have. They're, they're just saying, I'm making this decision. I'm, I'm doing it 110%. I'm running through a wall if I have to. So laser focused. It's so great to see when it works like this for FaZe. And I'm happy that we're singing the praises of how well it went, but that means we need to talk about the other side as well. You said it already. Um, you know, sometimes there were the miracle rounds that came out, but usually Spirit doesn't need that because it's already set up early in the round so that they don't have to do that all that often, right? Yeah, I think we have a couple of rounds we, we can share. Round 15 is, is a great example of a face doing well, but also Spirit losing the, the grasp of the game a mm -hmm. little bit. I thought coming into the second half that if they win the pistol, they convert, they can get back into it. Look at Chopper getting a kill right here towards Rops. Frozen getting a little bit lucky with the trade. Then you see once more Kerrigan losing a duel to Magix. You're playing in a 4v3. Dunk, maybe a little bit too aggressive. I know you weren't a fan of that one, Jason, pushing up from behind in a 4v3. And from that point and onwards, it falls apart for Team Spirit. Maybe they were under the pressure. We talked about it coming into the matchup. If FaZe could apply pressure, maybe we would see mistakes coming out of Spirit. And I think we saw one right there from Doc. Yeah, maybe. I think, you know, you can you can nitpick on that one, obviously. He makes those plays, and we've seen them frequently, like they turn in his favor, right? I think just in terms of the man advantage at the time, it might have been a little bit early. Could have waited for the hit to actually begin before going for that. Um, but again, I think, I think it's hard to harp too much on Spirit individuals, because if you look at it statistically, a couple of them, a bunch of them had off games. Three of them had off yeah, games in yeah. that sense. But I think that's more just due to the credit of, of FaZe applying pressure, FaZe making them uncomfortable with the game plan. I don't think it's any like player coming in cold, missing shots. I think they just get outplayed by the teamwork and the game plan of FaZe. Yeah, we're gonna come back to it and talk about Nuke in just a second. But for now, Paula is standing by on the floor. I hope it's as fire as it was last time, Paula. Shocks, it's definitely fire. It's absolute chaos down here. Who is having a good time in the Royal Arena? We've got some very special guests. We found some exemplary Counter-Strike talent. Give it up for B-Dog, Lucy Luce, Yumi, Hugo, and Connor Scrawny at the end! <laughs> Guys, how you doing? Yeah, I mean, feeling great. I mean, I'm loving the energy that people are bringing, and I'm loving that everybody's cheering for Carrigan. Everyone is cheering. What a map one, Connor, right? Insane. Absolutely insane, Paula. Are you ready to cast tomorrow, mate? You looking forward to it? Yeah. I mean, it's the Royal Arena, man. It's always a pleasure to be here. And honestly, it's looking better than ever on a Thursday night. Hugo, quick thoughts from you. Epic cast earlier. Interesting matchup. Cloud9 dipping out. Uh, do you know what happened there? Vitality are here. That's all I'm saying. Flames is showing up. We don't need Zywu top fragging. Maybe they're here for the trophy parlor. They very well could be. Lucy, great to see you. How are you doing? Fantastic parlor. It's an incredible atmosphere on a Thursday. You got to be loving it. B-Dog, final thoughts with you, brother. Great to see you. Have an awesome time. Yeah, look, it's fantastic, isn't it? I mean, first day already, it's basically sold out. It absolutely is. Everybody in here, make some noise! But you know what? You know what? I feel like something very special is missing. If we turn the camera to my right, give it up for Boopski and Londres! And this little guy who's sort of blocking lawns here. Bubsky, how you doing, mate? Good? Yeah, I'm doing good. I mean, it's nice to see you again and some colleagues. Pleasure to have you here, brother. Of course, uh, having this in Denmark, so special for you and the crowd, right? Yeah, I mean, I would love to sit on that stage, but uh, it's not going to happen, right? Maybe in the future. You never know. You might be back playing someday. Uh, I can announce that it's not going to happen, but I'm very grateful to be a part of the show regardless. Bubsky, always a pleasure. Let me scoop by you and get our final thoughts with the man, the myth, the legend. It's Lorda! Brother, great to have you here. Enjoying the show and the vibe so far? Yeah, now that all the pickums are dead, I'm here to maximize hopelessness. So let's go, FaZe Clan! One more map for FaZe Clan. Spirit need to. Everybody in here. One final time. Can I hear you roar? Shots in the desk. Back to you. 
know how I'm supposed to take this. Uh, are you not happy with my own analysts? <laughs> so they need to bring in some more. Uh, glad to get a temperature check from the ground, but I do want to kind of bring it back to what is going on here, the momentous occasion of the fact that Spirit Everyone's favorite for the major is down one map to phase and I feel like um, pimp It's more than just being down one map. It's the way it happened the way you are going into nuke Yeah, I mean they were showing a bit of weakness Jason said it as well three players didn't really show up for the first map that being said It's just one map as much as I want to give credit to face clan credit to Kerrigan They have won one map against team spirit. That's about it Not they a lot lost. of people do it not a lot of people do it sure But apart from this one it was five map losses in a row and we're moving into nuke a map that spirit have dominated face clan on the past two times they played it they did it at katowice they did it before that as well so as much as i want to give it to face clan already this is still in my books a 50 50 game yeah. they have even out the playing line card now it's a close game you know it's a one up one for face but it's still spirit in the driving seat for nuke and we, we would say the same thing about mirage the last two games went in the favor <laughs> of spirit as well so phase has obviously obviously come out swinging today but this is the thing if you're going to talk about this as spirit potentially taking over a slot as one of the best teams in the world and proving that they can actually establish themselves as one of the most dominant teams in counter-strike you got to be able to take a punch in the face like that, and you got to be able to recover and bounce back into a series. And that's that's the next big test now for Spirit is can they actually have this conversation that allows them to reset, look at their game plan, and come up with a way to get everyone on board to actually overcome phase because you know this is this is the powerful phase. You, you've now got the information that they're not just going to shy away from this. Yeah, absolutely. So let's talk about the specifics of, of Nuke then and, and what's going to happen there and in terms of how phase approached the beginning oh. of their last game, kind of what it's going to come down to, the minutiae. Yeah, you can't really do the same thing I'd say nuke is a, is a tougher map to be so aggressive to be so proactive on the CT side there's certain things you can do in yard rain in particular can be a guy of, of question you know curious to see how he's gonna play on yard there's one thing though that we discussed coming into this segment was that you can't really do everything and set up your game plan to avoid donk I however think they should when it comes to nuke the last two times face played nuke against donk and against spirit he put up a 2.26 rating and a two point uh, uh, sorry, 2.09 rating. So he's averaging a 2.1 rating plus against face clan. If you can do everything in your power to avoid dunk, to maybe shut down his aggression on the CT side, you are coming a long way if you're face clan. So usually you say, no, teams should never just try to shut down, never. Now we're like, in this no, no, case, no, all you need to do mm -hmm. is shut down dunk. In this case. It'd be a good way to find on your CT side, surely. If I mean, if you want to look at how they played Mirage, right, with the double off setup that they had, you're not going to do that on Nuke. But if you get Brokey coming out a couple of rounds early on to help Rain with the outside defense, have him give you a couple picks maybe you can get aggressive towards red box i think if you're if you're phase you might want to set up again if you want to go towards the theme of aggression they showed on mirage get a couple people like pressuring towards hut with a couple people pushing ramp you can make a pretty aggressive ct side as well if you want to get in your face and try and throw off the rhythm of that t side and i think once you switch over to your own offensive side as phase you've got kerrigan who's going to be able to mix in some fast plays towards up or going to allow a couple rounds of going outside allow rops to lurk towards the inner bomb site you can do some creative things and you know we have seen teams we have seen navi able to negate what they wanted to do on this map specifically. Yeah, specifically for the start of phase, you know, if they want to dream about just closing it out here, two and zero, you know, uh, leaving the space for their individuals that are fragging today, even on that T site, making sure that they have the chance to take the duels that they want, that's going to be key, and if those first hit, then... It, it's it's pretty it's crazy to think about because if you if you come into this series like you know so much is on the attention of Donku who does so many aggressive plays and takes a lot of opening attempts but Shiro actually had like a, an 80 sure. percent success rate on his opening kills Zontix was up at like 60 some percent you have options of, of spirit of going deep so if Donk's not going to be able to have success you have other players who can find you openings elsewhere on the map it's going to be interesting to see because I think one thing that spirit got caught in against Navi was a lot of late round upper hits towards you know walking out the squeak door we had JL popping off in that game so that's maybe a little bit of an X factor, but I mean, Spirit, if they get caught in that same kind of a cycle of just feeling like outside's shut down, ramp's not really an option. If you get funneled into the upper bomb site, you're in a lot of trouble if you're Spirit. For my money, there's one play I want to highlight, and it is Rain. We speak about him a lot when it comes to Nuke, yep. especially on the CT side, even on the T side for him as well. Likes to be aggressive. The last two times they played against Spirit, he was missing on the server, and I think that's a big part of the reason why they ended up losing. Rain hasn't had the best tournament so far, but we do know that he's guaranteed to come up once in a while, you know, in a playoff game. So for my money, Rain Rain is the man of the hour. Can he play a good game of Counter-Strike? Face have a realistic shot at taking this one 2 -0. Rain, the man to watch if Faze want to do it, if they want to close it out 2-0, and zero, or will Spirit come back? Alex and Chad, what do you think? What do you think, Copenhagen? Does this need a third map? As yet undecided. Well, regardless, the gloves are off. This oh, yes. is not a quick spirit 
pantsing of FaZe once more. We actually have a match on our hands. Let's see if Spirit can bounce back on FaZe's pick of Nuke. Underway with the CT side start of Spirit. A HE for Chopper, a flash in the back pocket, and the door blown off. Magic's with some jewelies, and he's gonna have company. Oh, it's the pop <laughs> Open up from Frozen! Two! Glock straight to the dome! Karak and Ethan getting cheeky with it. Where you going? Down the vents, the bombs down top side. Zontix and Donk flying up the ladder to try and format some form of retake. Mouse is moving an awful lot. Donk and Zontix, they're sharp shooters. Karakin's gone round the world. Should be no way in here. This three man heaven operation. Starts their maneuver. Quick click. Frozen. He is in game form. Major form. A quad kill from Frozen. Carrigan with a cherry on top. And the new addition does not let off the gas. No. From Mirage straight into Nuke. He knows what it takes to win under Carrigan. Drops Frozen and Carrigan once upon a time donning those Mouse jerseys. End of 2019. Had a lot of success. Reunited now under the phase banner. And Frozen. That's a statement to make to get the pistol. Look at this. Magic sit down. That top site eradicated in an absolute heartbeat. And then the fact that Spirit even attempted the retake, that was phases every day of the week. And first pistol in the series. And the best way to kick off the campaign on Nuke. Yeah. I mean, you put the jewel barrettas on the top of the hut, you expect something more. You're than... meant to deal with that. That's yeah. exactly what Magic's is there for. Oh man, frozen. Too aware, too sharp. If we just return to a couple of the little details of Mirage, that little bait in Underpass where we had the hero AK for Ops and Frozen at the take 90 gets the kill. Yeah. They're, they're lulling Donk into one of his familiar plays. Come on, boy. Yeah, we know what you do. We've yeah, studied man. this. We yeah. know the tape. We've watched plenty of games. We know exactly how to deal with your bloodlust. Yeah. I can't believe they lost that round. The Glock comes into the mix of Carrigan as well. Absolutely hook, line and sinker. And you're not going to be contesting this series if you drop rounds like that, Spirit. No, that's for sure. But well, what a stark contrast that would be to... Katowice not too long ago. That's the thing, we've already had this and in recent history, so... As I mentioned, the gloves are off now. We actually have a different matchup on our hands and one that I hope Spirit can bounce back and give us a game. Because map number one was extremely dominant. You take the pistols out of the mix, what a spirit really have to boast. Another nothing round as the full eco having to be taken. Oh, Carrigan's gonna farm some cash, that's nice. Thank you very much, 600 bucks. There's 12. Ah, he'll take another. All five staying alive, perfect from FaZe. Exactly what you'd hope for now. Plenty of options available with these bonuses. On the game plan, he said it needed to be perfect. Well, so far, so good. The fact that he's shown up and not only calling a strong game, but fragging out of his absolute mind. It's one of those Carrigan classics. And vanquishing the dragon would be one way to start the campaign in the playoffs. It was shaky during the elimination stage. It wasn't easy. They were down and out. smoke and go flash is great but zoptics he finds the headshot shiro in combination they've taken two heads out of the equation and now shiro he's got another on a silver platter thank you very much carrigan rain slipping down behind the wall of smokes they'll be covering this by chopper worried about the vent so it means Ooh. there's plenty of gaps chopper did he catch some info if not rain is passed <laughs> Mouth moving from Chopper. Yeah, I think he may... Bring around the Rosie. May have caught a whiff now. Yeah, it is bring around the Rosie. This is so bizarre. Chopper's gone round. Zontix will die Zontix. in the back. Yeah, he could. Theoretically, Chopper's on control, a bit confused. 50 seconds as Rain's going to open that door. This can still get out of control. There's a world. Yeah, the door's been opened. Chopper addressing it. Zontix distracted. Rob's to activate. And Rain down. No progression from Rob's there. Felt like that might have been his opportunity. Instead, it's a 1v5. Yeah, handled. I guess Chopper did spot something because uh, 
There's also a rotation down the vent from Soul. Oof. He'll take his chance. 20 seconds. Bomb plant would be a nice bonus, but it's unlikely that Zontix is going to allow it. Good. One HP in it. One single point of health. And a very important round for Zontix. He didn't have the best of maps on Mirage. And this is the thing. We're holding these individuals to the highest of standards. Well, now you're on the biggest of stages at the biggest of events. This is the pinnacle of Counter-Strike. Your first major. Yeah, your first major. And we've got expectations like that. Yeah, well, hey, you've done it once. Back it up, right? Yeah, for sure. Understandable. I mean, oh. he does, he kind of, you know, talks the talk about not feeling pressure. But yeah, if you want to be nonchalant on the stage, right, this is the thing we are going to definitely put you under the microscope. But if he can bounce back on map number two, that even speaks more to that mindset. We're into the rifles. Spirit a chance to steady their campaign. Yeah, make no mistake as well. This, a map that Spirit made phase look faulty on. Donk typically out yard, capable of finding one or two. He's got Shiro in support of that as well. Spamming away at smokes. Kerrigan slinking across into the warehouse. And lots of room. Now they test Zontix. And that's enough to pull Shiro away for a moment. Kerrigan trying to pip this gap. He's been spotted. Just a sliver of him. The dunk on this screen, getting run on down here by Shiro. He's a dead man walking. And a four versus three goes even worse for FaZe. Vader rocks, dropping unison. Brody readies himself for the clutch, not to be dunk with a double. And getting fired up, you saw both Shiro and Donk making some noise after that. It was a well-played round. You can see the pressure that was applied. They take the yard space, they get a player over in the warehouse, then they pressure ramp. Shiro has to move back. Donk, fortunately, catching the slip. Oh, wow. Look at this. you got the FaZe Clan boys there. Rob and Tico. Eddie, of course. Eddie. But yeah, it looks like Fa the uh, the Spirit boys have certainly not come into this one KG. Well, hold up. FaZe have nothing. <laughs> yeah, watch out for the clocks, folks. Can't have another one of those. Uh, and this is where they have to, for their confidence, keep this as spotless as possible. Yeah, maybe Donk doesn't need to be running and gunning as much as... Uh, you considered before. Maybe he does. Maybe he does. Maybe the Eco Cobra can slither a couple of extra bonuses. That's the thing. For the last map, he didn't have the, the best of games. He gave away a couple of kills where maybe he shouldn't have, but still managed to get a boatload of frags and have impact with the Deagle. He did. You gotta take the good with the bad. High expectations on an individual like Donk when you ascend the ranks as quick as he has, and with the rifle no less. There's a level of expectation. Rain spotted towards red. Ready for Squeaky and Hut. Here they come. Handled. Yeah, Simple. Like no dramas. I've dropped down the vent with the bomb, so maybe when I say no dramas, there's a slight one. That's a cash injection. Carrigan. Yoink. Daylight robbery. Thank you very much. Robs has found some damage. And he won't be long for this world. Towards dark. Spams away, found by Zontix, defused to come through. But if I'm FaZe, I consider that a win. Oh, yeah. Oh, most definitely. When you, when, when you consider what was invested and what you gained, I'll consider that one a flat win in the column. Although, albeit, three CT rounds consecutive fashion from Team Spirit. And there was a smile on the face of Donk there. So, uh, what does that mean? <laughs> Brokey. It means he's only just getting started. Yeah, let's find out. Brokey, yeah. Uh, it was the ability if they wanted to drop an AWP across, but T-side of Nuke can be quite difficult to wield that weapon. It will be operating with five AKs. Shiro, however, has his out to play. What's the game plan going to look like for FaZe? This is another map where they haven't been able to make the mark on Spirit previously, but... With Mirage going in their favor, the conversation is completely different. She takes a lick of damage. The Smoke to land front squeaky. Does create some problems. Is there a vent slip? Something that Romps once upon a time very good at. Sowing the seeds of doubt, forcing the rotations. Is now a smoke wall on yard warehouse. As well as main, constricted a vision. Wow, there's a lot of moving parts. In the opening 30 seconds here of our second map. Great. Maneuvering forwards. He's overlooked him. Dom gets a freebie. A lazy clear from Rain. How did that go down?
Shiro's found frozen on the uh, yard towards Red now with his AWP. Brokey cut down by Chopper and FaZe falter into the gun round. Empty handed bar one frag. I think they're going to keep it that way. Oh, Frot. No, it's not bad from Rops. Don't getting a bit greedy. Frisky with that one. 40 seconds. Another difficult clear. Runs to his demise. Zontix will take that. Thank you very much. Yeah, I think the smoke was just obscuring well, Donk in the corner. But they had a whole game plan right there. The HE into the smoke. That's a premeditated strategy that they were just running with. So Donk fortunate to survive and finds the damage. Phase into a tactical timeout. Neo, absolute legend of the game, an opportunity to have a conversation. Going to consider the finances as well. With that plant and the loss burner starting to build, there is a conversation for a few investments. Try and limit how much money Spirit can start to build on this CT side, and we can see it taking shape on our screens. A hero AK again, a scout for Carrigan, and a mixture of pistols. What's Rob's going to bring on in? Just a deagle. Max loss bonus into the next, so there should be more than enough money to guarantee a buy for everybody going into round number eight, but what damage and what story does round number seven have available? Because if we just reflect again on Barrage, phase came to play. They weren't messing about. Scout of Carrigan makes sense towards outside. Pressure from Brokey on the AK, gonna break the smoke. And they've dealt with it quite easily. Yeah, that's comfortable. Still hope for phase on the Rifles of Rain. And Frozen. Oh, yeah. Oh. And Rops. Ooh, ships in the night. It's comfortable from Magic's good night. Yeah, that type of round they needed to find it. Oh, actually, maybe they can plant. Chopper smoked off. That's a big smoke. It does facilitate a potential plant. The Molly, it's a little late. But Rain gets the bomb down, gets away miraculously. How is he still alive? Molly. Yeah, he, How is he well, they, still alive? They pre-smoked it, right? Yeah, I mean, he's gotten away with at least the plant, but frozen in a 1v4, I think that's asking a little too much. Shiro thinks the same. Okay. This is the spirit that we were hoping to see. He's starting to wear into action now. Three rounds to the good. I'm going down yet again. As mentioned, there was going to be more than enough finances, but that's going to guarantee for Brokey, who's actually going to get dropped in AWP. So we see the game plan evolving. Four phase. The pistol and the conversion against the cleanest of Ecos to get them to two rounds. So they need to really start getting a little bit of traction before the half gets too far away from them. Yeah, let's see what the call is. It's going to be interesting. You've got everything you need now. Donker will adopt this more passive main hold. He's got the setup made. It frees up Shiro towards Secret. And it looks like a late set of smokes to be limped out from Carrigan. You can see him parked deep towards spawn. There it is, the waterfall smoke. Tom Main. Warehouse vision denied yet again. The one landing top of Unbreakable. Oh. What? Yeah, just getting found. Rob's trying to find space. So it didn't really force any gaps, did it? No, Rob's getting caught. That's a bitter pill for FaZe to swallow. Rain trying his luck around these smokes again. Once bitten, twice shy. Smoke has faded. He's worried about Donk in main. Little does he know, Donk right behind you. He's a pantomime in action. Donk strikes onto Rain. He's got his number now, eight frags, and running away with it, a team spirit. Brokey left alone in a 1v5. No real way back in. No fun to be had. He is being hunted. Elevation. Oh, wow. Motivation from Brokey. A beautiful flick. Catches Magics as he ascends the ladder. And three more remaining, all ready to strike. He next reveals his position as Chopper spotting the cross, and there it is. Donk raising his voice in the Royal Arena, anticipating a 4-3 mapper. And Vertigo would be that third and deciding map. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, two T rounds. It's not the end of the world, says FaZe fans in 
this arena, thinking there's more twists and turns in our second map of play. But this has been some convincing scenes. I'm looking at the casualties of this run. Yeah, look, there's only been nine kills in the last six rounds of play. Okay. So the fact that they're not really making a dent is starting to be a bit of an issue. But Team Spirit are the ones to take the tactical timeout. Things seem to be going too good. They want to have a discussion about how many more rounds they can slather on top. Now, I say one of the positives for FaZe is they have been able to get the bomb down in a couple of rounds. It's facilitated them with the loss bonus, a couple of extra rounds. That was Chopper catching Rops, trying to slip out behind that smoke, get in towards the vent, Donk with an easy one. And Zontix felt like he was going to get caught off guard. Frozen pushing through the unbreakable smoke. Thought he had the jump, but wasn't ready for Zontix, just swing it out. Couple of kills for Brokey short. Well, this one has set piece written all over it. Tech Nine's back 10, squeaky to be blown off. Donk with some more variants. He's on rain again. Oh, and he tames the spray onto the Norwegian. Rops is in trouble. Oh, Chop it. Surely tap away at him. He's got into 20 HP. Garrigan gets nothing, and no one can get past Zontix. Cool as a cucumber collects three. Yeah. Rops down the vent. They know where you are, Donk. Just swinging between these two opportunities. A little bit of a window for Rops, but Donk, he'll collect the other two. And between the two of them, Zontix on your screen and Donk, all five to secure seven on this CT side. Well, it wasn't like Donk didn't have his confidence on Mirage, but it feels like the rest of the team are there now as well. Taking a lot of these fights and Zontix, the man on your screen, had a tough go on Mirage, right? He is this more supportive or anchor element. That's uh, normally great for the multi-kills when the chips are down, and now he's really stepping up. They can't bully him towards ramp as Spirit quickly up to seven rounds. They are running away with this first half of play. We have to remind you, back in Caddo, when they played Nuke, it was 13-5, and then the second time they played in the grand final, 13-9. So couldn't even get double digits, phase plan. Traditionally, Seen as an iconic face clan strength. They just used all their util on this, Alex. They only have a smoke, a couple. Uh, hold up a second. They've left mollies. Left mollies for what could be a double pump. So it doesn't feel as bad as it just looked. Yeah, it's bleak though. If these opening jewels continue not to go their way, Donk focus towards the up top sight and it's rocked to behead him. A huge. Deviation from the norm for FaZe folks. Finding the headshot onto Donk. Zontix filling the gap on Yard. Smokes will be thrown. Feels like they've got infinite utility right now, doesn't it? Two now for the cross. And the bomb is at the tail of this pack. Playing close to the smoke, want to obscure the sight line of heaven as Shiro flubs the ladder. Isn't going to get there in time and wasn't even taking a gander anyway. They are giving up the lower side as they look to push and clear out lobby. He's sending the top with Util and Steps still two lobbies. Zontix looking for answers. This could be the end of Carrigan. The Rops as well could be exposed here. Not ready. Carrigan one onto Chopper, anticipating another and nails it. Carrigan humbled by Magix into the 3v2. Oh, you have a lot of cash. There's heaps of residual finances available for Spirit going forward. You can see now with the two alive, 11k for Shiro, 8.8 .8 for Magix, and plenty of money on the three already in the grave looking for reinvestments. This is a must win for FaZe. All that hard work. And just being contained, it seems, by yeah. Magix. Looking for damage, knowing that FaZe, even in a round victory, only going to get the round win bonus. Bomb's going to go off. They'll have enough, but if you can limit their finances, make it a little bit sketchy. Already looking for a way out is Rain. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Jumping. Yeah, look. Uh, Diligent from Rain. And bows them out. All three will stay alive. So important. Important. The halves can get away from you real quick with the MR12. Ain't that so. Only two more rounds of play available, so that's going to help them down the home stretch. But as mentioned, there was more than enough for Spirit to buy back in. Wow, and actually, that's quite surprising to see. Seven rounds up, you're four to the good, and Spirit take their second tactical timeout in the first half. Yeah, interesting. Huh? So what are we looking for if we're Howley, right? We're talking eight, four, or nine, three would be very strong first halves, right? You'd be very happy with that. You feel like you could close, get the pistol, should be done, close the book, move over to Vertigo, and that's where you have the surprise for FaZe, or from FaZe, should I say.
the fact that they floated it. They're perma ban. And I do, I do like the fact here that Spirit haven't shied away and gone, well, let's go to territory that we know, let's go to ancient, it's like, let's punish them. Right, let's punish this petulance that's on display. And with so many days to prepare, it's going to be interesting if we get that to just see what the complexion of uh, both of these squads on Vertigo is, given how oh, it is less frequently seen. I think FaZe, with at least the four of them, have played it about seven times. Yeah. That's over a two-year span. Yard space. Rain the point man. No surprise there. Worried about an up close and personal donk. He's in main once more. Shiro already rotating down towards secret. Sees the flames, calls out the progression, and readies himself. Major debutante in his quarterfinal. Whoa. Oh, wow. Rain wrecked Shiro there. The orb just cut down, and already this round feels like, yeah, you can't go down the vents. Chopper second guessing that the Molly will confirm his suspicions. And now eyes on Zontix. The ramp player with the window already broken could start to cook up an aggress. It's rain clearing. Oh, rain. Disgusting. He's only got four kills. Yeah, he's doubled his kill total, but those were two stunning headshots. They were vicious. Oh my, so he takes down the Orpa, and then he takes down the ramp player. Magix is the one filling that gap. Donk still main doing nothing. There is someone, I wonder if the uh, process, the audio are frozen on top main. Well, this is one of the things, when you're playing in an arena, you have to yeah. play to the environment. Sometimes it's gonna be a little bit harder to hear some of these sound cues. And not only that, you've always got communication flowing. I think they're winning this one, Spirit. No, but my question is, is, uh, is there any sort of reward to being conservative here? FaZe probably wouldn't mind keeping hold of everything, taking this uh, fifth round into the, the next. Chopper and, Matt and Donk have plenty of cash to splash. I think FaZe can send a comfort hunt. Yeah, I mean, the AK's nice, right? Donk would like to keep that through. And he's controlling his spray very... Competently, Brokey, catch your nade. No, goes wide and hits the headshot. Face making a T half out of this one, and that one can be ascribed to half hard nine guard. Uh, the biggest thing in that round, as you mentioned, is the AKs being removed. Right, that, that, that's the best result for Phase. There was still plenty of cash in the coffers, and this from Rain. A swing against the orb, beautiful. And this one, Bob, felt like a one tap, but multiple bullets required to get the job done. Just knowing your angles, I mean, you know, he's a veteran for sure. And it's good to see him warming up late and towards this half. He will be integral on the CT side. Yeah, you want to see him warm. Major MVP. In Antwerp. Again, so Carrigan waiting for the information. Is anybody up close towards red? Are they trying to be disruptive of our yard progress? Waterfall smoke of the ready once more. This is the game plan. Final chance for FaZe to post a T-side round. The bar that they'll be setting for Team Spirit on the side swap. Chopper uh, descends the, ahead of the util. The way that he's operating on the ladder makes me feel that he thinks someone slipped, right? The fact that he's so nervous on the ladder, showing his toes, seeing if he gets shot at. Interesting wall. Limits the options of Zontix. Rain? Just walked straight into him. Beautiful awareness. Zontix, he finds first blood here, but there's another a little further than he expected. Karakin levels it out for on 445. Uncertainty, you can see. Knowing heaven and hell could be occupied has got magics on high alert. Oh, he's lucky. He gets thing through. 9 HP lives on. 20 seconds, though. This is uncomfortable for FaZe. Donk versus Carrigan. I think this determines the whole thing. Oh, and Donk finds Carrigan. 15 seconds. You've got to find four. A double from Donk. Triple in total. Planting Shiro, surely. What? Brokey gets one, gets away. Shiro misses the shot. There's a chance he can clutch this. Three seconds. Two seconds. Shiro holds on. <laughs> Down to the wire there, the buzzer beater. 
Shiro committing to the fight. Brokey head on a swivel, hitting some bangers to turn that into a one-on-one -on -one in the blink of an eye. But not enough. 8-4 on the half. And that cat and mouse game is the story of the first half for me. The slip down the vent, or at least the possibility, you can see Chopper worrying about it all half long. Donk with so much impact from the heavens. Stalling out that squeaky leak. And they're four rounds away from at least forcing overtime on map number two. Zontix with the first Carrigan again, finding impact. Now this is Donk, grenade landing. Follow up with another onto Frozen and Shiro. Under so much pressure, he's like, do I hide? Do I take the fight? Well, Brokey brought it to him. Smoking a kit for Brokey. And a lot of util again from Team Spirit. You highlighted this on Mirage, their T-side pistol. There was a lot of nades. It was a lot of moving parts for a pistol round and the same to be said yet again. Yeah, I mean, there's, this already opens up so many possibilities, right? The door's been naded. Look at this. Sweet Hold up a second. Smoked. And Rain is being held by Chopper. Is he ready for this? He just looked away. Oh, oh, God, he's completely ruined their plan for Util. Dead on Chopper's cold corpse. Dropping into the vent, Rops was ready to receive. Brokey and Rain have found the headshots. It's only Shiro. A perfect phase plan pistol. Someone's done their homework. That is massive from Rain. Uh, that completely unravels the execute, the availability, what we're expecting to see. The key piece, the in-game leader on the roof, ready to rain down Hellfire, top hut. They have to hit the goal, and now it's just Shiro, and he's about to go down in the back. A couple of his shots, Shiro. We'll get the frag, but that's all he'll get. Brokey to secure the second pistol in the map. And this is sitting pretty, but maybe we have a story of the first, where both pistols go in the favor of the team to lose the map. Some Norwegian support. Well, this is essentially four of phases rounds in the map. Pistol and then a freebie into the next. Yeah, they're going to have to replicate the way in which some of those rounds came through for Team Spirit. Full clocks, though. Should be a nice casual opportunity for us to take a break. FaZe Clan just keep this one clean, right? Rain. It's interesting to see Spirit having to operate under pressure as well. I know the first half was pretty good for them. But still, there's these scenarios where they're the ones being forced to make a decision based off of Faze taking the fight. Mm. And the fact that Rain is just going, there's nobody outside, I'm going to keep walking, keep creeping. That's really such a disruptive frag as it's, oh, let of your bodies outside. Uh-oh. Shouldn't be any more issues. Yeah, some significant damage there. Harrigan racks himself up a triple. And yeah, Donk. Donk and his Glock in the yard. He's not one to go down without a fight, but there he goes. Robs picks it up. I'm happy to see that it's Carrigan who's been getting uh, the lion's share of these eco-bash kills. You know, an in-game leader's got to get his. Yeah, absolutely. Now is the time in those rounds. We're only two rounds away from tying this up. On the preferred side, their map choice of nuke. And we're already starting to flirt with the idea of Vertigo just around the corner, but there's still plenty of hard work to be done for Team Spirit. Brokey, AWP comes out first gun round. Let's see if he can find impact with that. Seven consecutive was the bar set by Spirit. Oh, Chopper burning quite significantly. Donk taking almost damage to half HP as well. He's down. Rops is two, though. Donk catches Carrigan. They're pushing, and top site's open for business. Donk and Zontix have just walked in and claimed this site for their own. And that was a problem that FaZe had back in the grand final in Katowice. So the right. top site felt very fragile. Felt like there were a lot of gaps. It was exploited and waltzing in towards A. I no dramas. I wonder if we could review how that gap was, was manufactured. It must be between Carrigan and Frozen, one would assume. Because Robs was down early to attend to Chopper, right? Yeah, and it was Rain and Brokey to deal with Yard early. But once the smoke wall is up, they were starting to rotate back. So this is the expectation. Is it a heavy secret play, or are they going to pressure ramp? Are they going to try and split lower right. through those two? No. It's popping through main, split the site. 
And this is where you do have to take a couple of risks, right, on the CT side. You want to try and be strong across the map where you can be. And they're walking to their demise. Chomper will fall. Work, isn't he? Be clear from rain. Important to have them all staying alive. There will be enough money for a buy into the next. Frozen will be able to buy himself. Rops will be able to drop his leader. So more than enough for FaZe to fight back with another buy round, and they definitely will do so with two saved rifles and the AWP still in the hands of Brokey. But Don't. that looks very simple for Spirit. Yeah, just Donk and Sontix kind of walking into that top side, getting themselves one each. That frag felt pedestrian, just strolled in. Into main, taking them down. And this is MR12, it's so cutthroat. Nine already in the bank. That's the first T side round we've seen from Team Spirit. We haven't really had a back and forth tussle though, have we? You know, this game has felt somewhat one sided. I think Mirage, obviously, those lighter buy rounds are the big difference makers. Type of rounds where Spirit, even on their CT side, were getting opening kills and then were unable to convert. Hasn't been a tussle, hasn't felt awfully clutch heavy in the round timeline. Helps demonstrate that with that streak of seven that you highlighted just moments ago. Faze can change that. Yeah, it has to start now, though. That just has a Mac 10 and a decent spawn. Yeah. Roki, very aggressive. Peeking over the Molotov and making sure they heard that. In fact, they may not be expecting this, but the SMG is starting to push straight through. Slowed by the smoke. Chopper out and about on Yacht. Announces his presence, still will get a cross. Interesting. Rob's using another smoke towards Rat. That's just framing straight through it. That's not a fight for a MAC-10. Oh, That's not a fight for a MAC-10. How has that gone wrong for Rob's? That is disastrous. They're coming towards Frozen. He's been looking nice with it. Thinks twice and burnt down. Slowed by Shiro. The Molotov connects and now a very uncomfortable nuke for FaZe. Robs is going to be really punching the air, punching his desk, conceding a mid-range engagement with a MAC-10. That is wild that Magix has won that. And it just forced his phase into yet another save with three players. He was alone. It was, he jumped through a smoke on his own with an SMG. That is an everyday frag for Robs. It, it feels like in the last two rounds that Chopper has a great understanding of the phase rotations, having them in the back pocket. Mm because the gaps that they've either been able to fight or find have uh, looked pretty fluid. Double digits secure. Shiro will go down with the bomb. It's not the end of the world. Again, we have to look at the finances. Rain can drop, Brokey can drop. It can be another rifle round. Eventually, they are going to have to fight for some of these. Four rounds the difference. And the drops have taken shape. Here it is from Magix. Yeah, it looks like he should have been dead to rights. I mean, he controlled that spray beautifully. This, let's not take it away from Magix so much as it was still a, a, a screamer from Robs. Rain isolated then. He's going to be doing an awful lot of heavy lifting if he can get past this. Ahead of the smokes is Dong, hoping to punish Rain as he spams. He's not going to be ready. And just like that, the gap is found. Oh, what? Frozen <laughs> couldn't believe it. Zontix was trying to climb down his head. Four of them now going down secret. It's only Frozen here right now. They're noisy. Yeah, he's going to have to call for backup. This is crazy. This is crazy. The whole team's down here. Shiro's going to clear you out, Frozen. You've nailed that. Is there anything more? Oh, frozen! Unbelievable triple! And here comes Robs. Cherry on tops. And Dunk down after one! FaZe Clan have found their hero on Nuke and Frozen. Keeps up the form we saw on map one. That is exactly what Frozen needs to do in this team. Statement rounds where he steps up, puts the round on his back and converts with a massive multi and they weren't easy fights. They weren't easy fights at all. Was he the one that got Zontix jumping up his face? He was, but they knew he had to be somewhere. Yeah. 
They knew he had to be somewhere, or at least they thought he did. Hence the Shiro clear, looking for him. Where did this boy go? Yeah, it felt lazy though, didn't it? Just rounding that corner. They didn't catch him on the jump spot either. And when most players play this position, right, this is wild, absolute wild scenes. Usually when you jump spot and you see Four the bullets. cross, right? Four bullets! Yeah, that is wild. The restraint on him. And then it opens the door for Rops to come down and be jarring. Great job from Frozen. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Well, that could be the fire starter for FaZe. Team Spirit with the opener. Donk manufacturing that. Well, money for a buy. They brought it back out. And Galula in the hand to chop up. Brokey's AWP again. Oh, towards Yarp, and it's going to be rain in combination with Brokey. The flames to get it done. Donk dead. Brutal. Forced to watch from the sidelines, it seems. Can they do it without him? 18 kills at the moment for Donk. Next closest on his team, Zontix with 14. Smoke's going to start to fade. Oh, he doesn't spot anything, Brokey, on the AWP. They are down. Whose responsibility is it this time? If already Molotov off the vent option, it's Rops dropping in towards Dark. No, maneuvers towards the front of control. Good on the flight path of Chopper. Cuts him down. Now it's Rain. <laughs> what a spray. Takes down both of them. Zontix left alone in yard with no hope. But the last two rounds, Spirit, once they've got the space, they've just run with it. I think trying to, again, punish FaZe's rotations. But yes. it feels like FaZe have been able to find the answer. Uh, Rops. You were right, it did look like he wanted to drop down towards Dark, but heard those steps coming, door swings open, maneuvers for one, and then Rain rotates in time. Face back to a two-round game as Zontix has no choice but to save. Plenty of time to see this one simmer out. Is it me, Chad, or are these last couple of rounds, you've talked about the pace of them, this is like uncharacteristic speed from Spirit? Yeah, I'm not sure why they've just had the penny drop and decided, hey, we need to go, we go. full gas. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Full gas, no stop. And it's really cost them because they're not being diligent. They're running into these positions where they can get multi-frag. Their spacing hasn't been good. Like that was a rain triple kill round from primarily ramp. How often is rain there? And meanwhile, Zontix with 150 bucks coming into the next round of play. His teammates are not going to have much to their name, at least an AK-47 and Kev for Zontix. Yeah, conversation starting to shift now. 2,400 available into the next round of play. It's starting to feel like the pressure just turned up a notch. Now Spirit in trouble, or do they have an answer? Rops was great, and then they just baited the line of sight. They run out trying to deal with him. Rain steps out, grabs a couple. It's a great team play. The Zontix saved AK has been given the good graces of a couple of smokes. Get him some space, but the fact that they're trying to do it off the rip and this deep, you see it again. They've had to brave the flames. I'm not sure what the util damage is of Rain right now, but he's definitely been licking with the flames more often than not. Yeah, and it's cut Zontix down to just two body shots. One more will do it. Zontix put low. Chopper already in a grave. They might have to just change the pacing on their progression outside, especially if Rain's going to keep throwing that. Yeah, and just as easy as that, Rain flashed in by Brokey, takes down the rifle, and we're looking at a one-round game here. Donk at least has picked up the AK. Maybe there's something more to be said, financial damage. Having to operate without any armor whatsoever. Yeah, no fun. A two-man discrepancy. No space. Zontix is begging that they can get the bomb down right now. The loss bonus into the next won't get him a bite. They found the corner into a nice little setup from FaZe. So no real dramas, just Shiro. 25 seconds left on the clock. Let's pick up the AK. Brokey, he's had enough of that. FaZe, just one round the difference now. Still not going to be what I would consider a full buy available for that of Spirit. Zontix is going to go wanting into this round. Gonna have to operate with something a little bit lighter. AKs for most. Chopper with a Galil. I love it. I wonder if they could do the drum as like the kind of the, the heartbeat of the round. 
picks up pace when things are exciting, maybe slows down when things are a little less active. Can't still challenge for you. As he goes for one audacious little one tap there. Brokey thinks twice of sticking around. Again, towards Yard, just look at the damage they're taking from Yuta before Spirit can even get going. Uh, so now, well, there's a real opportunity here. I wonder if Magix is wise to Rops' tricks. Both of them staring at this. Oh, no, Magix <laughs> cooks him. That's a big gap, that's a big opportunity, and that's brave from Carrigan. He's taken down the bomb carrier, Chad. What does that mean? Brokey's there in support as well. Warband under Carrigan, he's being stubborn with it. Oh, Brokey, he lets that go. Donk dead, Carrigan taken down Donk. Now he considers his mission accomplished. He's taken down two players and put the bomb on the floor. It's not to be worried about this, are they still causing a fuss over towards Hutt? Chopper playing in the smoke. We'll find some space. Carrigan with Bogdan's Law picks up the AWP. Now Brokey can be unleashed. Oh, I love this. Picked up the bomb with 37. The red carpet is rolled out for a post plant here, Chad. They have a smoke, but they do have two mollies. One towards windows is going to be possible. Door's going to get blown off, so they're going to flush anybody out who might reside. Rotating in now, Carrigan. 4v3, bomb needs to go down. 15 seconds. Carrigan swings over the decon door. He'd have to go wide. He's covered. Nice. Magics onto Carrigan. Spirit flipping the script, but Rain made it even more uncomfortable. Onto Magics. That's a big one. Shiro nails Frozen. The impact fragger. Watching from the sidelines, it's Rain in the 1v2. He has got time, but has he got a chop? Oh! Chopper locks it in for Team Spirit. They definitely gave him an opportunity there. He takes the fight, they both swing. The first goes his way, but the second, the in-game leader for Spirit, locks it in. Incredible to see Counter-Strike fans in celebration of the new engine, the new game, CS2's first major, and just towards the end of their working week, fans have flocked to the Royal Arena here in Copenhagen. And we're getting a game of Counter-Strike. Finally locking horns, the two of them, not just a spirit blowout, not just looking like a 2-0 in favor of FaZe. One round now for Team Spirit. They've had to battle tooth and nail. Searching for solutions, offered up an opening from Rops. This time round, Brokey again, poshes with the AWP. Respecting the Utah a little bit more so. Will be Team Spirit, nobody gonna burn down to half HP. This crawl is on a timer, the smokes. So plenty of time for now, but Donk needs to get a move on. Slowly descending, leaving Zoptix with a nade across his face. They boxed them in. Interesting timing on that smoke there. Just as they arrive, it's kind of rain, just raising a red flag. I saying, don't think no. he meant to throw it like that. Look at the, they can go they back can then. Yeah, so that must have been misthrown. Didn't oh. quite catch the trajectory. It's not going to cause an over-rotation. But yeah, there is a potential slip to back then. Rain. Stays restrained, Rob's in support from the spread. They're not rushing at this time round, taking their time as Spirit. Right. A diligent clear from Donk. It's Magic's first contact. He's going to find them, and he's going to lose his head. It's a big start. Man advantage for FaZe. Pressure to plant on Team Spirit. There's another ooh, instantaneous headshot from Shiro. Rob takes his place. Shiro seems very well drilled and ready. Good find, though, and the door is open. He can't disrupt the plant. Dog providing some covering fire. Three players from FaZe are trapped on the top side. They're disconnected from this low plant. Sontix has a molly. This could come in clutch. Oh, it's certainly going to come in clutch now. With loss of Rob's, Carrigan has to do more than one. Can't. Dog strong. 
2v2, time sensitive, no opportunity for Brokey. It has to be frozen. Otherwise, a 12th round is coming. It seems Sontix has just secured it. He knows. Brokey does too. Team Spirit are one away from forcing Vertigo. Oh, it feels like that conversation can finally begin. It's been quite touch and go. But Team Spirit, without picking up a pistol here on Nuke, the map choice of phase are about to take us to uncharted territory. This is not a map that FaZe play. This is FaZe's permaban. It's like they are yet to dine on with Frozen. And then you have to ask the question, what changes with the setup, right? With Frozen coming in, what have they been cooking? If they knew this was going to slip through and always be a possibility, that's for the test to discuss. We've got to see if Spirit can get it done right here, right now. Look at the fragile purchase. All the money shoved in towards the center of the table. Whilst, FaZe fighting for their honor. Whilst I agree, three sounds tantalizing. Let's find out if there's anything here from FaZe Clan's defense. It is a Brokey AWP, partnered up with smattering of lesser weapons and MP9. But Brokey's orb about to be tested here, and he's quick with it. Taking down Zomplex, the jumping magics plucked from the air by Robs on the MP9. Strong start, frozen. Oh, he's... Catching some sort of timing here from Chopper. Dead, doesn't clear, clean. Carrigan versus Doc, another for his head to head. Yes, indeed. Base, they managed to take it convincingly. With just an SMGs, Chad, that was supposed to be it. That was supposed to be just the last putt to take us to three. Really interesting conversation to be had now. 1,900 losses to the next. Nice little time to bring up the cash on screen for everybody. Your team spirit, and you don't shove. Next round, you're going to have a couple of AKs, a couple of Galils. So do you want to shove all in, or do you want to take the eco? And it looks like the eco option is the one Chopper has called forward with. So FaZe will be given a free opportunity to get 11 rounds on the board. It'll be up to FaZe if we go to overtime. And it started in style. Brokey on the chopper, the deagle for Donk. Oh, Ray. Trying to get cheeky with it. He does take down Donk with the bell, but they'll keep it quick, they'll keep it efficient. Our final round of regulation. It's either OT or Spirit forcing us to three. Uh, you can see with the buy taking shape right now, three Galils, a Mac 10, and an AK. Definitely far from ideal. Is that a second orb that's been born? Uh, it looks like there's a second orb over towards CT spawn. They're going to run double orbs right now. Intriguing. Well, they can always go back for the other rifle. Sure. This could sure. cause some issues. Drops on the second AWP. This was how Mirage started off so dynamically. It kind of threw Team Spirit through a loop. Now we go. Round 24, folks. Every move you make. Rain is watching you. Donk on the yard. This time not with the rest of the pack. They're looking to pop top, Chad. Many a heartbreaking nuke. With a pace change into the top side. It's Brokey, though. Denies. Lovely double on the AWP. Shiro and Zoptix left wanting, empty-handed as overtime looms. Face, forcing, 12, 12, only one more frag needed. The orb to fill the feed, or should I say orb? It's Brokey, puts himself to the top of the board. And Face extends play map two. Rain's family watching there in the crowd. That's 12, 12 secure. Yeah, FaZe had to bring this entertaining style of Counter-Strike and I'm glad we're getting it this time round. Rolling with the punches and throwing a couple of their own. Oh. Yeah, that is beautiful from Brokey, isn't it? What more could you ask for? But they're definitely playing their style, right? They're playing like FaZe should. And fired up now, the momentum shift. Spirit had them right where they wanted them. They did. An AWP and some MP9s. That was all they needed to get past to lock in map number three. It's Brokey, boys. You've got to watch out for Brokey. He's on a heater. 
We do have a lot of flashes. Chopper's about to just barrage utility into the top side. Carrigan, first man to resist. He hasn't got too much in the way of support. Here they come. What's he got? Carrigan getting tested here. An extinguish, but burning, burning! Carrigan, 100 to zero. Thought he'd have thrown the smoke to do enough, but there's rain. It's in a 4v4. Bomb's still in lobby. The chopper's not in the site, and he has the bomb. So he has to get past ramp, get in towards the site. The smokes are starting to fade, though. That's the problem. Yeah. And rain's utility. Oh, and a bit of chip damage there onto Zontix. Hasn't limited Shiro's options. He's still going to be hard to clear. They're trying to come up the vent. They're trying to come up the ladders all over the shop. Spin switch. Shiro still catches him. Frozen did not clear him. But somehow, it's still quite even. I say that as Zontix tips the scales in Spirit's favor. He gets the kill and still gets the incendiary off towards heaven. So, so much done in terms of impact to secure that site. Felt like it was going to be more of a treacherous pass for Chopper with that C4, but he gets it in. They get it down. Spirit will respond to hold on to this AWP. Sure, we're in overtime, but cash is not unlimited. I'm gonna keep that in the back of his mind it is Brokey. All right, well, that's come uh, a few rounds too late if you're a Team Spirit fan. Most definitely. You'll feel a bit hard done by, a bit robbed that we couldn't just make that happen in regulation. Oof, and we just saw Halley deciding to take their only tactical timeout for this overtime. Since we've shifted to MR12, once we make it to overtime, there is going to be one timeout for each team. So each set of potentially six rounds, both teams will have an opportunity to call a 30-second tactical chit-chat. And it feels like, I don't want to say the pressure of the moment, I don't think it's gotten to spirit, right? They've been looking more like themselves within this map of play. It's more FaZe who have stepped up to the plate and bringing that top level of Counter-Strike. But there it is from Carrigan, thinking he can just call the bluff on the flames and hoping to get a kill before he goes down. They just didn't come out that hot. Yeah, I think he had the expectation that there was pace there. You're right. Thought he could get away with one or two before the Flames found him. And it wasn't just a top hut molly. You could see them also go for the rafter molly as well. Yeah. So layers on layers from Spirit. Five AK-47s in the mix. It could be quick. Look at Zontix. He's already out squeaky. They're just running at them. Chad, they've run them down. Frozen and Carrigan watching. That's off for the timeout. Halley just called that, and they've gone straight in towards the top rush. Oh, oh wow, FaZe. Most definitely going to be feeling kind of rocked. Well, Ears if, ringing. What just happened? If part of the game plan is to be disruptive and make sure they couldn't execute, they didn't give them any time to stall them out. It was just a top pop. <laughs> the fact that they're boosting on the box to stop you from getting up the ladder. It's just extra levels of cheese. It's beautiful. There's nothing here for you now, Brokey. Rain, you can have a look. There's nothing for you here. It's a 14th for Team Spirit with one of the quickest rounds we've seen yet. Halley calls the timeout. As you discuss, you only get one. And he just throws the whole squad into the top side. That's going to feel damn good. Now, how does Chopper proceed forward? Was he given instructions to follow for the final round? the first half of OT, the magic number that we're looking for in OT number one is 16, 15, 15. We do it all again. And Zontix, he knew what his mission was. Straight out that squeaky door. Destroying the hopes and dreams of FaZe in that top side hold. Rush A, no stop. Surely they don't go for the same play again. Nah. But remember, they were having issues when they were taking secret space with the walls. So I don't expect to see them go back to that standard type of play. Be a different flavor for sure. It's Dunk feeling it. Doesn't drop main. Drops yard though. Flash from Carrigan. Wants answers towards lobby and that's a bit more proactive from face. Really do not want to allow it to set up to execute. A gap in the smoke wall. Is it going to bleed over ever so slightly? But Brokey from his position has vision. Oh, but they've lost Frozen. Disadvantage phase, the CT side wallowing in despair as a second wave of util spawns. Molly for good measure, Rain peeking around them. Trying to find anything he can work with here, trying to tip the scales back in phase's favor. 50 seconds, Dog versus Rain. He's just looked away. Rain deletes. 
defeated. Double out of dunk. Carrigan, not going to be cleared. I spoke too soon. It's magic to close. And a perfect half of overtime. Absolutely flawless stuff. And it feels like every time they've manifested a play through the smoke, Spirit have come out on top. Ramp with magics. Donks earlier on in the CT side where they popped through. Right. And now this time, just lurching through and deleting any hopes for his hat. Donk, the destroyer of dreams. Through the smoke, Rain considered it for a moment. As soon as he averts his gaze, Donk there broke. He can't believe it down as well. The double from Donk, securing 15 for Team Spirit. Map two. Well, FaZe have thought we may as well take this timeout to collect ourselves because we have to do the same. Why not? Three consecutive required on their T-side campaign. You have to tip your hat to the likes of Donk and Zontix to be a map down in a pressure environment, their first major, their first major playoffs, on their first stage. But shining under the lights, just one more round required. This is where it ends, on Nuke. They've got yard control. This is very heavy from Spirit. This is full yard control for Spotted Info. Spotted by Rain, I suspect. Or at least considering the possibility. Util to be thrown out as well. Shiro's posted for this. This is a full biff in yard. Molotov's in back. Well-placed utility there. Frozen could be catching that nade. Imagine if he actually nailed it. Oh, very lucky to be alive. Instead, it's the orb tagged up, now trapped. Oh, run down but supported. This is crazy. Deathmatch right now on Yard. Teammates bailing each other out. Shiro goes down to the smoke. Chopper's next on the naughty list. Look how low he is. You can't leave here. Yeah, you can't leave. Brokey ensures it. Now this dastardly duo have taken lobby. Where's the bomb? They're still down towards Yard. They're gonna have to go back towards Silo to pick that up. It'll be difficult to punch your way through. Rops on high alert. Bomb now collected from Frozen. 35 seconds left on the clock. How could this go wrong, Chad? 30 seconds. If they don't just go lower, right? And they go in towards the two individuals' top side. That's a problem. Carrigan making uh -huh. a lot of noise towards B, but they're coming A. Well, doesn't matter if Brokey hits his shot, but Magic is still a problem. He's taken down the bomb carrier. Brokey goes down. Oh, my God. It really could have slipped away right there. What happened to Brokey? He was looking at the ground. Looking for the bomb, I suppose. <laughs> Didn't expect the repeat. That would have been a real mental breakup. Well, the heart stopped for a moment. Two more opportunities for Spirit to still tip us over towards that third map, but just two more rounds for FaZe for us to go again. They've been in this position before. And that yard control, moments away from disaster on either side of the server. Yeah. But Dom did a great job staying alive, the nades to get the individual off top of Silo. Speaking of top of Silo, that's where Brokey finds himself. Perched on the high ground. Slipping into what secret early. We'll be able to respond to any threats if they do to a smoke wall for the cross. Carrigan in spawn. Grenadier ready to unleash the fury of the nades. Setting his team up. Now remember, in regulation, there was a whole conversation regarding Rob slipping down the vent. Chopper having to deal with that round after round. But right now, he's assisting outside. I mean, the bar is set so incredibly high. Three T rounds. FaZe have to match that. They've got to keep it perfect. The favoured side here, the CT side. Oh, and the shadow. It leads to Chopper onto Rain. Down he goes. Donk is building. Closer and closer to map three. Out yard, overextending. Does Donk. No trade available as he gets across. Oh, Shiro spots one as well. It was the bomb. Yeah, okay. But could this be a recovered round? Carrigan full focus, Brokey, Molly's the vents, limits their options. Sontic springs into action by tucking into the dark. There is a smoke that could be hard to deny the plant. He's gonna have to let it go. Oh, oh. he nailed it. He's absolutely <laughs> nailed it. Fake it out. Brokey looking to 
hit one, but he's running out of time as well. He's gonna try and spam. This time Brokey gets it down. This is for survival. And oh, what? Rob's onto Chopper. There's two on two. Angle adopted. Shiro closing the gap. Rob's as well with him from the right. They call the bluff. They hit the shot. We go again. that is in form on a stage. This is the phase that we all want to see when the chips are down, when it looks like there's absolutely no chance. They pull up a round like that. How has that gone down like that? Zoptic's denying the plan. You think that's enough? Most definitely They had a 5v3 number advantage. Again, Spirit keep putting themselves in these positions to close out the game. Oh, but FaZe oh, aren't yeah. giving up. Oh, that's a tilter. That is a tilter. You can see it on their faces. They know that was supposed to be theirs. Vertigo was supposed to be locked in. Instead, FaZe might be able to force another overtime. Matching Spirit's 3T round run with three of their own. Oh, he was very close. Free aim was nice. On to Rain on the cross, just spams away. So far though, they are not shying away from this after he cut them in pieces. In Katowice on the smoke spams. This look at, time. Look at what they're working with though. A couple of MP9s, a scout. It's going to be tough. Carrigan's committed in the smoke with the bomb. Yeah, because they plan to nade and go, but they're not ready for the chopper clear. He will go down empty-handed. Some damage dealt, but Donk is here early. Broke his orb, looks struggle to... Big headshot from Rain. Hang on. Hang on a second. Hold your horses. It's only a scout. An AK-47 recovered and an MP9, otherwise we have to go again here on map two of our quarterfinal. The Royal Arena. Once more, once blood, bait shot, good find, Magix. He's heating up, time sensitive, Carrigan has secured it for FaZe, Rain will secure it as well. Nothing here for Shiro, we need a better. They were 12 to 9 down. An AWP, a couple of MP9s, they did it. They go into overtime. They lose the first half. Being on the CT side, 0 to 3. And then they pull it back. And I'm pretty sure the round they won in the previous was what? A 2v5, a 3v5? Yeah, no, for sure. At least a two man advantage for, for Spirit. The fact that we continue to go <laughs> and need another. This is exhilarating Counter Strike, but it, it's going to test the mental of Spirit. They already feel like they should have been loading up Vertigo and having a, a quick smoke break outside. Now, it smokes, but it's outside. Yard, we continue to play Noob Map 2. This time it's a complete ruse. Nobody out here to sell anything. Shiro perched up and over, trying to see if he can get any information. And you're right, it is the mental for Team Spirit to be under this type of pressure, to be under the pump in this environment. It's completely new territory where this is FaZe's home. Oh, the mind game is starting to sink in an early smoke wall now. They return. And they line up yet another. This time with intent. So they've had Brokey holding heart for the majority of this. And there's... Oh, what? There's Shiro's orb. Out-aimed. Outgunned by an AK-47. Rain, sharp shooting. Zontix off angle, jiggled out. Good find, but Brokey quick to the eye on the scope. Chopper to be presented with a chance at a double. The bomb is now at his doorstep in a three-on-three. Three. Got a lot to worry about, Ramp, as well as Secret. Carrigan slipping under. 30 Magix, seconds. Considering their options. They got the bomb back. Carrigan undetected. Magic's completely unprepared. Carrigan, he's cooking now. Where's the bomb? Froki drops it onto Carrigan, keeping the Yorper up in heaven. Rain provides the cover. Donk is gone. This first round for the T side of phase is set up. And you just take a look at Donk on the camera there. The stress is getting to them. The pressure is getting to them. They didn't consider heaven at all. The bomb down towards ramp. They know they're down secret. Really, there's a player up heaven as well. And Carrigan, he finds a way. He finds a solution. Chopper is going to give this one a go. What have you got, Chopper? A bullet between the eyes. Carrigan continues. Him and Rain, side by side, frag by frag, 
They are doing it. What a shot from Rain onto Shiro as well, because we yeah. were on board with him earlier into the round. He was staring at the smokes, and then it's the second wave, and oh. you can just see how much is visible. A great shot from Rain. 25 kills, joined by Brokey on 26. On this second map of play, and they are breaking the will of spirit right in front of our very eyes. And Donk does deliver. Takes down one of the stars of the show in rain. Opening kill. Oh, Hang on, Brokey. What is that? <laughs> You're going to have to explain that one again. <laughs> Thought he caught a time in, I suppose. Everyone's but... making plays, yeah. or attempting to. Trying. This time it's Donk's turn. Frozen onto him, though. And Joppa. Yeah, what is going on here? We've got a deathmatch round. Drops down. Big from Joppa. Double kill from him. Well, that's uh, a very interesting round indeed from FaZe. I think everybody got a uh, <laughs> free day from Carrigan to do what they'd like. Yeah. I mean, you want to keep uh, your opponent guessing. Just giving them a round over on the CT side, and apparently that's where it's turned to be the most difficult to do so. Yeah, bizarre. In the depths of overtime. Taking stock, good frag totals from the uh, debutants from the quarterfinal. Yeah, good showing from Duncan Sontix. If anything, you'd expect a bit more from Shiro and Magic. Look at this. He's just put, charging at them, running at them. There's another from Magic's double kill. There's some impact for you, Lobby Crunch in a full gun round in a major quarter final, and now Frozen oh, 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 oh. Nearly doing the absurd. Started heating out there, didn't he? Bro, but these calls, this is what happens when you get into a second overtime. You've, you've played the whole strap book, you just start calling pistol rounds on full gunnies. Now that is wild, right? You think about the two type of rounds since we've gotten here that Spirit have been able to throw out. The fast top after the Halley timeout, and now straight in towards Lobby. Guns are blazing. Everyone's a point, man. Oh, man. It's good Zontix put Frozen down. It looked like he was just starting to get a bit, uh, a bit crazy with it. And we're looking for 19, 18, 18, and we just keep this one going. Is there more? Give me more. Okay. Rain with the name. Nothing to report. Quiet on yard. Is he baiting out that CTU tilt? Making it look like there was a lot of pressure towards top side. No incendiaries remain to defend. So this is a tone setter. This is the team spirit back on the T side. Setting the tone for the three rounds to follow. Smoke Wolf for progression. Top site weakened. Mission accomplished. Roki, you found impact in this position before. And this time, again, Magic down. Molotov good, Brokey pushing. Oh, he's got a lot of support in rain. Donk, however, has combined. It's Frozen's over rotation that could cost him. Chopper spots him. Rops is still knife out up heaven. Hoping to keep them distracted. Covered by Donk. Nice headshot. And there it is, 18 in the bag, as Chopper lets out a guttural yell. They've been here so many times before. This isn't the first time Spirit have been one round away from securing map number two. I feel like a broken record at this point. It's about closing, it's about getting that magic number. And Halley this time has saved the tactical timeout for that right moment. Can he make the round winning call for his team? Every time he's done this though, it's been something pacey. There's no way you have the cojones to throw something pacey into the mix once more. Well, this is just the chess game. Yeah, sure. In so many different looks, so many cat and mouse games, the slips down the vent, the standard yard progressions. The amount of plays through smokes that Spirit have gotten away with. Yeah. 
What have they cooked up in the lab? Phase are the ones who have had to continuously fight back time and time again. Team, Team Spirit, Spirit just, just have, have to close, to close the, door the door on this, on this map. map. Just one round, just five kills. And they've said that plenty of times in this map. Let's find out if there's more to be seen on Nuke. First to 19, Team Spirit on the very precipice of taking us to a third here. Our second quarter final of CS2's first major, PGL Copenhagen. And it's Donk at its very first. And he's not stopping for anyone. On the warpath, slinking across, set up for success, Spirit. Put him in a position of power. Yeah, Rain is very committed towards B. You see that position just highlighted by the Ops crew. Another smoke towards Squeaky Door lands in the front of Zontic. So it's just Storm Tactics right now as Brokey has been loving the up close and personal play towards Hunt with the AWP. He's had so much success from this very position. Interesting, isn't it? It's not something you often see. How do they get down towards the lower side? Donk's here, stretching his legs. One way would be out squeaky down the vent. Yeah, that's Frozen's opportunity to start unloading 20 bullets into the potential smoke. Here comes that smoke we discussed. Shiro lines it up. They're going to try and join Donk down the vent, or... He's going top. What? He's coming up. Util. Carrigan safe. Brokey, Frozen, everyone's here. Good start from Donk. It's Frozen with the double. Frozen with the triple. He extends play a dink as well was that all for naught three and a half frags from frozen but it doesn't matter it doesn't matter we go to vertigo team spirit resilient on the quarterfinal stage and a third map required to secure the semi-final very positive signs for spirit here not only the two young guns on the stage zontix as well as donk stepping up the mental fortitude of this team to tussle with FaZe in fine form is on display. Level up your gaming space with metal posters from Displate. Hang your Displates in seconds. Swap them whenever you like. Get official art from your favorite games on a uniquely designed metal canvas and choose from thousands of posters. Join over 3 million collectors now. Your wall upgrade is here. Shop now at Displate.com. popular it's loud and this is a zone's commercial but a zone spent all the money to make the headphones good and they got no money left for the commercial so i'm gonna need you to head to a zone io a c e z o n e yo code pgl 50 euros off we got some headphones now and never.
FaZe push it to double OT. They had a chance to close the door, but they couldn't do it. Spirit bring us to Vertigo, and what a game of Counter-Strike we just watched. I gotta say, I've had the pleasure of watching other things here in the Royal Arena, but watching CS here at that level, it hits different. Breathtaking performance coming out of both these teams. Of course, FaZe keeping in it, you know, making a great comeback into the game spirit. Once again, firing on all cylinders. We saw Donk show up, we saw Sontix, who was missing on map number one as well, so a lot of positives. It felt like there was no real loser of this map. It felt like two teams were honing it out against each other, battling it out, and of course, someone has to win at some point, but it took us double overtime to get to. Yeah, and I mean, the, the big thing was, if you're spirit and you have championship aspirations in this, you have to be able to take a really tough map one loss and bounce back, and they did exactly that and they played this they, they played this map so so well and, and even just bouncing back on the map in general but also it took them seven map points to win it mm -hmm. took them into double over they had three chances at the end of regulation that phase come back in chopper calls a phenomenal opening half of overtime and then phase come right back and in three zero you on their on their offensive side i mean the fact that spirit's able to outlast that because you got the god to your phase that just does not lose that just does not lose. You know, you see these highlights, you see Proki playing up close Counter-Strike with the AWP. We spoke about it. What are some of the win conditions for FaZe Clan coming into it? You want Kerrigan to call Will, you want him to feel he comfortable. He did once more. <laughs> you want Broki to be activated with the AWP again, very much so. And then Rain all of a sudden popping up. He was struggling a little bit. He had a couple of moments in the first half on the T side with some entries that he found him impact. CT side-wise, the first two buy rounds, he was the reason why they lost. He got caught off guard and all of a sudden Rain shows up and plays beautiful counter-strike it was a very good game it was a game of high high quality i mean yeah this this could have gone either way down the stretch but you have to say any win condition that you want to talk about for phase was countered immediately i thought chopper called such a beautiful game um obviously to get them to 12 but also in overtime i think he called it fantastic the upper bust into a very fast upper rush in the next round caught phase completely off guard entirely they figured out how to negate Broki, who was really loving that close hut position with the awp and then you got the phase magic that kind of bails them out of some tough places and Spirit could have crumbled any number of times, but uh, this is this is a beautiful performance from a team that's trying to become the best in the world and trying to plant that flag. Yeah, they didn't crumble at all. Uh, and um, here we look at the standout player in Dong, but I could say that across the board, you know, it needed a team effort and every single one of them to repel those magic moments also by phase because you didn't, you couldn't even drop it for a second. We had one round, for instance, where Magic had to close down or had to hold down the fort rather, but they uh, Chopper could depend on every single one of them. Yeah, and I think that's what I love about this Spirit performance because Jason said it pretty well they could have crumbled at any given moment in yeah. this one we've seen face time and time again going to these overtime games where the opponents will just give up at some point spirit kept in it and it wasn't all about donk donk had a great first yeah. 24 rounds but in overtime he wasn't significantly better than the rest he had a couple of moments where he got a couple of kills but it wasn't the donk show this time around and i love that about spirit and what you also loved was some of the tactical timeout calling specifically that led into round 26 right? yeah in the first overtime right you're looking at spirit they're winning the first round they go instantly into a timeout they want to make sure that they know exactly what's going to happen in the second round. And guess what they do, Jason? You said it yourself. Beautiful calling coming out of Chopper. They go for an inside push. This round is, is you know, the, the one further round where we see Spirit again going for a bit of a default. It wasn't necessarily the one I wanted to showcase, but we spoke about it. Spirit going into it, taking a timeout, rushing inside, and going two rounds up. Well, this also shows you, yeah, Donk wasn't exactly, like, dominant towards the later stages of this map, but, man, he's not afraid of making plays. And this is why I brought up before the series started. I'm not, I'm not giving them, like, that, that kind of a passive inexperience experience yeah they don't have the same they i mean very, no one has the same experience as phase on a big stage obviously the first major for donk and zontix uh, but i mean regardless of all of that donk is not afraid to make plays zontix stepped up to the occasion these guys have already shown that they're willing and that they are able to kind of rise to pressure that these situations provide and i did think he got the credit it deserves because it was the round after that but can you like explain it for us what happened exactly in that round 26 well basically spirit is winning the first round in in overtime right under t side and yeah. they are the one proactively taking a timeout normally you'd see face you know to make sure listen guys cool down it was just one round let's go into it now nah, spirit they want to give the death punch to face straight away so they're the one taking the time out then instantly they come out with an inner push in that round it's a beautiful call from chopper especially considering what happened in the very first t round was that kerrigan was stuck on top of hot he had a smoke in his hand he threw the smoke at the molotov it didn't extreme so if you're kerrigan you're probably a little bit frustrated yeah. about that maybe out of your mind you know in regards to that what does chopper do call a timeout for you and then go instantly into an inside execute I 
absolutely love that. How tilting that it was just around him and just didn't extinguish. Oh my God, but he didn't let it phase him either, right? No pun intended in terms of Kerrigan because we did go to double OT. Dude, some of those some of those rounds that face had to come back in in overtime because uh, Spirit 3 owes him and they had to come back in that second half of it. I mean, you had the one round they had to take outside against a three-man stack outside. You had that weird, awkward round where they had to desperately drop a smoke just to try and get the bomb plant spammed down by Zontix delayed. This, this, got, this got so crazy. And again, those are just rounds that, that, that you know, face somehow make work. And also, this is a beautiful round as well. This lobby push, like, you don't call this if you're not championship-ready team. You don't call this at overtime if you're not ready to win. I freaking love it coming out of Spirit once more. If you were to remove the nameplates from these players and you were to say that, listen, it's Spirit versus Face Clan, who do you think is making that You'd call at 16-16? <laughs> yeah. You'd say Face 9 out of 10 times, but it was in fact Spirit. It was in fact Chopper. They kept playing Counter-Strike. They never stopped playing. They never started fearing that they potentially could exit the major. And that's what I loved about this performance from Spirit. Face Clan played the absolute best and Spirit were able to match it. And it's so cool to see because this is what we wanted. This is the kind of matchup that we wanted to see play out that uh, we weren't given back in Katowice. But it also just speaks to, um, as we will be able to talk about Vertigo in just a second, but also speaks to how Spirit has been able to develop in a fairly short amount of time because now you're saying you're going head to head with a phase that is firing on all cylinders in the biggest stage you can imagine in CS2. Yeah, it, I mean, you look, you give credit to Chopper as like the most experienced player on this team to be able to mold this into a team because it's not just individual. So much of the conversation, obviously, Donk, Zontix, and Shiro on their individual levels, but they play really good Counter-Strike. They play really smart Counter-Strike off of each other, and that's how that's how you grind out these wins. It's incredible that they're able to, I mean, you don't get a lot of chances to beat FaZe. To, to have six opportunities slip through your fingers is so hard to do against FaZe, and they've managed to win in the seventh. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. You know, we, we often speak about the individuals, and obviously you don't win a Katowice without having great individuals on yeah. your team, but tonight, so far, it hasn't really been that case. Shiro is nowhere to be found on the server, considering what's going on. Sontex had a rough first map, much, much better on the second as well, so it's not like it's the individuals carrying spirit right now. More so the team play, more so the synergy, more so the foundation that Chopper had laid within these guys. Yeah, I mean, this is bounce back from Zontix again. It's like bounce back as a team of Spirit and then bounce back from an individual who, yeah, I mentioned on the first map, I think it's mostly the game plan of FaZe that threw these guys off their games, but they had, I mean, whatever conversation they had between the maps were, because this was incredible. And the fact that you're able to have Donk outside early on, shutting down outside with good plays, Zontix shutting down ramp room, really restrictive. That, that I mean, that first half felt like the map was over at a certain point, and it just due to Kerrigan and some great calling, they're able to claw it back and make a game of this. I love how excited you both are, and I think it echoes the way everyone feels here in the Royal Arena as well. Before we chat about Vertigo, though, let's chat about Dust Tour. You say, why? It's not even going to be played. Well, it's because it's a display. And you know these high metal, high quality posters that you can hang up anywhere and do it very, very easily without hurting your walls, which is very important. It also works because I'm a dum-dum and I can even do it. So, hey, there not you bad. go. Not bad. <laughs> you have over 200 licensed uh, official displays from your favorite brands, TV, movies, Counter-Strike, of course. And uh, Display just launched a new product called Textra. It is a premium finish available on hundreds of displays, and it's an extra texture that adds that 3D effect. You can click the display banner, da banner rather down below and type Textra. So, um, also, a couple of things. You can get them for an even better price. There's even more of a discount now. Uh, if you get one or two, you get 30% off. If you get more, you get 36% off. Also, during the PGL Major, there are exclusive designs available only now during the period of the playoffs, so get your hands on them. There we go. From Dust2 to Vertigo. Pimp, you want to kick us off? Yeah, I think it's funny you say 36%, because that's roughly the amount of chance I would give FaZe winning this game and winning oh. on Vertigo. So there we go. Let's dive into it. What a segue. It. <laughs> what a segue. Karen the hater. thing is, now nah, I'm not a Kerrigan <laughs> hater. The thing is for me that we don't know what we're going into sure. right now. We don't know what we're walking into. We've seen Spirit, I wouldn't say struggle on Vertigo, but we've seen them show a human level, you know, shown a bit of a weakness. They can play the map. We have been questioning whether or not Donk should be playing as that anchor role towards the B bomb side. We've seen different teams picking it into them. So we kind of know what we get with Spirit. All I want to say is that it's three weeks ago that that, you know, weakness was exposed. So most likely they would have gone into this major thinking the only thing that we struggle with right now would be Vertigo. So you'd be a dumb dumb if you didn't <laughs> put work into that one as well. Yeah. Now for Face Clan, we haven't seen them play it with Frozen at all ever since he joined the lineup. I think we have to go all the way back to November since last time they played Vertigo. 
Holy Ghost. So I'm walking in blindly, which is why I'm willing to give the edge to spirit, but it's also why I'm super, super excited. I mean, I'll, I'll go, I'm going to give this point over to Thorne. He put it on on Twitter, and I think it's a, it's a very good point as well. Like, if you're if you're a spirit and you think there's a potential that Vertigo might be played, you know, like, how do you, you can't prepare for this? The last match that FaZe played on this is back in November. There's no information of how FaZe is going to game plan for this, because they're game planning off of you. There's no way for spirit to prep it. So you just have to be confident that, yes, this weakness was, you know, technically exposed and found out during the RMR, if you even want to say that. They still have to do a pretty good job of winning it, but it's been played against them so many times. They had to expect that this was going to be targeted by teams at the major. They've put work on it, and remember, they got to choose between the last two maps. It was between yes. Ancient and Vertigo, and they banned Ancient to take us to Vertigo, so obviously feeling very confident in the way that they've been able to adapt on this map. And then if you're FaZe, man, the fact that you get to actually just kind of look at all this film, all the games recently that, that Spirit has played is a huge advantage. And if you've got a tool like Kerrigan in your toolbox, why not let him win you the game? Why not say, Kerrigan, you're one of the greatest in-game leaders of all time. Create us a game plan. Call us a game that is going to allow us to beat this and knock out the major favorites. Yeah, I can hear us. He's saying, yeah, I got you. Let's see. Uh, <laughs> but uh, indeed, it's so interesting for me how the conversation kind of circled back to Kerrigan versus Chopper because at the beginning we said, um, you know, first up, the first order of the day for FaZe is going to have to be shoot as well as them, be as effective as them as it comes to the opening duels, as it comes to breaking your way into those rounds. That's fine now. They can do it for sure. So it kind of comes full circle into what is the game plan going to be in the most important moment of the year for these two IGLs. I think it's dead even between the two right now. I think Kerrigan have called a beautiful game of Counter-Strike so far, and I think Chopper have matched him as well. We saw it on Nuke, these aggressive calls, the aggressive timeouts, the proactive way of playing Counter-Strike. I think Chopper have matched Kerrigan on the server so far. Individually speaking, the man on the screen right here is having a pretty good game. He's finding impact, he's still shooting back, and normally we, we have the conversations with Kerrigan. We know he's a fantastic in-game leader, sometimes goes missing from the big games. That hasn't been the case today at all. He's definitely showing up. On Mirage, he was one of the win factors as well. So I think in terms of that in-game leader duel right now, it's dead even. And, and I think, you know, too, you point out the fact with Kerrigan, he's he's experienced in this kind of a situation because we've seen him a number of times throughout his very long career where he's floated some of these risky vetoes and he's allowed his team to kind of counter and go at teams' weaknesses when it's not necessarily a great map for them because he's so confident in the game plan and the game he can call. And he's got a chance to do it again here. And I think if you want to talk about specifics of what they might be doing, you're going to have to, you're obviously going to want to test Donk over at that B-bomb site as an, yes. as an anchor on this map. Um, you're going to want to see if there's a weakness there, if it's still there, if he's stepped up his game, if he's figured things out a little bit more. We saw a couple maybe misplays out of him towards the end of nuke and pressure situations where he put himself in bad positions even after some positive kills. So yeah, go test him. Go see what you can find. Mid at times has lacked a little bit of impact for Spirit on the defensive side of things, so I imagine FaZe going to test that. And then you're also testing Donk at the B-bomb site by being able to split through middle. So there's a few things that I think FaZe are going to test with, but overall, FaZe are going to have to come up with a game plan of how they want to play standard rounds on a map they don't really, I mean, obviously don't play. They're to a typical permaban. Or maybe just maybe, yeah. we've all been hoodwinked. Uh, they will start on the CT side phase, um, yeah. as per Spirit uh, had the last ban, of course, but you said, Pimp, that doesn't really matter that much on Vertigo specifically? No, I don't think so, not anymore. You know, it's a, a map where you can pro play both sides to, to a pretty decent level. We're not looking at a nuke, we're not looking at the old trains of the world as well. It, it's a pretty even map where, if you're on the T side, you get to dictate the pace of the game. You know, you can only be so aggressive as a CT side to play on Vertigo. There's only so much aggression you can find on that side. So if you are playing on the T side, if you are Spirit in this instance, you get to control whether or not you want to play a fast game of Counter-Strike or whether or not you want to wait for the aggression coming in for face. And I'm kind of curious to see what's going to happen in that regard. What kind of face are we getting to see in that CT side? Because I think tonight, when they looked at their best, it's been proactive, it's been in your face, it's been Brokey playing up close with the AWP. That's what I want to see as well. I, I think Spirit's going to be asking the same question. What kind of phase are we yeah. going to see on this map? Because it is interesting. Do you, do you really want to open up fast where you don't necessarily know what phase is going to be planning? Do you want to see how they start I think the that'd game? be a mistake, yeah. Yeah, do you want to get a read of how they're going to play? I think Brokey's kind of the key word for me. Obviously great in the elimination stage leading up to these playoffs for phase. The one the one kind of shining star. He was great on Nuke as well. He was good on the first map of Mirage. His ops on point today. I want to see phase make him mobile. Put him in mid a couple rounds. Put him over at the B bomb site. Put him at, a, at the A ramp. Make it so phase can't, or Spirit can't ever read where that AWP is going to be. Make it feel like you're going to walk into that no matter where you go and put that fear of Brokey into them so that they have to play a little bit more conservatively on the T side. But I mean, really, <laughs> who the hell knows what we're going to get on this map? Apparently you do. I mean, I love that you have these ideas about it, but it's once you get on the server now in that final map that it's all left to be played for, right? And this time around, Pimp, 
every shot has to hit, every plan has to be executed perfectly because you don't get any more chances after this or you're going home. Yeah, it all comes down to this map. It all comes down to Vertigo. As we said, we already set it up for all you guys out there watching. It is Kerrigan going up against Chopper. It is on a map that we haven't seen face play ever since November 26. So it's been a while since they've taken on Vertigo. One thing we know for sure, though, is that both these lineups have shown up tonight so far. Yeah. Kerrigan is calling great. Chopper is calling great. We've seen the dunk show. We've seen Brokey step up as well. I expect this game to be fun. I expect it to be close, and I expect it to be a banger of a match. Who's going to win? God knows. You got to imagine there's going to be a little bit of sloppiness too, too, right? Probably. At least, at least probably. on the face side of things. So I think you, you have to look at them and say, you know, on top of whatever game plan Kerrigan's come up with, you better have a solid individual stepping up for you and delivering some frags, put some quantity on the board. Yeah, every single one of them has to perform. Phase versus Spirit one more time. This time, they will be battling it out on Vertigo of all maps. Who takes it home? All right then, Copenhagen is what you've been waiting for. The third map, the desk has discussed it. And I've got Chad Sponge Birchill of Vox Eminor fame. He's attended majors himself, and now we watch as Team Spirit, with two players at their first, are looking for a semi-final. FaZe Clan, the gatekeepers of playoffs. My expectations and a lot to discuss, but let's get this pistol started first, Chad. Pressure on to Rain, over towards B, there'll be an explosion of Glocks in his face momentarily. The Jiggles, precautionary on both sides. That's enough from Rain, seen enough. They're following Pressure. through. Mounting, committing, look at this util dump. They're trying to isolate them, but they're already here. They're in front of the util. Spirit, get a rude shock as there's drops. Carrigan, Brokey, it's a full roster run now. Chopper, Magic's fighting tooth and nail. Double from Chopper, hold on! Chopper with three, and a potential fourth up. Against Carrigan, no less. It's IGL versus IGL. Captain versus Captain to start off. Map three, it's Carrigan to take it. A triple kill, and he just stands up. The King Carrigan in the Royal Arena. He's the showman for a reason. Entertaining here this evening, in the server and out, and even in the veto. Vertigo, who saw this one coming? There was always a chant, there was always a conversation, but the discussion is, is this Spirit's weakness? Or well, this is one way to test it. FaZe, their perma ban. <laughs> That's so crazy to me. In a major quarterfinal, you're playing your perma ban against the number one team in the world. It's kind of crazy to see it unfold <laughs> in this fashion, but showing that Carrigan, masterful in moments like this, loves to throw a bit of a curveball. Playing some great counter strike this evening is... Wouldn't be the first time we've seen FaZe pull this out. For the first in a long time, and the first since Frozen's joined. Always having the availability up the sleeve. This is a map Frozen's played plenty of. Yeah, it's absolutely. not uh, unusual for him. Oh, he's got caught. Covered. Necessary cover there from Brokey, but Donk will reveal that AK. It's all very short-lived. I mean, what is that? One frag? Yeah, not going to be too, uh, too worried about that one if you phase. 2-0 start. Chopper dropping that AK to Donk and empty-handed. Yeah, we'd want to get a whole lot more damage with an investment like that. And if we're keeping track of the pistol round, Spirit won both on Mirage, lost the map. FaZe won both on Nuke, lost the map. FaZe have won their third going into map number three, and we'll see if that ends up being a difference maker. But the rifles are out. Chopper now just operating with a Tech-9. Rain, MP9, Rops the same. Progression smoke up the ramp, Doc charging the Marauder. Frozen sits him on his oh, ass. Stunning start. Frozen getting away with murder time after time. His nuke performance was admirable. Mirage as well. Frozen stocks are flying through the roof right now. Yeah, he's had some big impact rounds. Some rounds where he shouldn't get more than one. Able to walk away with a multi. Well, this one's stalled out immediately. 
And Spirit attempting to set the tone with a pretty standard play. Vying for that ramp control. Brokey. Once he takes that peak, you can see Chopper not considering oh. it. Brokey in the back, and that'll be the round. Yeah, it certainly will be. And also, there's so many good Vertigo teams now that... How long did they have, Chad? Four days? Five days? I just wonder at what point, once they knew they were playing against Spirit, did they decide that they were going to allow this through? Because, you know, you're going to have had to have prepped in the lab. You're going to have to work out your basics. Yeah. But do you then, if you're going to slip it through to the third or potential map, right? Spirit decided to take it here. It not Spirit's not, choice. Exactly. Not face. So they must have known that it was going to be a possibility. But how much prep time do you put into something that may or may not occur because you're not picking it? Mm. So there's all these... I mean, it already looks, yeah, that uh, FaZe Clan, they've got their roles distributed. I think it makes a lot of sense to be putting Frozen and Brokey in premium positions. But this is the thing, it doesn't even matter. Because you could just yeah. chop and change. You're right, right. you're right. We could do whatever the hell we want, whenever the hell we want to. It's not like Team Spirit have got an expectation. No, not at all. So they're learning on the job right now. What do you make of this then? So it's going to be kind of a semi-threatening half-buy. Yeah, well, next round they will get that max loss, so we will see a full investment. But this is about to see the pedigree of a team who does play this map, right? What kind of little pocket strats do you have? And this is the thing, if they were so worried about Vertigo, they could have just taken it to Ancient, some territory where they do some great work as well. And I do like the fact that they've called the bluff. That, for me, shows that Halley and Chopper, they've got some big balls to work with. Clean with it. Testing middle, Robs. And Rain's actually pushing the issue, pushing the limit. Comfortable from Rain, nothing yet for Team Spirit. Robs, overlooked, Magics. Dead to the AK-47, running him down is Brokey. This is a very comfortable start for, for, for FaZe. How many frags have Spirit got? I think it's four, yeah, four total in the death column of FaZe so far. Now, well, Chopper's been given some space, but only for a moment. As soon as he starts to punch those digits in, he will be a dead man. Make it five, excuse me. Oh, he's actually being gifted the plant. Oh, no. No, he won't. Frozen just denies. It felt like he had enough time to get that one down. But regardless, don't you worry. There will be a spirit bite. Second gun round, map three. Need to make a mark. Need to make a dent. Yeah. Rain still operating with an MP9. 7K in the bank. Be loving that. It's a very good start. A great start. For no face. denying that. Look, if this was back and forth and they were having to fight and scrap for these rounds, like the pistol round came to a one-on-one, -on -one, sure. But since, one-way traffic. Here we go. Same phase philosophy. Carrigan made it clear. Game plan. Play phase counter-strike. Robs. Noted. Almost certainly going to have been noted that the flash came through. Chopper's tending to the potential for ladder. But this just puts so many spanners in the work of the game plan of right. Spirit. Because you don't know what's going to be thrown at you in what rounds. So that's why in the first gun round, the fact that they just went heavy towards A, very standard, very simple stuff as far as Vertigo is concerned. Well, if you go for something a little bit more default heavy, there's a lot more to worry about. Rain fires off the MP9. Sold out towards B for now, but when is Rob's going to activate? They're waiting for to. this. There's a minute 10 on the clock. Yeah, if anything, he's just slowed them down. I feel like they have to clear him out or they can't go anywhere. Well, that's Magic's... He's giving it a go, but Rob's is trying to catch these timings. Intermittently, just taking glances, magics, the same. <laughs> Look how one man's push has slowed down the crawl of Team Spirit. About a minute go by, nothing's happened. Amazing. I, I mean, in terms of the power Rops has through a position alone and his restraint as well on these clears. Now he starts to cook, 40 seconds, and they have to commit towards the site. Frozen, Carrigan, ready themselves. No util to stall out a plan if there is an execute coming their way, and well, we can see there definitely is. Rob's maneuvering on that flank. Magic's is the one responsible for it, but it's Frozen and Carrigan that need to be able to want keep the wolf from the door. Down goes Donk. It's big from Carrigan. Look at the damage. Chopper, Sontix hanging on by a thread. <laughs> 
Full flash, Garrigan converts. What is that from Magic? Time, time. If he could just get him off the ball. A fake, it's done. It's five. They can't catch him, Magic's despite the double broke, he's gone. Ooh, take a breath, that one got intense. Everybody over towards A, Biffin, locking horns, and back and forth we went. Magic's getting two. Two on the flank, there must have been someone to join the party alongside of Rops right there, but Spirit, five in the hole and a second tactical timeout. This is not the start that they were looking for. This is not the heart, the start you were expecting, Jack. No, not at all. I thought FaZe was going to get devoured here, especially with the CT side start. Right, that pistol, that could have changed the entire conversation so far. Yeah. If Spirit had won that, FaZe had to take an eco, first gun round, the tone gets set. They're the ones... That pistol. ...dictating the pace. Right, the fact that Carrigan wins the one-on-one. -on -one. Now they're five rounds to the good. And here he's found impact as well. Stalls him out coming out short, completely blind. What, three bullets left, gets another kill. Four kills in the blink of an eye. Brokey denies the plant. Five on the board. Those are the type of rounds that I thought FaZe would have to be vying for. Look at Carrigan's reaction here. Like, it's just almost, he's, he's in sheer bewilderment that this score reads 5-0. Scaff smoke and a frozen push. They need the smoke to try and find him. Chopper throws a couple of bullets down range, but Frozen lives on. Molotov will force him back. A bit more of a direct approach for the start. Zontic's been licked down to 50 HP with a Rain and Rob's duo. So mid is undermanned, as it were, but Spirit are nowhere to be seen. Zontic's heard that. Yeah. Late sweep of middle from... This pair, Carrigan and Brokey. Good stall utility, that's a great little combo set. Froze is just delaying them, so while they play for info towards mid, towards B, they sweep. Make sure there's no real threats, that now allows them to rotate back. Some good vertigo so far from face. Well, they're primed this time, they've got util to stop this. Yeah, not far off the mark, more util. Well placed, oh, and Carrigan's aggression takes down Chopper. 40 seconds, Garrigan, multi-kill, madness! As Frozen will take Donk. Magic's left alone, 1v5, what's a man to do? What can you do? Nothing! This is astonishing right now. Unbelievable. You highlighted it perfectly, Chad. The, the protocols are in place. Delay util, push for info, re-rotate. <laughs> the util they were barraging them with as well. Spirit's ears were ringing. They had to fight so hard to win Nuke, did Spirit. Uh, and I thought that would be a catalyst to see them propel forward with confidence, going into a map that they know face don't play. Don't play. Well, right now, Donk has one kill. Zontix has zero. Spirit have zero rounds. There's an AK in the mix in the hands of Donk yet again. Some upgrades. Just staying stalled once more. Yellow smoke, pressure on rain, up and over. Donk will get an entry, there's a way in. This could be problematic. Robs onto Donk. Chopper's found a gap as well. Brokey, however, he's holding firm. It's a two on three with 50 seconds left. The bomb gonna be getting escorted up towards the A site. Retake is on. Is there a round to be had here from Team Spirit? They're wondering, where on earth is the resistance? Where are the sound cues? There's no one here silently creeping. Brokey now, where's a fast, gets across! Oh no, oh no! 
<laughs> How does it go down like that? It was supposed to be a spirit round. Oh, dear. What can you say? Unbelievable. Ah. The pressure is on, isn't it? The fact that the shot's not being hit in a situation like that. The pistol's up close. And Spirit still yet to get around. This heart has gotten away from the magics. On for the fight, Rob's falls. Bit of pep in the step early. Something that doesn't come so late. First and opening pick for Team Spirit. That, they've come few and far between, so it's going to be very important that they can convert this. <laughs> yeah, they just need to get something on the board. Please. Not like this. Rain the B anchor. We're learning it. We're learning on the job here, Chad. It feels like every time they've played this map, there's slightly been something different. And you have to go really back in the books. Seven times in total with uh, the four phase members. Now the addition of Frozen. Ram control this time round. And as you said, you have to convert this one. You got the opening pick. You've got Util for an exec. Just get the bomb in. Play the post bomb. Yeah, sounds simple, doesn't it? Right? Ouch. There's the Zantara's Util. A HE between the two of them. Oh, more damage inflicted upon a rival. Still, though, they have the man advantage. Who will tip the scales? It's a big one from Shiro. Takes down Rain. Carrigan on the fast flank. No one's looking. Chopper is. Gets the info. That should pretty much seal the first spirit round here. Now it's Carrigan, he's going to be condemned. Chopper knows exactly where he is. Just have to deal with this to Ooh. alleviate pressure. Ooh. But gives one back. Carrigan, he's trying to get out with his life. I would assume so. Well, they've got plenty of cash, don't they? But I guess at very best, Spirit could grab themselves five rounds in total. <laughs> Is he really trying to stop them from saving as much? Yeah, well, Brozik joined as well, so just trying to do some damage to the finances. They're going to have to push forward if they want to save, and creeping is Zontic, spawning out Frozen. They have been able to find themselves an escape route. Caprican all the way up towards the scaffolding. Bomb goes off. Terrorists. And there it is, finally. Spirit are able to get themselves around on the board. Maybe we have a map after all. Would have to be now, wouldn't it? Seven just flying out of the gates from phase. And I, it's still that sentence came out of your mouth about how different it would feel if that Carrigan and Chopper pistol round went the other way. You know, it really put phase in prime position. Carrigan leading by example has put them in prime position now for round nine. If they can find an eighth hit, Team Spirit. Surely it's their moment to make a half out of this. A couple of rounds of the truck could be required. And if FaZe just continue to save, they could even have rifles for the remainder of this first half of play. Spirit were given an opening pick in the previous. That was romps with the aggression. This time, restrained. But the bombardment of B available. Look at this. Full lobby control. The assault on the side. This is difficult to deal with at the Whoa. best of times. A barrage of utility. Fane or rain. Futility or not. Magix has gone down. Donk has found a perfect opportunity. Lovely find. Donk destroys three. He's here now. He's here at present. Front down. Pushed by Carrigan, the star of the FaZe Clan show. He set Frozen up with something manageable. A one versus two, a kit present. Bomb to be planted, Shiro punching in the code. It's Chopper in support. What do you have here? Mr. Sinanski, he's found the first. It's big from Shiro, goes wide for it. Makes it a second for Team Spirit. Don't have a conversation there about some of the pieces of YouTube, but he did his job. And Chopper with a wipe of the eyes, you can see the pressure. Definitely on. Frozen with a real opportunity to be able to convert that one. Timeout for FaZe, maybe just catching their breath. Want to walk away with a half with a couple more if they can. 
with how this started, again, I'm still just catching up. You know, we, we come into this, the expectations are phased. You know, Carrigan's been cooking something. But just the sheer fact that they were able to get to a 7-0 start. Feels like job done somewhat. Money available, another bite. This is Donk. Nice little three-piece from him. And then the chaos, right? There's absolute chaos coming out. Brokey aggressive with the all. It's not a bit of a timer. How long can he stay here? Flash Donk peeks back. Zontix opening up the angle. We'll have to respect it. on the clear. I'm so amazed the Frozen lives on here. This is a position that many a player gets punished. Oh, oh he had a chance there. Shiro alive and kicking. Good chip damage though. FaZe's protocols do seem quite well rounded. I'm impressed that Frozen was so stubborn, but... They need to be disruptive. It was the same conversation on Nuke, right? You could see when Kagan was wanting to push a lot, they couldn't just allow them to set up and execute, and they're trying to do the same. You want them to have Spirit agitated. You don't want them to allow to just be able to play through the game and go into their executes, take the space as they would. Because FaZe are going to have a tougher time dealing with set pieces. They haven't been in those situations. They don't know how to deal when the smokes and mollies hit the floor. Something that they'd probably only be playing against in pugs. So Spirit seem to have found a way back into this half. Nice clear from Rops. That's important from Carrigan taking down Chopper. Three versus three, low HP, getting that bomb down integral. Retake is on though. Oh, Rain narrowly missed his window of opportunity to try and hit the spam. If they go for this and they lose everything, you have big problems with the phase finances. You can see they're almost already starting to position as if they're not going. I say, I tell a lie. Actually, Rob's just throwing out the smoke short. That limits Donk's options here. Hoping Brokey can hit something. Are they going or are they not? They are starting to move. Now with Brokey down, a tickle on the bomb and an easy tap dunk. Just walks out of the smoke. Hiding in plain sight is Robs. Knows Donk's going to be on the retreat as well. Maybe some damage. A whole lot of damage. Takes down the orb. Robs will meet Donk. But what does that mean on the grand scheme? It's seven to three. Yeah, if they were able to pull those saves through, we definitely could see a purchase. Now, this is where we're likely to see FaZe just take a couple of light investments, a few liberties. Well, maybe more than that. I've seen Carrigan actually buy an M4 and drop it. It looks like they're going to go all in. They're going to shove towards the center of the table with this one. An M4, some MP9s, Deagle, and a Famous. They're going to fight for the rest of the half. And Spirit are in a great position to be able to secure five rounds. Oh, very blind. Donk, adventures cut short. This is a lot of space early. They're up. It's kind of a direct approach. And Carrigan, yeah, he tried his luck. Donk was ahead of it. Going for a bit of a run and gun with the MP9. Quick one back from Frozen. He's definitely in form, is Frozen. Magic's while well Flash removes him from the equation. Yeah, this one. Falling apart piece by piece. This is not really the uh, type of guns you hope to be saving either into the final round of play for this half. That's true. A Famous and an MP9 just dealt with that one M4. Carrigan didn't even hesitate buying that and dropping that towards Frozen. But being diligent, our spirit. So they've worked back into things. That's going to be forced to queue up with the bomb going down 40 seconds on the clock. With Brokey and Rops out of range. And maybe they want to try and do some damage again. Team Spirit and see if they can upgrade their weapons into something a bit juicier. Chopper's already starting to have a look with the MAC-10 in hand, see if he can buy them a safe passage out. But this is already, in my mind, considered half recovered. Oh, for sure. I mean, you, like you discussed, 
It, was, it, it had to be then. After the seven, anything more would become almost insurmountable, but Spirit finding their, their feet. I say Spirit. I think majority of them, sure, but I have to acknowledge Zontic's absence. He's having a rough go of things, isn't he? Zero and nine, yet to get activated in map number three. Not to say he can't. Yeah, it's just, uh, look, it's part of it. he's going to do his better work on the CT side. For sure. So he, he's not really an opening piece for them on the T half, but still not having any kills. It can start to play on your mental uh, for some of these younger players as well. Something that sticks out like a sore thumb every time you hit tab. Yeah, you get into your own head about it. Start shying away from, from engagements that are favorable. Like uh, an early nade right on your face. Do you keep taking that B space? It looks like he will. Going through his procedures. This time Frozen's gonna be set up with a little boost action. Carrigan gets him all set up. Well, Sontix has done his job, right? Without any kills, sure, but he's been able to get the B lobby space. So he's applied pressure, kept two defenders over towards the other side of the map. There's and a now... massive gap, isn't there, Alex? Look at middle. Nobody attending to that whatsoever for phase. Just pretending it doesn't exist. And Donk down. That's exactly what that boost was searching for. An eighth round. Up for debate. Opening frag found, but still the weaponry advantage for Spirit. They're swinging for this. Swinging for the fences. One. Or two, Chopper, good onto Frozen. Three versus three, rotations on their way. Bomb on the back of Magics. This flash could be, yeah, mistimed. It's Brokey that's calling for it. And Magics dead, immediate snap, straight from Brokey, the Latvian strong. Well, this is the time Zontix could have impact, help bail them out in a number disadvantage situation for five. There's a chance. Zontic's about to be double peaked. It's Chopper actually getting ooh, run down. Strong aim finds Rain. Oh, and Zontix, he builds around arm. After all, it's into the clutch for Brokey. Finding Chopper. Zontix, flash and get a cross. Hold up, he's going beat. That's crazy. But you have to commit to the but plan. That's crazy. What the hell is this? He's not falling for it. Well, now, time to plan. Zontix, Five what's seconds. going on? No, not like that. Oh, Zontix, he's over 40 there. He had 12 seconds. Brokey calls his bluff. You can see what was trying to take shape. Brokey just too wise to his game. That's pressure. What do you make of that? That's pressure. Yeah. That's, that, that's written all over his face. The, oh. the, the fact that he's gone for that type of maneuver, right? He could have tried to a plant safe side in the site, would have been able to get it down. The player was condemned towards short. And that's the option he's going for. That right there is the definition of pressure in front of everybody's eyes. But like, that's such a fumble of a play. He gets his first kill in round number 12. Chopper's probably screaming that the nade's done some damage. There it is. And he, he decides to hightail it towards B. He had to commit. And I think the penny dropped as he started making that maneuver. Because if he got to the side, he just has to punch the digits in. And Brokey can run him down. That is such a fumble. That's a gift he's given them there. An eighth round for FaZe to work with for a semi-final spot. Eight to four, Brokey. What, having one hell of a Vertigo performance. And Magic's just gonna be spotting out early. Well, this is the thing, you have absolutely no idea what FaZe kind of gonna do on the pistol. You can't go back and watch the last few demos and go, oh, they like to go for this type of maneuver. Sure. Oh, Zontix still gets given the jewelies. Oh no, it's Carrigan again onto Zontix. I thought that was looking like a spirit pistol, but kept level by Carrigan's handiwork. He's up mid. Chopper's gonna be tending to it, but Rocky's a bit further forward than he anticipates. Oh, wrapped with a double up. Straight into B. All of that just mirrors and fakery. Rubs out mid for the double to make a ninth round reality on their perma ban. Can you quite believe it? Rops. Oh, and Frozen. Hyping up his boys, Captain Carrigan. Can almost taste the semi finals now. Well, they've tipped the pistols in their favor for the series. It's four to two. Lion share. And they've got Spirit on the ropes. Carrigan going to look like an absolute genius if they end up pulling this one off. There's four more rounds required now to secure this map. And there's big conversation in the lead up. 
There's certain games in the map pool. Navi versus EF. Well, Navi banned Vertigo. EF don't play Ancient. That's a Navi weakness. We had this series. Would phase dare try and play into Vertigo, a map that's been discussed as a bit of a spirit weakness. And well, apparently it is. Truth to that narrative, indeed. Five rounds to the good, our phase. And again, we find ourselves Team Spirit having to take this eco. And every single time, it seems like they give Donker Deagle and hope that he can be the difference maker. And he can't. Oh, oh no, Ray nearly gets three. I was wondering if they'd be, you know, aware of the nuanced clears required against some of these boosts, but Rain makes it comfortable. This is stunning work. And they are keeping the face, you know, it's, it's business casual. They're not celebrating too hard. It's been one hell of a series and it's not over yet. They're trying to forget what happened in Katowice. That too. That best of five grand final over in the blink of an eye. Kagan looked absolutely devastated on that stage. And Spirit were making a name for themselves. The ascension to the top had happened awfully quickly. We're in disbelief that someone like Donk could perform at that level. His first big event, pick up a trophy of that caliber. But FaZe, they've been hard at work. This is where the international squad, the Rockstars, do their absolute best work. Some trickery in the veto, calling the bluff, and I'm wondering right now if Spirit are thinking, hey, maybe we should have gone with Ancient. Well, it's too late for that. Miss you too. Ouch. That one will leave a mark. Chop up. Good for one. It's frozen onto the Zontic swing. He needed one there. Instead. It's a man disadvantage. They don't have to rush this chat. Bomb on the back of Brokey. I feel like if you're spirit, you have to gamble. Right? Still hesitant to leave his donk. Where are you? Magix is under so much pressure. Pulling up now, good work from Magix. Down goes Shiro, and it's all on to Don. Rock in a hard place, Molotov and a smoke. Bullet from Rops into Frozen, and we've got 11. 11 to four, folks. FaZe can play Vertigo, it seems. And a timeout called, we were wondering when we'd see this. Uh, it looks like you've got Zontix, you can see the body language, he's slumped back in his chair. A, a, a miserable first half. It, he could have really remedied the situation with that clutch situation. Yeah. But the fact that he lost that in the fashion that he did, the hole's only gotten deeper and deeper. The map that you go into where you can't even prep for your opponent. And you picked it. You kind of feel like you've kind of died on your own, fallen on your own sword here a little bit. And this 30 seconds from Halley would have to be some of the most inspired stuff he's probably ever said to this iteration of the Spirit team. This is more than a hole that they're in right now. This team coming into the major. It's a black hole. Top of the pops. Tip of the conversation. And right now, well, Alex, they're going all in. They are going all in. They're not willing to give over 12 to FaZe with a discrepancy like this. They have gone for the force buy. Four MP9s and a Famous. Face, you've broken them. This is brutal. And for the first time in what feels like forever, bar the pistol, Chopper, he's pushing down ramp aggressive. I was more interested in that mid space. They found a gap, dumping util, some rifles behind Carrigan and his SMG. Smoke and go. Molotov. So much chaos. I mean, oh, the spam. Oh, magic! Empty handed double from Rob. It's Donk's go stubborn. Getting himself a double to make this round a potential reality. B is lost. Retake is on. No kit. Smoke available though. Donk knows he's got to be proactive about this. He's being loud about this. Clearing his corners. Oh, he nails the first. It's Chopper to trade. And Spirit get a little bit of life. A little bit of hope with MP9s and a FAMAS. 
And a chopper clutch to make it five. Well, that was all donkey middle, wasn't it? That MP9 yeah. coming through. How does Carrigan swing around? He had no idea where he's even getting shot from. Magic's up in the window position on construction. Just feels like he's unloading the full mag and still can't get it done. A tight round. They do live to see another day. Great Oof. from Donk. This one as he swings in towards the side. Beautiful robotic and a great trade from the leader. Yeah, really hanging the balance of that. It had to be Donk and he's, uh, well, it's the first of what would need to be many for this dialogue to shift. It's already so dominant. AK-47's out in force. Pressure from Frozen towards the B side. A nade and a swing. Good work. Donk and Magix put their heads together and find an opening. Change of plans. Whatever was lined up. A new conversation. I'll apply pressure towards middle yet again. They've missed that twice. That same Molotov hasn't hit the mark. I'm going to try and buy them. Oh, see the decision how they want to opt forward. I thought he was lining up the molly to land top of scaffolding towards A. Rops just going to search middle dry. Returns to it. There it is. They're flying blind on ramp. Fortunately for them, they threw it and nobody followed through. Phase are so far away from even being able to use that piece of utility. But Carrigan just lobbed forward. Looks like Rops wants to join them. There's smoke, some flashes, and a molly to finish on towards A. Yeah, it is quite a split up defense. Good timing on that smoke gap. Limits Carrigan's options. Starting to cheat a third over. Shiro this is so risky. Will join. They are erecting a boost. So risky. And Brokey's going to go down, but it leads to the double. Oh no. Three on three. Rain will plant. He's open to the spray. Oh, Shiro, if only he knew. An opportunity presented itself. Carrigan's double. And now it has to be more from Carrigan. Partners up with Rops, a jump shot attempt from Donk. Here we go! Oh, Carrigan takes down Donk! A clutch for Rops. Does he call the bluff? I think he does. I think he does. It's a 10 second defuse if they go for it. Now the audible on the hole. It was a wide defuse and he's going to get the first. He's going to get them both! Rops pulls phase right into the 12. As Carrigan rounds that corner at short, and he sees a stack. I can't believe it. I, I, I'd be licking my lips. You're under so much pressure to go for a play like that. Like, it doesn't make any sense to do a boost in that moment. They can scale that ramp. They can push through short. That is such a risky maneuver from Spirit. And I think that, again, just backs up how much pressure that they feel that they're under. It's bizarre. It's so uncharacteristic to go. Like, the only reason you're going for that is if you think you don't have any info. Oh. They've just opted to, to play for some info and they just get absolutely destroyed. And then Rop's coming in clutch. There's no kit. They're not playing together. Spirit have fallen apart the seams. FaZe have ripped them apart. They're just one round away. And Carrigan on home soil will get his revenge. A little technical timeout. A chance for us all to uh, screw our heads on time because this has happened. Yeah, I can't quite believe we're, we're here now. A 7-0 start after a Carrigan 1-on-1 on of the pistol. It's just so crazy to be going for a boost like that. I still can't believe what I'm seeing. I still can't believe that Carrigan gets another frag. They look at Frozen standing up. They are so close. FaZe was so... Flustered. This is the major favorites about to be eliminated. Yes, sir. Yes, indeed. Many people thought the phase would make it entertaining, but Spirit were set to collect at least a grand final attendance. Flash. Donk, they really want to force him into these fights, and he's happy to stand and bang. Zontic's forward push. Rops anticipating aggression. Zontic still not dissuaded. Going for something a bit more aggressive. He's supported by Shiro. A 
SMGs, leave it into a three on three. You'll take that if you're spirit. You've still got Donk's M4 close. Look at Zontix on the camera again, uh, just in Donk's feet. Hey, look at it, hands on the head already. He feels like he should have done more. Hollied out of position. Hollied out of position. No smoke! He goes for the swing! Phase two single frags away. Magics and Chopper, fate in their hands. Elimination from the Major. If he can't make this round work. Brokey, wide, Magics, tries, fails. It's all on to Chopper to keep Team Spirit's major hopes. Or Robs with 18 seconds on the clock to knock Team Spirit out of Copenhagen. He gets the bomb down. Playing around the smoke. Chopper, six bullets, six bullets is all he needs. Because we need another round. I, I have no idea how they're going to pull themselves out of this, though. Just again, the, the body language from Zontix, like how shut down he is as an individual. I'm not just putting this all on him, it's the team overall. It's the team as a whole. Uh, this is would be the craziest of comebacks. We need to be inspired by, I want to say, the veterans of the team, but they're not even really veterans, right? They've been in major playoffs before the likes of Chomper and Magic Shaw, different iterations of rosters. You turn to Shiro. He's another name that you'd want to step up in a moment like this. Yeah, for Shiro, he was trying to escape the, uh, the quarterfinal of limbs. Trying to escape the high-pressure matches, falling flat. Well, you just need one more round. FaZe are going to take a moment of pause. Why not? They've got another one in the back pocket, should they require. They just need one round, Chad. A single round of Counter-Strike. Already 12 in the bank. And we'll see how this went down. Nice little double up, right? Uh, uh, you have Shiro there essentially baiting for Zontix to try and set him up for a couple of kills, and he did. Did contribute the way he needed to. Poise on the clutch again. Another chopper one-on-one -on -one to essentially keep them alive. FaZe, after the timeout, have decided to keep things quite modest. So expect a slower scenario. If this one gets out of control at all, I won't quite believe it. A late Deagle purchase in spawn. So we've got a pair of those. Tech 9 for Rops. And what should be one of the easiest rounds Spirit have played in this map so far. Yeah, shouldn't be too much to say about this one. Carrigan's just set a let up. Donk not shy. Happy to make the noise. Magic's the unknown entity. Oh, oh. oh. yeah, oh, hello. That. I thought he would have heard that. Magic hasn't acknowledged it, Alex. No, he hasn't. But this boost is what he's been waiting for. Thank you very much, Magix collects. A Carrigan Glock, just uh, as a, a, a reminder. Yeah, what happened on Mirage? Yeah. Well, as mentioned, it should be one of the easiest rounds. One casualty, that's fine. And that's all it's going to be. Donk, grab another. But they are dealing with the finest of margins right now. Can't give up a single round. Have to mount a mammoth comeback. Gonna need to get uh, five more consecutive to make it seven on the trot, mirroring. Our FaZe were able to open up this map. And this would be quite the comeback, a comeback for the ages. But if you're ever positioned to do so, on your opponent's permaban that they floated, would be the best place to be able to pull that off, I'd say. I'd agree. One would assume that when A and B stop working, there's maybe not a plan C. Donk in middle this time. Magic's and Chopper responsible for hit the B site. Bombs moving that way. A test for Donk. A test for Robs. Ooh, he just starts to maneuver away. No, thinks twice about it. Rob spots it out. Don controls the spray beautifully.
getting back to A. Opening frag found, playing around that T side smoke. He's a nuisance, he's Donk. Back to A, as you say, Carrigan. Next victim of Donk. Well, Zontix is hearing steps, can call the cavalry over. 38 seconds. 3v5 disadvantage, and Zontix feels like he's under a lot of pressure. Crossfire, one anti flash, big headshot from Rain. But here comes Frozen, we needed to see more. 20 seconds, Brokey has, still has a world where he can finish it right here and now. Makes the steps away, fakes the steps away. Had his chance with Magix, now knows where they both are. He could do this, this could be Spirit eliminated. Unless Magix, one more bullet, one more bullet, he extends. Holding on, a clutch from Chopper. And now a clutch from Magix. It's still sketchy. The, the fact that, that he gets a full reload off there is insane. It's just so, so sketchy. What is that setup as well? Nobody acknowledging the, the opportunity for anybody to come out short. It's, it's kind of insane what we're seeing. Let's go, Let's go. The fact that they scrape through yet again. I'll remind everybody, this was a 5v3 number advantage thanks to Donk. That turns out to be another one-on-one -on -one situation. And the pressure in all of these moments. Bomb goes down, Diffuse comes through. Money there for FaZe to partially invest. They're gonna go fast towards ramp with these flashes. Oh, okay. Zontix feeling the scrutiny. They've got a boost though. It should be good for one. Shiro dismounts. They've got the bodies here. Plenty of util to spare. But just a full barrage of HE grenades and Molotovs. Sandieris to be specific. Carrigan cleared. Nice headshot from Shiro, starting to warm into things. Ouch. Nothing for Frozen there. And Rops was the man throwing the flashes to facilitate that push. The polar opposite side of the map right now. Magic still had to rotate away. Yeah, what's the best case here? An M4? A confidence boosting kill, I would imagine. But this is the thing, now that all five get to stay alive, we have just had a uh, disconnect from the server, so we'll be going into another quick little technical. I'm not sure if these help or hinder Spirit, right? because it gives them a few more moments, but they have to sit in silence. They can't converse, they can't sit there and discuss how they're going to move forward. They kind of just get to sit and sour in the fact that they still need to have three more consecutive rounds. Yeah, but that feels to me like it's in the realms of possibility. It's no? just it, it, these these uncharacteristic type of maneuvers that they're opting for in scenarios make them look weak, susceptible to a round loss. It's just going to take one of those where it isn't converted in a nail-biting one-on-one situation, and it's all done. Right. We'll just call it. Uh, in, in terms of should it be you know, a real opportunity for Spirit to be able to bring it back, yeah. But there's just been some really interesting choices made. And again, you can see the pressure on their faces. Zontix is the embodiment of that. Yeah, and when you you hear Counter-Strike players, legacy Counter-Strike players reflecting upon the games, the ones they won, the ones they didn't, it's much less the wins that stand out. Oh, you never forget the bad losses. Or the losses, the advantages you had and squandered. Four in a row so far. Spirit have been battered and bruised. Two clutches in those four rounds. Going down to 1v1s. FaZe just need that one. That one exception to what is fast becoming the rule. They've avoided all early utility damage. Full focus in the ranks. Zontix. Good info play. Yeah, he's flirting with some aggression here. Donk back in his hidey hole. There's no one home. This is a massive Zontix. push. Yeah, he's gotten a great deal of information. He should just play to contain. He doesn't need to go any far forward now. They have all the info. They have all the info. Zontix, fortunate frag. Does that slow your roll? You have no choice if you face. You kind of have to finish B. Yeah, but look at this setup. This setup couldn't really be better. Donk's just going to sit here for as long as he can. Spotted by Magix. Magix is going to be the one to... Oh! Ooh, Magix gets his smoke down. Frozen still trying to force this. Going in hard. Swung on by Donk. Kept honest. Flames. Oh, nice headshot. Takes down Rain. 
Only two left. It's Robs. It's Brokey, but they have found Donk. Have they got more here? Robs, double swing. Shiro closes. All right. All right, then. Two more rounds required, and we would see another OT. This is where the strap book starts to run a little bit dry, right? Because for FaZe, you will have come up with a bunch of different approaches. You can even see when they're trying to line up utility, they're not always certain. Double checking Let's the dots. You, know, bro. you saw Brokey there as well, highlight by our Ops team. Just making sure that he has the correct lineup available for the util that they're opting for. And the issues are going to become more in the mid rounds where it's slower. If it's quicker and they can find an entry and brute force their way into a summit, that's great because they can just play heads up Counter Strike. This is their third tactical timeout, the last that FaZe will get to call unless we make it to overtime. And this push from Zontix, the fact that he played to contain, the fact that he hit that one, he's a body shot specialist. Really but clean. Carrigan has been on some absolute menace form, rolling back the years. 19 kills for him in this one. He's been finding impact throughout the series. He really wants to push forward in towards that semi-final and take on Vitality. That would be a, one hell of an affair as well, but... If, if I'm FaZe now, I'm doing something quite fast with right. these pistols. I, I, I really want to cause some chaos and, and see if I can push through the smoke and catch them off guard. Throws out an early Lurk smoke. Will limit some of the early info for Team Spirit. Uh, they have enough to do this again, right? They, they can throw out another Lurk smoke towards the ramp. They have three remaining. Here it is. So, so this is one way to keep a lot of boots planted towards A. It keeps them spamming, keeps them worried. Can there be any pop flashes through? And now they're going to actually try and pressure over towards B. So B lobby, they know that's theirs. A ramp, they can return to. How unfortunate is FaZe, or how fortunate a spirit going to be with some of these blind spams through the smoke? We've got two players here. It's just Chopper and Zontix. There's a wild. Zontix and Chopper, they just have to be vigilant here. Lesser guns, Kevlar and pistols. Plenty of support. Rotations arrived and it's Donk actually at the forefront of this. He's going to be, oh, look it away. A Tech 9 bullet found his head. Brokey's Deagle has found one. And now Carrigan's caused it a hover. Big from Zontix, combined with Donk, defend. Important. If they get to overtime and they win this map and they lock themselves in towards the semi finals you can forget about that 0-9. Oh, you can forget about that misplayed clutch. None of that's going to matter. Just one more round. He talks about not feeling pressure. This kid has managed to turn it around. Back against the wall, responding to FaZe Clan's run of seven with seven of their own if they want to bring this back. And we talked about mental. I'd argue FaZe's is going to be completely at least shaken. If Spirit can complete this run, what's the final call of regulation? Is there a need for overtime? Range is a distraction. They're in towards the lobby. He's just kicking up a fast and he's kept three sets of boots planted. His Frozen has been parked now as well. So back and forth they go. Oh, damage through the smokes. Ontix chipped on down to half HP. That's unconfirmed damage. Shiro's AWP posted up. They're clearing out the right side so he can just keep posted with that AWP. That'll free up these rotation of riflers. Shiro's going to respect that. He's playing ahead of it. Oh, the flash was good, but the cover is better. It's Sontix with impact. Gets away as well. Carrigan going for a hunt. They try and isolate Magic, but he stands his ground. So does Dom. Team Spirit do not relent. Do not surrender. Oh. And Magic straight clean through the smoke onto Robs. And a Carrigan 1v5 with 30 seconds on the clock. They got 12, but seems like so did Team Spirit. We need more overtime secure. One hell of a comeback, the mental fortitude on display. This is Counter-Strike at its best. Counter-Strike 2, no less. I can't believe they brought that back with how wobbly some of those rounds were. A Chopper clutch, a Magic clutch. Chopper had two. Chopper had two 1v1 scenarios that he had to convert within this second half of play. I, I can't believe they brought this back with how shaken they looked and phase with so many opportunities. Oh. This is where their inexperience on the map has started to shine through. Yeah, and you want, have you got depth in your playbook coming into OT? You're right back in. 
trying to isolate Magix. He's safe and sound on the site. They have to take some more risks now to try and find some rounds, but by doing that, they can play into Spirit's hands. Oh, Brokey had a real opportunity there. Oh! oh! Jumper and Shiro have opened up the account into OT. Oh, speaking about if Kagan wins this, it's going to look like a genius in the veto. What about the opposite? Yeah. What about that? Nice. What about that? Carrigan taking down Zontix on a jiggle. And Donk does Donk things. That's one hell of a wide swing. Robson Donk. An interesting matchup. In the meantime, Shiro, actually, he wasn't holding this line, so Chopper will clear it. Oh, uh, excuse me, Carrigan and Frozen piecing together an impossible round. Shiro's not going to jump up. He'll go for a plant here. You can see the kit present. Oh, and the damage connecting. Good awareness from Magix, not letting him get away and reset. And look at the demeanor. Oh, that is one hell of a 180, Chad. They're smiling. Well, everything's reset now. We're in overtime. The whole dialogue shifts, the fact that they've been able to bound back into things. They've had to do this a tough way twice. There was overtime where they were in the lead on Nuke. In multiple occasions, they were to close, and they couldn't do it. They couldn't get it done. FaZe kept pushing and pushing and pushing until eventually they had to cross the line. This time, it's a completely different conversation. They were 12 to 5 down. And we do have a couple of Spirit supporters in the building. <laughs> yep. But they were 12 to 5 down. Madness. Absolute mad. 12 to but 5. Think about all the, sink in. all the boxes that they're ticking, right? This team, they've only come to Ascension in recent time. Winning Katowice was great. They put the stamp on. They come into this major as the favorites. But they're going up against FaZe. The conversation was, uh, well, we've already seen this once. Unless FaZe show up on the stage, it's probably going to be another blowout. FaZe show up. They win Mirage. Played it 11 times, Spirit. Only lost it once. And FaZe pick up that map. Then we go to Nuke. It delivers. It gives us the entertaining Counter-Strike that we're looking for. But something that's different for Spirit is their mental gets tested. Yeah. And now completely down and in the dirt, Zontix, his body language throughout this game, the flub, the clutch, the lack of kills, and they're back. They're in the lead. And Donk just 17. 25 frags. 13,000 hours of Counter-Strike. Orb's perfect for this. Shiro. Oh, the restraint doesn't fall for the jiggle. It's Carrigan down and out into our second round of OT. Good chip damage. That nade swallowed by Donk. Heichi with success. Still a man advantage as the smoke plumes B. Oh, Shiro. Couldn't hit the shot there. Rain's been having a tough time on this map. But not today. Not in round... With a good headshot. Shiro re-peaking again and again. He wants to try and bait him in, but yep, yeah, down goes Sontix. That's a big round from Rain. Came into this round with nine. He could get another here. He knows Shiro's around. Good five, five, seven connects. Robs does not reveal himself. It's a three on three here. Robs going A. Yeah. He's hearing a lot of this. Robs reporting in. Shiro on the site. Here's the misses his shot. What is that? Rotation cut down. It's big from Robs. Donk CT. Shiro elevate a bomb planted A. Come deal with Robs, but he's going to slink away. Shiro's only got one more shot before he has to reload. If he could just find one of them frozen crouching, he'll be a dead man otherwise. Smoking a kit though. Could get uncomfortable here. He's going to defuse. He's just going to hold it. He's just gonna hold it! Shiro! Oh. Step <laughs> 13 apiece! Brokey with just half a second in it. Gets the butterfly nice between his shoulder blades. And that was Rain in that round with the impact towards middle. Allows the second lurk. And the fact that they kill Zontix and Chopper, that's the A defenders. The call is immediately, let's rotate back. It should be an empty site. Shiro aware of that, having traversed the difficult territory, but those are the type of rounds that FaZe are going to need to continue to win. The nail biters, the clutches, the this ones game. where indiv individuals can break them through. It's had it all. And it continues to do so. Let's go. Rain, this was his little spotlight highlight. Getting himself the double. Rob's good awareness hearing Magic's coming with this from Brokey. Look at this diffuse light. Look at the diffuse. Look at that! He had to get the knife out. No bullets, no time. 
He secures a 13 each score line. First OT, first to 16. Tough round for Spirit. They've actually had to opt in with two MP9s. Ooh. So facilitating utility in a round like this, they've foregone the firepower. It's Chomper and Zontix, the A defenders, needing to do it with the pocket rockets. So FaZe could walk away with two rounds on the T side. Clearer intent. They're going to be heading towards A a little bit quicker. Oof, team flashes, nades, copped, and everything there, Rain. Zontix with an entire team. Pressuring him. He passes the test. Carrigan flash and swing. Zontix will take that every day. Can he leave with the upgrade? Yes, he can. Grabs the AK, slips away. Man, advantage for Team Spirit here. Space towards B. Look, the side's completely empty. Magix is just... Oh. And they're so noisy. It's just some of these little flubbed moments, but will it cost them? Magix is not in the side. Yeah, they're still away. Heading up now, flash high. Magix, he's got to try and get as deep in as he can. Forced back by the util. They just trapped a gent. That's a good smoke to do. at least give them some room to maneuver forward. Channel, look at this, Chopper uses it. Charges forward, it doesn't matter though, if everyone hits the shot phase. Oh, running him down was Donk with only the double. Zontix handed an opportunity. Donk found two. If he can find the same, Team Spirit will swap half with the man advantage, with the round advantage. Just Zontix. Rain, low HP. No reason not to give this a go. They don't know. And Zontic's clearing. This is the contact. This is the clear. Rain with low HP. Gets the angle. And it will be a phase. Two T rounds in our first overtime. That feels like a, a mammoth task. They've set the bar pretty high, Chad. Yeah, and now we're going to swap over, obviously, with the cash for Spirit to work with. And they were back into control once uh, they were able to stabilize in that first half of play. It was a 7-0 start, start from FaZe. A good comeback go, from Spirit to get themselves something to work with going into half time. Donk, it felt like he was just going to lock it down single-handedly, didn't he? All the bodies get thrown. If Rops didn't stall him out there, that was probably it. But Frozen, happy with how that one feels. No AWP for Brokey. They're just going to go with five rifles. Aggression for Rops. This is what they were doing in the early stages. Right? They, they were being a disruptive force. They were in the face of Spirit, making sure they couldn't just default and take their time. That's how they were getting rounds. They were able to slow it down. Nice trajectory there. Frozen throws it out to imply thrown from Ellie. Those little details. The four leaning ramp here. Do you really want to go for this? You can see that there is a util set prepped. Holding the smoke was Chopper. Audible. Good work. Punishes Frozen's push through the smoke. 40 seconds. Brokey ahead of the util. Smokes are up. The molly towards headshot. It's Carrigan on this re -aggress. Oh, one, two. Brokey taking down Donk. This is all to play for with 30 seconds. The bomb, the pressure is on Magix. Great clear, great trade. Brokey nailing shots. Rain builds upon it. It's up once more onto Zontix in the 1v2. Ah, uh, he doesn't look like he's up for it. He doesn't look like he's up for it at all. 12 seconds. Yeah, there's just no 12, chance. He, he's out of his depths, mate. Oh, no. I mean, pick up the bomb. They're going to surely double peek here. You've got to plant. You've got to plant. Oh, not like that. 15 secure for FaZe Clan. It's so tough to see a player get swallowed by the stage like this. It's so tough to watch. Think about all these clutch situations that he's found himself in. He's found some contributions late, sure, but in any of these situations where, you know, needs to show a bit of shine, a bit of polish, he's ju just looked well out of his depths. It's tough.
Uh, there's no doubt about that. This is his first major, the first time on the stage. You can understand it, but it's just difficult to watch because you can see the brain whirring, but it's just not making sense. It's not firing on all cylinders, but Brokey certainly is. Not his first major by any stretch, and he's in pursuit of glory here in Copenhagen. Team Spirit, they seem like the boogeyman of Copenhagen. Another Spirit comeback required. I can't believe they did it once. This time they have to do it on the T side. I'm not sure how they're meant to even get into a round like this. Right, they, they were able to get the A ramp space, it was given over. They get the opening kill. Chopper silencing Frozen's push. And then they just can't get past the rest of the defense from phase on A. So even if they go for similar scenes, someone needs to break through with a multi, right? It can't just be one done trade. It's not enough. The full five-man unit committing Rob Ramp. So much at stake here, folks. Double smoke. Brokey. He's playing with fire here. Yeah, it's going to cost him his life. Big find. Magics give Spirit hope. But they still have to get past. It's Carrigan's M4. Only the one. Bomb on Chopper. Bringing it in. Escorted through. Rain and Robs with it all to do. Not enough to bring down Shiro. Nade bricks him low. Post plant seems pretty solid. I say that as Chopper goes down with no trade. Magic's surely going to be overlooked, though. That's a power position. Shiro might be down. And now they know about Magic's. Not like this. It's a clutch. And it's Zontics with it all to do. A smoke so, and a kit, Chad. Oh, dear. A smoke and a kit. Zontics, can you hold your nerve? He's been having a tough time. And he still holds his nerve. We see another round of play. I thought it was curtains. I thought it was going to be that round he replays in his head at night tonight. But he holds on and he extends play. Oh, no change in expression. But again, left in a clutch situation once more. Oh my God, I started seeing the writing <laughs> on the wall, Chad. Yeah, and you can understand why Rain just immediately goes, I'm just diffusing. This kid yeah. ain't got it. Yeah. Oh my gosh, okay. All of these rounds, that was a 2v4 retake on the side. Yeah, but it got close. It got again. crazy. The amount of 1v1s in this game. Unbelievable. Okay, different call, uh, out of the game. Got your early protocols. Zontix actually looks like he's feeling himself. Tries to go searching for any easy fights on double stack. No one home. as the opening contribution. They want more. Frozen doesn't. They know there's two condemned. They know there's two suck short. Nice nade up front. Magix puts Frozen down. Forced to watch the rest of this round. Mid lurk still set up for Zontix. And you got a man advantage, Spirit. 30 seconds. Can you get another OT or will you trip over? Will phase. Take it. By force. That's a big find. Oh, dear. Shiro, what you seconds. got? Can he get B? Maybe he could, but Zontix all towards mid. Going around the world, it'll be audible. Zontix is hearing this. Zontix has got a gap. But wait, Robs. He's going to die in the back. No, turn around. Oh, Zontix! It's massive. Nine seconds, though. It can still go wrong. Zontix down. Five seconds. Shiro! Dead! Dragon! What a game of Counter-Strike! People had their expectations for this game and it surpasses them all. Overtime on overtime, one on one on one on one. IGL's performing. That 
game had everything. And Carrigan letting Vertigo slip through the trap card. <laughs> Team Spirit reveal it and the mad genius in front of the home crowd, the first major in Denmark. And Carrigan reigns supreme. Face set themselves up for a semi-final against Vitality. An incredible game from Frozen as well. New man in the face jersey, newest man in the face jersey, and one hell of a performance in that quarterfinal. FaZe have done it, but that was one wild series. Were you entertained? <laughs> but uh, how are you feeling? I'm entertained. I mean, I mean, what a game, right? Uh, I think we went back and forth. It was a little choke, I think. We couldn't really close it out, uh, but yeah, I think we just kept believing, and uh, I'm just happy that we showed the true face today. And I've got to ask about this vertigo, because we don't see you play it. It comes in and then it goes like this. You start off so strong and even close it out in overtime. Were you cooking this during a little bit of time you had off? Um, I think I was a little worried before the game once I knew it's gonna like there, there's a chance of where they go coming in. But I think if there is one team with a uh, big pairs of balls, then I think it's face. So yeah, that's why we played where they go. And how much time had you guys put into it though? What kind of prep had you done for this? Because Spirit had no idea what was going on. No prep. We just went ham, you know, we just, I mean, bro, we, it's the first time playing official on Vertigo for us, so, I mean, we were just trying shit out, I would, that's how I would put it. Um, running through the smokes, you know, I think uh, we just won by, by uh, creativity and uh, playing together. I think that was it. And that worked out splendidly for you guys. What was going through your mind, though, when it was getting to these close rounds, when you were so far ahead? Because they did the same right when it came to new, but then they closed it out. And this time around, it was you that managed to hold strong. I mean, even though they came back, I think there was a lot of close rounds that we could have closed out way before. So I think, you know, we just kept believing. And uh, yeah, I mean, you know, some rounds fired us up. We won the first weapon round on CT side now in overtime. And uh, yeah, I mean, you know, I feel we were just rolling, you know. I, I, I'm, I'm really speechless at the moment. I don't know. <laughs> well, where's your confidence that now you've beaten Spirit? Uh, I mean, it feels great, right? They beat us in uh, Katowice. Pretty convincingly, it was 3-0. So, I mean, to be honest, it felt like a grand final to me, you know? <laughs> I don't know how about you guys, but uh, yeah. I mean, the confidence is very high now. I'm, I'm happy we closed it out. I'm sure you are. Well, guys, Frozen and Face Clan are through to the semi-finals. They absolutely are, and, and what a match of Counter-Strike. We've been served tonight, and how hard fought it was. For FaZe, I mean, you see it creeping to OT and you're like, how did you give up that lead? Are you going to be able to close it? And they said, yeah, damn hell we are. Yeah, when it hit 12-5, I was like, only FaZe makes this comeback. No other team in the world can make that comeback. And then you get into the factor, again, haven't played it all that much. Frozen just said they didn't really prep it. I don't know how, how much I would want to believe that. But the idea that you would have enough in the tank, enough in the playbook to be able to come back from losing that many rounds in a row into overtime and finding a solution is crazy. And remember, Spirit a couple of times in this game was just a 1v1 away, an inch away from losing it twice in regulation. That was a fantastic game of Counter-Strike, arguably the best Counter-Strike 2 game I've ever seen. And you know, as we spoke about, it was a match that went back and forth, back and forth. We saw it on Nuke, we saw it on Vertigo here as well. Two in-game leaders who really duked it out on the server. And I guess someone had to win in the end. Yeah, welcome, Kerrigan. You can see some of the images of, uh, of, of course, the, the, the victorious game. It was absolutely insane. Yeah, I think uh, me and Hoey went outside uh, to get some fresh air after Nuke, and we just started laughing. <laughs> but sometimes when you're in the game, you just kind of respect some of the, the skill that's on the server. I mean, we have some good setups. I'm holding an angle. I get Insta one-tapped, and it's like, I'm just like, damn, you know? And I think that the level of game we showed here in my opinion, that's a grand final level from both teams. I think we really challenged each other. I think we also made a game with the veto. I think we could have closed out more smooth, <laughs> uh, but it isn't a phase start if it's not one like this. I mean, I'm so proud of the boys today. The way we could come back against a team that just wrecked us. Uh, there is a lot of mental thing in it. We haven't won a map against them, and yeah, super proud of the boys today. Now you won two. Now you won two against them, <laughs> and a series as yeah. well. I'm glad you said it, Finn, because we were discussing it on the desk as well, that it felt like the level of Counter-Strike on the server was super, super high. You being on the server, you felt that as well. Was that a well-playing spirit, and was it you guys probably playing the best CS2 you have so far? I think, honestly, we played at a, both at a high level, both teams. I mean, I think this is one of the quarterfinals that's been the hardest. I think, I really think I had a great game in Midori. 
and somehow it did manage to, to get us over the line. And I think that just showcased how much skill, how much challenge there was in the rounds, um, back and forth. Um, so yeah, I, I mean, definitely a high level. I think the highest level I ever played in a quarterfinal because both teams met up today and there was more than just a game. This was personal, this was back and forth. And in some way you can say this is to make sure the spirit is not number one in the world and we're still in contention to, to be number one. The big conversation around this match is going to be about this veto, about you guys risking Vertigo to put it in. So, I mean, tell me, Frozen just said on stage you guys didn't really have a whole lot of deep prep for it, didn't really do a whole lot. It was a lot of creativity, of improvisation <laughs> as things went on. I mean, just tell me the thought process of saying in a quarterfinal at the Major, we're risking Vertigo, we're putting it out there in the world. I mean... I can be crazy, but I don't think I'm going to be that crazy. <laughs> I mean, um, obviously, we played the video to our strengths. Uh, I was surprised I went for Vertigo because I think Spirit has shown me they're a high prep team. They're going blind in, and I think that showcased in the first three rounds that we actually have played the map a bit, right? We had some yeah. things, we set reactions, we are playing off the flow. And yeah, when you get that deep, um, obviously, I don't have the most experience to call us home on the T side. But I think I tried everything in our playbook that worked uh, for us in practice. And in the end, they're not a bad vertical team if they start firing it off. And I think that, um, that what Frozen is talking about is improvising on the fly. What do we yeah. do in that moment? Because many of these scenarios, we don't get in practice, right? Can you, can you tell me, like, because you, you guys, obviously you just mentioned you guys have like the advantage of information in terms of this, this third map and, and Vertigo. Was there anything they did that kind of surprised you, that caught you off guard with your prep? Like, you, you go into this, you get, what, five maps to look at them recently on Vertigo if you want to dive that deep. Is there anything in there you were like, oh, we didn't see this in the demos? No, I was quite surprised because when you, on paper, haven't played Vertigo a lot, the first thing people do, they're playing super aggressive on ramp. Because if you can't handle the ramp pressure at CT, yeah. you're, you're going to have a rough game. Um, so I was surprised they didn't try to contest that at a high pace in the beginning of the game. And I think that's why it made us feel comfortable in the end. Um, they changed and adapted and, yeah, they did a great thing. But I think we were so close to breaking down that CT side in those two one-on-ones. Yep. Um, so we could have run away with a 10-2 half if you look in the, in the hindsight. So I think we, we had a great game plan coming to the game. And obviously when it came to all time, creativity and Frozen have a lot of... Uh, we'll say experience on the map yep and he's an important piece of that a ramp and he kind of hold me in my hand and i just try to support <laughs> with the name come along and, for the ride yeah, baby. yeah i love that but you say holding your hand but like you had an insane series also right we saw it in the, in the first map kind of and then you think is this going to keep happening and i think it, it also did at the beginning of this map so that must be a lot of confidence for you you personally as well I think I look at the vertical uh, scoreboard, I was like 11 1. I can't remember the last time I had 11 <laughs> 1 in, in a game like this where the level is so high, right? I, I think um, some of the rounds um, on vertical, I just think like it's in the flow state, right? I'm, I'm moving around, I'm not playing scared. And I think I said in the before this game, there isn't a smoke I won't push. Because I'm in being in face clan, when you play a quarterfinal, it's not often we underdogs. So I think the mentality I had into the game, I had a good feeling. Um, in my stomach, it's like I'm excited but not nervous. And I think that's just respect to the spirit because I think the loss on me and Katowice was really hard. I could not find a solution on the fly. And to be honest, there's not many teams that can't find a solution on the fly or a week later after a game. But I think we, I came up with a great game plan for this game and uh, obviously also help that we perform on a high team level. Yeah, in terms of looking to, to further in the tournament, I, I think um, specifically the fact that you say, yes, our playbook was kind of done because you're in uncharted territory completely and we did have to take every single round. That all comes down to you as well, right? You have to call every single one of those rounds. Um, so I guess that must mean that going forward, you are even more secure in that. Even if it's something we've never practiced, I can trust in my boys and we're going to get this done. Yeah, I mean, obviously we played a few times with Twist, right? Um, we played a seven map pool with Twist. Uh, we kind of packed it out. And I mean, it depending on the enemies, right? <laughs> I'm not going to say that uh, well, our vertical is the best in the world, right? <laughs> but um, you never know now, right? Like, if we are willing to play it in quarterfinals the third map, we had an option to second meet to it. We didn't. Um, that means we have something on the map, right? So winning this game in this fashion, uh, throwing a lead, coming back in lower time. Um, so... What I'm most proud of is the mentality is transferring to a map where we are limited on an experience. But um, in the end, I think uh, we just stayed strong. And that's, like I said, if Faze shows up today, these rounds, these games where it goes to overtime, we don't give up. And we had nuke, a chance to nuke in the end as well. But, I mean, 
Yeah, it was a great game, honestly. Was and that was uh, that was step one, you know, taking down Spirit in, in the quarterfinal. You have a semifinal come against uh, Vi Vitality as well. We spoke to Dad coming into the game as well. He said and, and did mention for us that you never won inside this arena. You had a final loss against Heroic as well, etc. How much does it mean for you personally to find success inside this arena? I realized that I haven't won a blast, so maybe it's not the Royal Arena, but it's just the blast event. Oh, there we go. Ah. So, um, I'm like, I remember after losing uh, uh, in November in here, mm? I was like, that's my second time lost on the final. My wife told me, well, that's the third time, and it, is, it isn't a blast. So I don't know which one I'm cursed, because when I got benched and faced, they only won blast tournaments. When I came back, we won everything else. <laughs> so um, maybe that's just not happening. And what I like about this bracket, it's time to slay demons. We have a hard time against Vitality. We had a hard time against Spirit. I think everything can happen now. Um, I'm just looking forward to play on Saturday. And what a fantastic crowd, honestly. It yeah. was, I don't know, I, I just enjoyed it. I smiled after we lost New We saw that, I, yeah. And then I was like, damn, this is a great game. Yeah, if you're gonna win one in the Royal Arena, might as well beat this one, right? You know, if we're, if we're we'll talking it. about it. Yeah, yeah indeed. Um, so tomorrow, if you can pull the bracket maybe back up for one second, because this was only a quarter final, and I know Cloud9 Vitality didn't really go the distance, unfortunately. Um, but I'd love to know from you, Finn, what you think is gonna happen tomorrow. Ia versus Navi and Maus versus G2. Um, I had a turn of beating Navi and Mouse beating D2, so I just need one of them to save my pigums, right? <laughs> everybody, everybody laughed when uh, I said Faith's gonna beat Spirit, so uh, let's see if uh, my pigums are safe tomorrow. Just need a uh, turn of Mouse to win, but the games are great tomorrow. Honestly, uh, you have D2 with experience, Mouse playing great. Um, I, I'm actually just gonna enjoy a little bit tomorrow to actually watch <laughs> the quarterfinal and not be sad and not and be able to relax. Yes. What do you guys think? I mean, I was just realizing you ruined 99% of people's pick and you know, yeah. That's true, actually. Yeah, so Good for you. you must Woo! be a villain. Oh, <laughs> I said in my YouTube, uh, I said uh, the 1% is sometimes the smartest one. Well, there we go. Exactly. <laughs> uh, final thoughts then, with that in mind. Uh, maybe you lead us out, Jason. How are we heading into tomorrow? I hope it delivers, um, you know, if it only delivers half of what <laughs> of Spirit did, then we're in for a good ride. That's a lot of pressure. You want to set us off entirely? <laughs> no, no, no. no, no. Just, I would yeah. love one you of your, well? you know, fantastic thoughts that you come up with once in a while. Oh, man. Man, I don't know that. That I mean, that Sphere game. I got to say, like, you you got a little bit of everything out of them. You got to saw the phenom of Don of Donk because I mean, when they were down and out on Vertigo against you guys, man, Donk in that second half. He did some crazy, some wild things to pull him right back into this. So you see, I think, between Donk with that kind of an individual level and between the comeback from Spirit, you see why everyone is so excited for this team for the future because they're going to be championship contenders all throughout this year. That's a very deadly team taken down by a team that just gets stronger in high-pressure situations. If anything, we got another showcase of, you know, one team is playing inside a basement, inside a studio, another team is showing up on the stage. Face is a great example of that. We've seen that time and time again. Tomorrow, we have another contender for that, G2. They've been limping into that playoff as well. They've been struggling. I know and you picked him. Yeah, <laughs> picked him, you know, but we also have a, a team of G2 with the likes of Manis and Niku who have a lot of states experience and with all due respect, if, if FaZe can do it, G2 can as well. I mean, in the Royal Arena, it seems just like all bets <laughs> are off. That? You know yeah. what I'm saying? Oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Rick, number one. <laughs> <laughs> all bets seem to be off when it comes to the Royal Arena. We were um, given some fantastic Counter Strike. It is FaZe that is moving on to face Vitality in two days. But tomorrow, all that action back here at the PGL Esports. CS2 Major oh, as Kerrigan, <laughs> yeah, he just saw it, is getting cheered on by everyone really around the corner. So we'll let him go to his fans. Good night. Come with me. Here again. Flash Flash, come with me. Boom. I smoked up. Try that one. Try that one. One A. One A. Coming call. Nothing B. He has weapon. B. One A. Coming call. Yeah. Let me play close. first, Finn. Okay. Finn, stop with me. Come. You smoke. Can be anywhere near. Uh, London. Let's play Robin. But I'm gonna be really late. Yeah, I'm probably on the start of it. The only kit on Brocky guys. There's a kit on the ground in front of me, boys. Yeah. I'm betting you right now. He doesn't need my rifle, he's take nine. Okay. There's a clear behind us. Broke a skit. They start now if you can. Yeah. yeah. I smoke off uh, heaven. One, one smoke off heaven. Short, short. Tie, tie, short, short. Short, short, short. Short, short, short. Short, short, short. Short, short, Sick man! Oh, Rocky, how the fuck are you alive, bro? You fucking sweet <laughs> crazy, bro! Okay, let's have a game. Let's have a game. That's right. We like those. Oh, what's happening? Keep crazy, boys.